Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 242. In this episode, we're going to talk about Derek Carr being benched, preview Burrow versus Allen, debate Luca versus Prime Harden, where Jock Vaughn is in the coach of the year race, discuss the best moves of the NBA offseason, give out our pick aside awards, and have an end of the year MVP ladder, the final episode of 2022. Yes, we are here. Big year. Big year. 2022, man. Year of growth. 2023. Year of us. Mm. It's the year of us. You thought about that one? I did. I like it. I did. That's Originally, cool. it was the year of me. That's a little selfish. But I'm a. I'm not a. I'm not a me guy. I'm a we guy. Oh, really, yeah. dude. There you go. Appreciate that, man. That's a Anytime. good one liner right there. That's a really good one liner. How you feeling, Rev? Tired, but uh, you know what I was thinking? I was really drunk on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We know. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Uh, My birthday was viral. Yeah. Fun ass time. It was viral. Really fucking drunk. You were screaming basically the whole night. I have a picture of you sleeping on a chair. Yeah, I took that picture. <laughs> it's a great flick. Road knocked out at like 10 o'clock. We was there for like five, six hours. Nah, we were there for a minute. Yeah. I mean, I lived there, so I was there for a while. Yeah. But y'all really did pull up and pull up and got drunk in like 15 minutes. Not, Not for sure. Lie. For sure. No, yeah, I remember Zari leaving. And then I was just kind of like still drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So the final episode of 2022 is episode 242. I mean, it's a cute number. I was just looking at the Instagram post you had that was like, I've been on the show for like a hundred episodes now, maybe more. Yeah. Because the one you put up, it was like 150 or something. Yeah. And that was like, I feel like maybe a month or two after. It's crazy. Yeah. Nah, Dells has come a long way for sure. Nice, man. You're not a rookie no more. Appreciate that. I still remember (laughs) the episode that we had all four of us. It was episode 200 with Do The Wire when we Facts. did that collab. Yeah. And then after that episode, we just kept doing the four-man four pod- four podcast. Two episodes yeah. ago? That was God. in the summer. Damn. Feels like it was forever ago. <sighs> Shout and out to The, the Wire. This the intro, though. So, I mean, 2022 is about to end. You guys any? You guys learned any lessons this year? You want to go into 2023 with, with some knowledge? You know, what, what do you guys think? I'm the charismatic one, so I'll go first. <laughs> Patience, 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 patience. I've wanted a lot and I've always wanted it very fast, but I've realized you got to go with the, go with the, go with the flow, go at your own pace. Success will come so long as you stay motivated, but don't try and force anything. You just keep being you and inevitably it'll work out for you. What you got, Riv? I thought you were going to go. I could go. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're definitely waiting. Being patient. Very important. I'm still is. Um, being grateful. I think is really what comes to mind. You know, in this industry that we're in, we see, I don't know, it's so funny. No, no, no. (laughs) I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. In this industry we're in, there's a bunch of people who are at the top, review at the top, who have all of these subscribers and views and followers. And it's very easy to get caught up in the, I wish we were there. I wish we could do that. But just being very grateful for where we are, how far we've come, and not just the podcast, but everything else that we have in life, all of our friends, our family, celebrating, you know, holidays together, birthdays together. So it's very grateful for everything. Patience, gratefulness for me, and then Riv, I'll let you think of a buzzword. For me, it's uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. I think perspective is everything. Um, You know, for a long time, wanting to be in this position, like you finally get in a position where you are making content, it's able to uh, pay for things and pay for, you know, your living expenses and stuff like that. And sometimes it's hard, you know, sometimes... Making content is hard. It's definitely difficult. Burnout is a very real thing in this space. And in those moments, you got to just think about where I was a couple years ago. You know, I used to work graveyard shifts at CNBC with Riv. I was in a booth. He was in a lobby. And I used to want to be in his position. So I think perspective is everything. And the things that you're complaining about now are things that you probably wish you had, you you were had, you know, because things I complain about now, I'm like, damn. Two years ago, I would fucking kill to be killed to complain about that type of shit. So I think perspective is definitely everything, and that's something that I'm going to go into 2023 with. That's dope. Um, For me, it would probably just be, probably I would say giving back. 
you know, I, I think in the position we're in, it's pretty fucking rare in this industry, you know, being as far as we came with the four of us, you know, no bad blood and just the people who are trying to come up under us, the people who look up to us, whether it be to just give some good advice, you know, or to just like give them a little feature or be on their show or just talk to them day to day. For me, like, that's what I do. I, I, I like to give back and just give them the advice and just have conversations with them. And I think that's something that we could do good at, just giving back. So, yeah. Charitable guy, man. Yeah. Sure. That's nice, Char- man. Charitable it's really guy. nice. You're the type of guy to, to feed homeless people on Thanksgiving. Yeah. I, yo, you know what's crazy? I gave a homeless man my food yesterday. Nice. Nice, bro. Before I gave it to Zari. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, she wanted. She said uh, she wanted my food, and I was like, "Nah, give it to the homeless man. He right there." And she was like, "You really don't want to give it to me?" I was like, "Nah, you can't get this. I ain't gonna lie. Give it to the homeless man." Yeah, she should understand. I think that. in the grand scheme of things, I think you made a, a good I, call. One hundred percent. I make that call ten times out of ten. I'm with you. Probably. Yeah. Shout out to the homeless people. <laughs> just thinking about that, dad just get like game like I didn't even finish it. Like a lot of food, a lot of seafood. Just left him no shit. Ah, so you did go to the seafood spot. Absolutely. Got it, got thought it. it was going to stop me. <laughs> nice. Never Very done. firm. Yeah, I think the okay, last thing I'll, I'll finish this intro off with is uh, the word family. You know, I think all of you, I think all of you, you know, I think of you guys as my brothers. And I feel like when you start something with people, it's much easier to be consistent with it. So, you know, there's some days I'm not feeling well. You know, I know that. Riv going to pick me up. I know that you're going to pick me up. I know that Dad's going to come. You know, right now, Riv is... God damn it. <laughs> that was him. It was him, bro. I swear. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I swear it was Joel. You know, it was Joel, it bro. Was it was Joel it, as hell. I let you slide. I'm not I did lie. too, but then I looked at Joel and I I, ha- I tried Yo, to hold in my lap. Bro. I don't know what he's talking He about. goes... <laughs> But, you know, Riv right now, he tired, but that's why I'm wide awake. That's why Drew's awake. That's, that's why Bill's awake. That's why he's got a haircut. He ready for this moment. Very handsome. So I feel like, you know, definitely this this year, having you on a pod full time, just building our relationship, I think the sky's the limit, man. I really can't wait to see what 2023 Sir. holds in. This time next year could be crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it could be real crazy. We'll be 25. Jesus fucking Christ. 25 I am, I am 25, yeah. Oh, yeah, this guy's old. Sucks. This guy's old. Oh, that's I mean, I just, my birthday was just my. It's five weeks. Thirty, ago. man. Damn. You're gonna be 25 in a few months. I'm yeah. still closer to 20 than I am 30, so yeah. I'm gonna hold on to that, baby. One of the biggest things this year that happened is that we got some sponsorships. That's a fact. We Boom did fantasy. That was pretty big. Shout out to the boys. Every, every man. single time that you guys tweet us or do fantasy picks, it puts a smile Maybe on our face crazy tweet us, yeah, because man. that means that Boom Fantasy will most likely keep keeping us as <laughs> keep sponsoring us. We need that. So Boom Fantasy, we have locks, and this is what we're gonna do. Each each episode, the three of us are going to have a Boom Fantasy lock. This one is for Week 17 of the NFL season. So Riv, I'm gonna start with you. Boom Fantasy Locks for Week 17. Riv, what you got? All right, for me, I got shout-out to my boy Brock Purdy. Love that man to death. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I got Christian McCaffrey over 33.5 receiving yards. Over the like last it. five games, he hit four times over. He had 106 yards, 116 yards, 46 and 66. I think I got it right. And then the fifth game, he had 32 yards. So he's been pretty much a lock in the receiving game. So shout-out to him. I hope he gets that. I like that one a lot. So for me, my lock is going to be Travis Etienne. Over 72 and a half rushing yards. They are facing the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans still are the worst rush defense in the league. Should be a field day for my guy, Travi. For me, I'm going with Justin Jefferson. He only needs... Really? Yes, I'm going with Justin Jefferson. Nope. Justin Jefferson, 99 and a half receiving yards against the Green Bay Packers. Jair Alexander has been doing a lot of a lot of smack talk. I feel like Jettas is going to come into this game and say, no, I'm going to do it again. What I did back to you guys week one, I'm going to do it again. So I got Jettas hitting 100 yards easy, and I think this year he will set the single-season receiving yards record. If I anyone. Think so. If anyone. Uh, be What's he need? Two, Say two it one fifty? more time? Like something like that? He needs what was 107 <laughs> yards each of the next two games. So 214. Right. He needs a he's he's, That's very he's one of them ones. He, uh, he is. He's going to come in there with the grills, the shiny teeth. Nice little head. Going to post a little. Quick. I tweeted this the other day. Do you think Jettis is in tier of his own? Do you think Tyreek's in there? I Tay. think Tay's still no, in there. Tyreek is in there. Tay at his best is still in there. Yeah. I think um, Tyreek 
throw Tyreek in there. I feel like I'm missing somebody. Nah, I mean, Cooper I feel Cup, like Cooper Cup's Cup got to be in that. Put, he was Jenna's on pace is for not like in the league of his own, but I will say his first three seasons of his career, is it, yes, by he's in the league of his own. I think he's with Jerry Rice. In elite, he, and Odell Beckham Jr. Nah. He's better. He clears. He's not doing what Jed is doing. Bro. Odell Beckham Jr. missed four games his rookie season. He missed four games. I think he's, he's the available. best in his class. What can I Jettis? say? Jed is like at that tier. He's oh, the best. No, absolutely. Yeah, I think he's the that's best. Justin Jefferson question. in his third season is about to set the record. Savage. Yeah, that's not. He's, he's crazy. He's, he's 101. He's, he's crazy. He's I crazy think you good. talk about athlete evolution. Jerry Rice does not stack up with this man. All right, we got to stop. Let's, Enough. Listen, we could love Justin you Jefferson and just not shit. bring up. Do why you, do, you, do why you, do you love Brock Purdy so much? Huh? I know you were just like in on him. But uh-uh. like what? Like what has been this fascination? Because you There's love this man. Love about what's Brock wait? Purdy. What's wrong with him loving Literally. Brock Purdy? No, he said, "I believe it. in Brock Purdy. Brock it Purdy has been undefeated since been said statement. Riding Brock Purdy, the and whole time. he's been great. What happened was so, you've okay. been riding him. <laughs> I don't want to like agree to that. <laughs> 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 um, no, what happened was um, <laughs> he started, and I was just like, you know, I jumped on Twitter. I was just like, nah, let's see what this guy has. Played his first game. I was like, I believe in him. Then he just started kept doing, kept doing, kept winning. So I was just like, "Fuck it, I'll ride the Brock Purdy, uh, Brock Purdy wave." Whatever. Yeah, it's the system. Who cares? You could say it's a system. And he's still doing. You the still thing. have to be successful, and right. that's what he's. I like been. his swag. I think it was that day when he uh, when he was playing the Dolphins and he scored and he was talking mad shit after. That, it's also that super easy to root for him, Mister Irrelevant, uh, and he's been pick. undefeated since coming into the NFL. It's like and a regular size, he's better quarterback. record than Zach Wilson. Oh, yeah. I mean, Brock Purdy's better record than everybody. I was going to say, he has better <laughs> stats than a lot of Zach Wilson games also. He's better than he's Zach like, Wilson. He's, I hate he's that in a for situation you. where, it, yeah, he, I guess so, yeah. Listen, Zach Wilson, I'm not going to disagree. He goes to San Fran. Maybe he's a baller. Maybe. But we would a never know. He's a level quarterback. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> he goes to San Fran. He'd be the best 49 quarterback ever, probably. He'd definitely be up there. Top three. Fuck Joe Montana, all right? It's Joe Montana, Steve Young, Steve right? Young Cap? and Zach. Oh. And Cap, yeah, forget about Cap or Nick, too, right? <laughs> Zach. Zach number three. Zach is nuts. First topic of the show, and don't worry, guys. This is going to be a majority NBA show, but the first two topics are football. Did the Raiders make the right decision by benching Derek Carr? <sighs> this was just such a typical Raiders decision. The Raiders have been, for for lack of a better term, dysfunctional for years, right? Last year, they start to figure it out. They make the playoffs. They have such a great game against Cincinnati. They're basically one play away from moving on. Of course, it doesn't go their way. But I feel like this is not just a this year thing, but it stems from this offseason when they did not bring back Rich Bisaccia. If I'm mispronouncing his name, I apologize. Not bringing him back when it was clear there was something going on with the Raiders when he took over. Gruden didn't have the type of success that Rich did, but Rich, and along with Derek Carr, brought the best out of these guys. On offense, Derek Carr held it down. The offensive line was trash. He was still making plays happen. This is with Darren Waller missing a good amount of games as well. He turned Hunter Renfro into a a stud last season, and yes, I can still say that Derek Carr made Hunter Renfro what he was absolutely. And Josh Jacobs was a serviceable running back. He was not what he was this year, last year, but he still was a very good running back. And the defense was solid. The pass rush was getting getting home to the point where the secondary wasn't getting taken advantage of. But this year, you bring in Josh McDaniels. You don't bring back Rich, a guy who the locker room was clearly behind. But I understood it to a degree, right? This guy McDaniels is supposed to be this offensive mind, this great offensive mind that was over there in New England. He's supposed to be the next heir apparent, even though we saw him in Denver and did not have any type of success. So now he comes over, and the team is back to what we know what the Raiders are. And their decision is to bench the one reason why they're staying afloat, Derek Carr. It's not like Derek Carr is playing atrocious. 24 touchdowns, 12 INTs. That's not great. Not by any means, sure. But am am I looking at that touchdown-interception ratio and thinking this guy needs to be benched? He's significantly better than a good portion of the quarterbacks that are starting right now. Derek Carr has done his best to keep this disaster of a team afloat. And also, we're going to try and blame Derek Carr when the defense is basically bottom 10 in every stat. Their rush defense is decent, but other than that, it's not good. Their secondary's bad. The Chandler Jones and, and Max Crosby were supposed to be this dangerous tandem. They're at the they're um, almost at the bottom of the league in terms of sack percentage a game. 
This is bigger than just Derek Carr. And if you want to blame Derek Carr, it's irresponsible and lazy to do so. I think Rich Versace bringing him back was possibly a good move, maybe. But I think ultimately hiring Josh McDaniels is what the wrong move was, right? Maybe Rich comes in and he has, you know, blends with the players and obviously they went on a run last year. But I think it's really Josh McDaniels. This is a guy who got a second chance at being a head coach. And one of his biggest flaws in Denver was his relationship with the players. That was one of the biggest issues why he wasn't getting a second head coaching job, although he had the job in India until he backed out, was because of his relationships with different players in the organization and not being able to build those relationships. And I think that's what you're really seeing right now with Derek Carr. Now, for the Raiders organizationally, I don't think you should have traded Derek Carr, but I understand the move because they've basically peaked in a sense, right? This team has had Derek Carr for years and Derek Carr has had some really good seasons, but we see what the peak of Derek Carr is. He cannot carry a team. He cannot be a Mahomes, a Justin Herbert, any of these guys, but he can be a piece of an offense that leads you when you have a good defense, when you have other receivers. And I think really what, what happened with the Raiders is they have to make a decision now. You brought in Josh McDaniels. He might have said in the beginning, oh, yeah, Derek Carr is my guy. But ultimately, we don't really know if Josh McDaniels, if that was his guy. We know head coaches always want to come in, bring in their own quarterback, be able to groom them and have them fit the system. It's going to be pretty difficult to find a quarterback that's better just talent-wise than Derek Carr. Situationally, of course, like this season, he leads the league in interceptions. Okay, so Matt Stafford was one of the league leaders last year. Trevor Lawrence, although he was a bad season, we know he has talent. He was amongst the lead leaders at one point in the season too. So just looking at interceptions saying, well, he turns the ball over too much, that's not exactly something you could point at and say, if we just got better at quarterback, that can change. Because not only has the defense been bad this year, Every single season, this is one of the worst defenses in the league. He's been through six head coaches, I want to say, yep. in nine years. Yep. None of them have been able to figure out this defense. It is always terrible. He always is the one that has to put the offense on the field when they're not on the field as much because the defense is constantly getting torn up. He has to put points on the board, and that's part of the reasons why you do see these intercepts, interceptions because he has to go down the field and match what his defense is allowing him. So I think from the Raiders' perspective, just to kind of tie it all up, I understand they see the peak with Derek Carr. They want to get someone maybe with more upside that maybe could carry them. You're going to be asking a lot right now. But if you want to know what your worth is, Derek Carr is going to have a ton of suitors on the open market. There's going to be a ton of teams that are going to go out and look for his services. I know for the Jets, he is the top. My wish list in terms of realistic options, he's probably number one, obviously behind guys like Rodgers or Lamar. But teams that are ready to compete, have defenses, have offensive line weapons, they're going to be looking at Derek Carr saying, he's not going to have to carry us like he has with the Raiders. He has to play complimentary football. He's going to have to win us a couple games in that fourth quarter for sure, but he's not going to be faced with some of the worst situations situations in any organization the Raiders bench Derek Carr to save money it's as simple as that for sure Derek Carr has a 121 million dollar contract only 5.6 million of that is guaranteed and if Derek Carr were to get injured in week 17 or week 18 then a lot of that would now become guaranteed because he has an injury guaranteeing his contract so this move was to not pay him basically that's what it was and it's gotten to the point that not only did they bench him, but he's walked away from the team. He's not going to be with the team for these final two weeks. And I think it's very telling that despite him getting benched and his okay play this season, because he hasn't been bad, he hasn't been great, he's been okay, Devontae Adams is still sticking up for him. Devontae Adams is still saying, the only reason I came here was because of him. Derek Carr now being benched and the writing's on the wall, probably going to get traded, probably well, he's going to get cut. I don't think any team's going to trade for him. He's going to get cut. Devontae Adams will probably be next in line to leave Las Vegas too. I don't think he's going to stay there, especially with what they have going on. What Derek Carr meant to the Raiders, to Vegas, to Oakland, I just feel like to benching him was a slap in the face, and it was embarrassing for somebody like that. He's had 91 consecutive starts. The Raiders are 6-9. and nine. Yeah, we know they're not making the playoffs but they've blown eight leads this season. They've lost eight one-score games this year. They blew a 20-0 lead against Arizona. They blew two 17-point leads to Jacksonville and Kansas City. They were up 16-3 to against the Rams and Baker Mayfield. There's an eight football, and Baker drives down 90 yards to get a game-winning touchdown, and they're the only team to lose to the Jeff Saturday Colts. Now, they're the only team. We thought that Jeff Saturday might have been a legit coach based off his win against 
the Raiders. So I'm looking at Josh McDaniels, and I think he's the bigger problem here. In nine seasons, Derek Carr has been a Raider. Six head coaches, four OCs, three general managers. They're, the defensive rank since Derek Carr has been in Vegas has been 32nd, 22nd, 20th, 20th, 32nd, 24th, 30th, 26th. 23rd on average it's been the 26th ranked defense since Carr has been there and the Raiders first round picks since 2019 Cullen Farrell bust Josh Jacobs good Jonathan Abram bust Henry Ruggs bust Damon Arnett bust Alex Otherwood bust I mean you're not gonna build a winning organization if you miss this bad on these picks so Derek Carr like you said He's not an elite tier quarterback, but he's a great quarterback. And if he's in a right situation, he can win a Super Bowl, but he's never been put in that situation. The Raiders with Derek Carr weren't that. And without Derek Carr moving forward, they will not be that. Josh McDaniels is going to get fired in a year or two. And this move is basically picking McDaniels over Derek Carr. And McDaniels has already shown he's one and done as a head coach in Denver. He backed out of the indie job like a wuss. I mean, you accepted <laughs> it and then you back crazy. out. And Frank Wright got the job and they started out 0-5 yeah, and they made the disguise. playoffs. So I, I just, what bothers me about this move is that the Raiders are getting rid of Carr in favor of McDaniels. They're getting rid of who a guy who's been the heart and soul of the organization for a head coach that's not a good coach that is going to be gone very soon. That's my biggest problem with it. And Derek Carr deserves better. And I look at the next quarterback options for the Raiders. Tom Brady's a very likely option. I, I think that Brady's not going to Vegas. I, I think that they've been trying to make something like that 50. work. There was a report not too long ago that Dana White said that there was a deal in place for Brady to go to Vegas. Dana and White said this? Yeah. That, he always does my business, man. So I, I think Brady <laughs> is a likely candidate. The Raiders do have a lot of cap space. So they can bring in Brady, and you know him. He's going to take, take a cheap deal, and they can fill the defense out. And, and maybe this turns around. But if it's not Brady, it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it's one of those two that are going to be the Raiders quarterback next season. You don't think they draft a rookie, top five, six pick? I think there's I a think possibility. Not be picking, I'm bugging everybody. I, I definitely Ten. think there's a possibility, but I think this draft, you look at C.J. Shroud, you look at Will Levis, Bryce Young. Bryce Young's probably going to be gone by that time. Bryce Young's probably going to be number one overall. I, I don't. When I look at Josh McDaniels and the type of quarterbacks that he likes, look at New England and their style, I, I don't really see them taking a flyer on a guy like Anthony Richardson and his potential or C.J. Shroud. I, I feel like they want somebody that can come in and run the system effectively day one, and I don't think they see that in any rookie right now, rookie quarterback. You, talk, you talked about it a lot. You know, Derek Carr's passion has been shown throughout his career in Oakland. He's been very vocal. He's been very into the game. And I think for somebody who's been so inspirational for the Raiders to get benched like that, it kind of reminds me of the Eli Manning situation, how heartbreaking it was, even as an Eagles fan, to see him get benched and what he meant for the Giants organization. You know, it sucks, especially with the Raiders. They've been dysfunctional for so many years, especially this year. You mentioned the A-blown leads. They busted in free agency. They couldn't do nothing in the draft class. They've just been terrible nonetheless. You got to think about it like this. You, you you mentioned it. The Raiders are probably not going to bring back Derek Carr, right? And he's still a good to great quarterback, probably top 15, top 20 inch quarterback in the league, right? So he still can go to a place where he can contend or make that team better. You mentioned the Jets, but I think there's a lot of teams out there that can get him. You know, I still think his career isn't over yet. But for the Raiders, they have to look at the situation and think, damn, we fumbled the bag. You know, we picked up Chandler Jones. We had Max Crosby defensively. We couldn't make it work. Offensively, we got Tay. We had Hunter Renfro. We had Darren Waller. We had Derek Carr. We couldn't make it work. I know Josh Jacobs, he has statistically one of the best running backs in the league this year. Devontae Adams is still one of them dudes, and we still couldn't make it work. You know, we've blown so many leagues. So I think that sucks. Um, I wanted to ask you, though, what, what do you guys think Derek Carr, how, how, how do you think, because I don't know the cap situation for this team, but do you think Derek Carr to the commanders is a legit conversation? I think for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think that's a that's a team that's like that was, they're on my they're list. They're a quarterback away. They were Maybe on my not list. like a champ, but they're, uh, I don't know. They're, they're in the defensively, playoffs, their front four is elite. Mm -hmm. You know, the secondaries are right, can continue to get they better. They got receivers. They got Terry. They got they got some guys back there. And that's you put insane. Derek Carr in that situation. Of course, the Jets, too. That's another team. And I think Washington's another team. Commanders like. would be cute. And it makes more sense because they're in the NFC. So if the Raiders have the choice between the Jets and the Commanders and it's the same trade package, they're probably going to go with Commanders, get them out of the AFC. But what. 
That's a tough division How, now. What though. is the is there a significant difference from Derek Carr and Carson Wentz? Yeah. Yes. Significant? Derek Carr. I don't know. Much, much I don't know. Significant. I I would take Derek, Derek Carr. Derek Carr also has a no trade clause. I, Derek so Carr, which I don't I don't know why he would say no to Washington. Derek Carr's not getting traded. He's gonna get cut. He's you think so? Cut. Yeah, but there's a certain date. That Where there's money, the, they could like, trade him around the Super Bowl. I was going to say it's like what about, three uh, days. What about Pittsburgh? Yeah, there, there's a certain date that if the Raiders nah, don't, if the Raiders don't cut mm. or trade Derek Carr, then they eat that money. Oh, okay, okay. And if you're a team in the NFL, why am I going to trade something for Carr when I know you're going to cut him anyway? They're going to release him anyway. Maybe. Why would I trade for something? But if why they if it? they trade could something. go. It's just hard, especially for teams that might be waiting to see what happens with Lamar, or see what happens with Aaron Rodgers, and you have to make a decision by the Super Bowl because I'm pretty sure it's around Super Bowl where that money becomes guaranteed. So if you're a team who just wants the short thing, you don't want to get in a bidding war in free agency, then it probably makes sense to go and trade a pick just so you know you have him. But well, what if I'm Derek Carr and I'm saying I don't have a, I don't have much money guaranteed on my deal? I'd rather hit the open market and a team like the Jets guarantee me a lot of money. Well, he does have a no trade clause, so he could just say, I don't want to go anywhere, I guess, and they could cut him. Yeah, you know, I, I think he, he right now he wants to win and he wants financial security. Yeah. And I think for Derek Carr, there's going to be a, quite a couple teams that are in the running for him. I'm going to just say it. You know, I've been a big fan of Derek Carr. Derek Carr has been one of my guys Started. since since the he very like beginning of time. Now Derek, he's in there with the Burrow, Mahomes, those guys. He's one, my guy, Derek yeah. Carr. Those are you your know, guys. Though. Every single time a, a Derek Carr topic comes up, he's a guy that I defend with passion. He's a guy that I'm a big fan of. I'm just a big fan of his passion for the game. Of seven and his, his greatness for the game. Now listen, <laughs> Derek Carr to the New York Jets makes too much sense. If he goes to the New York Jets, it'd be the first elite defense he's ever had. You got Garrett Wilson, a lot of number one. Brees Hall is coming back. And I look at Derek Carr, and right now, 24 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 86 passer rating. People look at that, and they're like, that's a down season. That would be a top five Jet quarterback season Ever the, the the quarterbacks that own a top five jet quarterback season, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Jesus, you can argue he had the best. He did with Vinny Testaverde, so Chad Pennington, no, Joe this. Namath, Ken O'Brien. I mean, Derek Carr would be the best Jets quarterback that we've ever had. Yes, better than Joe Namath. Joe Namath, his <laughs> stats are awful. You haven't looked at his stats. He's just he's legendary. The worst, he's, he's the just worst legendary. Hall of Famer in the Hall of Fame. Wow. He's legendary. There's no doubt about it. But Derek I'm Carr. Not, I'm not going to slander him. Uh, yeah, that was he's crazy. Not, he's not wrong. De- Derek Carr just the would be the close. best quarterback the Jets have ever had. And if he could come to New York, I mean, listen, the Jets, we were 5-2 and two with Zach Wilson. We were we won one game with Mike White. Well, Joe Flacco. Just think about it. The Jets have been in the playoff hunt starting Zach Wilson the majority of the season and Flacco and Mike White. Derek Carr comes in here with our defense, with the improvements we're going to make, another good draft. This could be a Super Bowl contender. The Jets can be that my, good. My only question is, as opposed to Derek Carr, like you said before, what situation makes more sense? Going to the NFC where there's only like – realistically, two, three teams, or going to the AFC, where you, now you're jumping into a division with Miami, with Buffalo, with New England, and then you got to see for sure the Chiefs, well, 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 the Bengals, the we're Raiders. We're better than New England. That's, that's one. That's still a, that's still I think a division New England, game. I think New England's a possibility for the Raider, for Derek Carr, too. Derek Mac Carr. Jones? I think so. If I, Derek think Carr it, I thought more of a trade situation of Mac Jones for Derek Carr. He gets his guy, think McDaniels. think New England does that? Me. I don't really think Mac Jones wants to be in New England. He has Matt Patricia there. They, you see them shouting on the sidelines, seems like, every week. Bill Belichick brings in a veteran quarterback, doesn't have to deal with this kid anymore. McDaniels gets Mac Jones back, who had a great season under him his rookie year. It makes sense in terms of, like, when you're just thinking about it, in terms of, like, the financials. If yeah. you're going to trade Mac on a rookie contract for Derek Carr, like, is there a, really a huge difference if they're both put in the same situation? I'm not sure. I think Mac Jones, you know, we saw last year as a rookie with no weapons, had a really good statistical season, went to the playoffs. But I think the Jets obviously makes a ton of sense. And a lot of Jets fans are, and I kind of like tweeted it jokingly saying when he threw that pick against the Steelers, I, I don't want him anywhere near the Jets. But it's just very easy to get wrapped up in the Mahomes, Lamar, Burrow, Herbert, all of these just insanely elite quarterbacks in the NFL. It's like, well, if we don't have one of them, we don't have any chance but when you have Derek Carr, who's more than capable, like a Matt Stafford going to the Rams, of course, different conference, not as much competition. But when you have the team around him and you have the right coaching staff, if you put Derek Carr, who could have a top 12, top 10 statistical season, you're going to be able to make that playoff push. So 
Mahomes's and Herbert's and Burrow's don't come around every year, right? There's really no possibility we get anyone in that tier. Lamar's a long shot, Aaron Rodgers a long shot. So the most sense and the best case scenario for Jets is Derek Carr. But I think a lot of Jets fans would agree <laughs> that had Mike White started the entire season, the Jets are probably in the playoffs right now. A good chance. A upgrade at quarterback. Even if it's by a little bit, we saw golf, the Rams go from golf to Stafford is a huge, it, it makes a huge difference. And this is going from Mike White, a backup to a great quarterback in Derek Carr. I mean, Derek Carr, he becomes a jet. I'm buying his jersey first thing. <laughs> Derek Carr is my guy, DC4. And listen, right now, like I said, we got an elite defense. You do. And you talk about Washington. There's dysfunction in Washington, and that's, and that's why I feel like that might be off putting with the Jets. We're building something great, yeah. and Zach stays, and he learns from Derek Carr. It could come down to recruiting if the Jets coaching know. staff and players recruit Derek Carr better. But I'm curious, you Broncos been in that division, played Derek Carr. What do you think? There's one team that I, you guys obviously you mentioned the Jets. I feel like that's number one for sure. But the Seahawks are a sleeper. I think the Seahawks right now. You the way that I think about Geno Smith and the success that he's had this year is similar to how I'm seeing or how I saw Case Keenum with Minnesota. How the, you would think the right move would be to keep Geno Smith. You would have thought the right move was to keep Case Keenum, but Minnesota said, let's upgrade. Let's go out and get Kirk Cousins. I feel similarly here. Seahawks can allow Geno Smith to walk. You bring in Derek Carr. You pair him with DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. Obviously, Kenneth Walker is one of the younger, exciting young backs in the league. Offensive line's improving. The defense can get better, but it allows this. It allows Seattle to still bring in a quarterback, a great quarterback at that, and use that high draft capital that they got from Denver and put it to holes that they have on the roster. I feel like that would be the most or the best situation for Derek Carr. Of course, the Jets does make a lot of sense as well, but do I trust LaFleur as opposed to trusting Pete Carroll? I feel like that's the difference for me right now. If... Shit, Drew. Like I mean, listen, I, the is, Jets this, is a great situation, is, absolutely. Yeah. I don't disagree with what you're saying and your thought process behind saying it. What I do disagree with is that I think Geno Smith is a legit quarterback. I don't think he's Case Keenum. Case Keenum was legit, though. He was a backup. I don't disagree, but well, so, so was so Geno. Was, but I <laughs> think what Geno's doing, just the throws he's been able to make off platform. His athletic ability. K- uh, fair. That's that it. From, I didn't see you that got it Case there. Keenum. Athletic ability, 100%. Case, you I, have I, it. I thought Case Keenum. But Case was firm, 22-7, and seven, and that's without starting at the beginning of the season also. I thought that Case Keenum was a system quarterback where Geno Smith is somebody that elevates the system. He, he's mm. playing better you under... He elevates the system? Well, under Shane Waldron, he's been playing better under, mm-hmm. under this mm-hmm. thing. Beginning of the year, for sure. I feel like over the last few weeks... I mean, you have Lockett going now. Walker was missing time. I feel like I with think, Derek Carr, though, still, still forget see, that the Seahawks don't got a good offensive line. They don't. They have you good know, tackles, but their interior is still getting better. This yes. isn't a this isn't a team that the off situation is very great, and Geno Smith has still been playing at an yeah. amazing level. I mean, he's got two elite wide receivers and a great elite? running back. DK is elite. Okay, Lockett, is it? Lockett, Lockett has Lockett. been amazing. Elite, he's been elite. He's elite's elite. a strong it, word. It is, the, if you're talking about wide receiver twos, he's one of the best wide receiver twos. You could elite. say that for sure. You, know you could mean? say like he's a top getting, five wide receiver two, yes. and I would you're not, not scoff at it. You're not getting much better than Tyler Lockett as your wide receiver two. Like Tiggett, Higgins, Waddle, sure, but outside of that, there's only a handful of guys. Mike probably. Williams, you still have to throw in that conversation. But I do, I do this think this year. Smitty, Smitty, facts. I do think that Geno Smith is legit though. Like, that's the only pushback I'm going to give you there. I think that... Yeah, I don't know if you move up Geno for Carr. I don't know no. if that's a big enough difference, especially if you have to pay Derek uh, Carr more. I mean, what is what is Geno Smith, in your opinion, a top what? Uh, 20 quarterback. Okay. Top uh, 15-ish quarterback, yeah. I mean, this season, you could say he's played like a top 15-ish, I for sure. Can, I don't see why he can't continue to play like this, though. Mm. That's my thing. Like, why can't he? I don't want to. I don't want to write him off. I don't want to do that. But you have to no, you, you have to understand when you have a better opportunity, and I feel like Derek Carr is a better opportunity. It is for Seattle. That's moving laterally, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a big enough for upgrade. Seattle. That's why. Why are we going to bring in a total stranger to our system when Geno Smith has been here for years? He knows the offense. He knows the receivers. Yeah. He has relationships, and it's not a significant upgrade at quarterback. Did you feel similarly when Kirk signed to Minnesota? No, I love the Kirk move. Even though they went to the NFC Championship with Case Keenum, you had him at a discount. You did not have to spend 84 guaranteed. I never thought Case was legit. 
that's my thing. Like, I'm, listen, I'm not saying I thought Case Keenum was a top 10 quarterback, but a good enough, clearly, to bring you to an NFC championship. They had some some luck on their yeah, side, absolutely. A lot of luck. But that was a great throw. And that was an elite defense they had, one of the best in the I, NFL. For sure. Kirk, but, Kirk never had that but, in Minnesota. But Case was keeping up to par, dude. The thing, the thing about Minnesota is that most of the roster just – it either got older or some key players left, and that's why the roster wasn't the same with Kirk. But I thought it was a good move because they upgraded a quarterback. I don't view Derek Carr instead of Geno as an upgrade. I view it as a lateral move. The Jets, I, I view going from Mike White to Derek Carr as a huge upgrade. I view wa- in Washington's standpoint, I view going from Heineke or Wentz to Carr mm. is a huge I str- upgrade. I struggle. I struggle with the Wentz one as a huge. I struggle with it. Heineke's I don't know. A, a oh, absolute! Oh my God, what do you do? Why did he's they just? Why did they just bench Heineke they then? Well, but Heineke trying, had the. They're they trying to took the job. From they're him. trying to. He find got hurt, answers. but he kept it. They both suck. Nah, I don't want either of them. Yeah, they're don't want either of them. I like Wentz. The other and the other he's, team, he's of still course. Like yeah. The other team, of course, is the Colts. That Derek Carr. Oh God. If I'm Derek Carr, I'm sprinting away from that. Who the hell wants for the Colts? Or the entire NFC South. Yeah, the Bucks are a team that Brady moves on. I was gonna say Carolina's an interesting one, but Carolina's interesting, yeah. Atlanta. You don't believe in uh, Atlanta Sam, is Atlanta. interesting. Especially for the fact they've won more games than anticipated, but they're still gonna have a decent enough pick. But to pair Carr with Pitts and Drake London, that's exciting. And Tyler Algier, uh, he's, he's been sneaky, good. really good this and, year. And the Saints. Say that one more time. And the Saints. Saints yeah. are interesting. I just don't know if I love that situation. Obviously, Olave is he's going to be a stud, absolutely. Michael Thomas, you can't trust that he's going to be on the field at all. Do you Jarvis believe in Dennis Landry's Allen old. as a head coach? That's another no. thing. So I think, yeah, Derek Carr, the Jets, I mean, I don't know if I'm being biased, feels like the best situation with the defense, Fair. with the weapons. The O-line has to improve. And LaFleur isn't – I'm not sold mm-hmm. on LaFleur mm-hmm. in terms of, like, being a great play caller. But I think, I think we've seen – we've seen him – Put Josh Johnson in good situations. Mike Wayne in good situations. Flacco's had some good games. So I think there's hope there. And Tony Romo said on the broadcast when we were facing the Bills that he thinks Michael Floor is a, a rising star at the at the coordinator. He said some nice stuff about Zach Wilson too. He can't always be right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tony Romo. You know, Romo mostly knows what he's talking about though, for sure. I mean, obviously. Joe Burrow versus Josh Allen. This game is going to happen Monday night. This is the finally. best Monday Night Football finally, game that they've finally, ever had, finally. I think, this season. This, th- these years. primetime games, sorry, Joe, I'm going to say it again, have been so ass this year, partly because Why? we got five Broncos games. This? That's in part of the reason, but it feels like every even week one was Bills versus Rams. Looking back at it now, terrible matchup. I mean, you could really count on one hand, like the Chiefs and Chargers game week two or three on Thursday night was great, but there was really been a day. lot of stinkers. I remember that day. It was rough. I don't know why they can't mess. flex games. I told you Diggs was going to eat. They can, but like I think it's only at like certain weeks in the season, uh, and you can't flex like a one o'clock to an eight o'clock, maybe like a four to an eight. I don't know why they just don't make it simple. Put the best games on prime time. The Bills are twelve and three. The Bengals eleven and four. Now this game has serious implication implications on seeding. The Bengals are on a seven game win streak. The Bills on a six game win streak. And Burrow and Allen. Fun fact. Since 2021, have produced 68 touchdowns, tied second only behind Mahomes, who's at 74. And Cincinnati is the only team that has three wide receivers that have 700 yards or more receiving. This is a big test, I think, for the Bengals and Bills offense, for both offenses. I think it's a big test. And I'm going to just give my prediction right now. I think the Bengals are winning this game. I got Cincinnati winning this game. Game. What do they do better than Buffalo outside of rushing the ball? Oh, uh, I'm looking and at that's even debatable. I'm looking at the Bengals defense versus the Bills offense. The Bengals use a lot of five man fronts, but they also drop eight into coverage. Okay. And the Bills don't have a weapon outside of Stephon Diggs that you respect. You wow, <laughs> interesting. It, they, they don't growth, have a weapon outside growth, my brother. Love they, that. They don't have a a weapon outside of Stephon that they respect. They dropped eight into coverage against Mahomes. It worked well. Versus Lamar, they showed that they can spy the quarterback. And the Bills are 22nd in pass-blocking offensive line this year. The offensive line has not been holding up for the most part. Allen has been escaping and bailing out of pockets earlier. And this stat just shows the Bills' lack of weapons outside of Stephon Diggs. So when team when defenses play man coverage on you a lot, it means that they don't respect the weapons you have. 
That's what it means. So these are the quarterbacks and the percentage of man coverage they face on third on third down. Zach Wilson is number one at 61%, which means that teams were not respecting Zach Wilson's ability to read. Probably blitzing too a lot. Yeah, they, they were not respecting his ability at all to read defenses. But Zach Wilson, we can just get him out of here, right? Mahomes, if we're not talking about Zach Wilson, Mahomes is first at 53%. And that's because no Tyreek Hill, Juju, MVS, McColl, those guys, teams play man coverage on them. They're not, they're not scared of those weapons. Josh Allen is second in that percentage. Lamar Jackson is third, and Aaron Rodgers is fourth. So all quarterbacks that we look at that, the weapons on these teams are not real legit threats that you really fear. Um, so Josh, does Allen, that mean they're playing man-to-man coverage on Kelsey? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's there's a reason why Kelsey's putting up video game numbers. Yeah, you know, Casey has done an amazing job. I mean, they're still a fantastic offense. Most of these outside of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers are they've been great offenses. But this stat just goes to show how little defensive respect the weapons. And the Bengals, I think, in this game are going to play a lot of man coverage against the Bills. And they're going to trust their three-man fronts of DJ Reader, Trey Hendrickson, and Sam Hubbard to get after Josh Hendrickson's Allen. out for the season. Oh, he's out for the he season. He is, he is, he is. No way. Yeah, Hendrickson's cooked. No and Collins. Way. But Hubbard, Hubbard's going to play. Hubbard's going to play. Oh, that that's, sucks, that's what, bro. bro, that's what I've been saying back. about Cincinnati. The injuries are scaring me. Lyle Sam Hubbard, Sam Hubbard still. Yeah, something like that. Hubbard's going to, he has Hubbard a chance to play. Been, He's been, been solid. Bowl, He's been solid. He's been solid. He's been solid. Yeah, man. And DJ Reader is one of the best defensive tackles yeah, man. in a league. The The place where I struggle with the Bengals in this matchup is his secondary. Secondary is Eli Apple, Cam Taylor, Britt, Mike Hilton, Von Bell, Jesse Bates. This year, this group has been the best in the NFL at completion percentage allowed at only 60.2% allowed. And Josh Allen, 29 turnover worthy plays this season, the most in the NFL. I think that the defense and the covers could cause some problems for him. The key for the Bills, really, is that Stephon Diggs has to win his matchup, which I'm, I trust him to, but the other guys have to win. Gabe Davis has to win. Knox has to win. And Sam McKenzie. I, I, don't, I don't really know if I can trust them to win consistently. And the offensive line and the, the passing attack needs help from the running game. And the Bengals are one of the best run defenses in, in football. So if they can lock down the run and force them to pass and then throw a bunch of different looks at them of these fronts that I think that can cause a lot of problems for the bills. And that's why I, I, I trust the Bengals defense in this game over, over the bills defense. I don't think you're stopping Cincinnati's offense. It's as simple as that. You're not stopping them. They've been able to run the ball better. I, I am curious to see how Lyle Collins and him being out affects this offensive line yeah. because they have been lining him up five yards apart from the right guard and really putting him on a, on an island against edge rushers, and he's athletic enough to handle it. And his replacement's going to be Adenogy or Isaiah Prince. Can they hold up? I'm not sure, but you still got Chase. You got Boyd. You got Higgins. The run game and them just making their offense exclusively out of shotgun has helped this offense tremendously. And Joe Burrow this year has improved dramatically at just getting the ball out quick. Absolutely. And he helps his offensive line a lot in that aspect. His pocket time is 2.2 this season, which is, is is fourth in the NFL. I got the Bengals in this game, 27 to Bills, 24. I think the Bengals. <laughs> I like the score prediction, yeah, I mean, it's gonna too. Be it's going to be I close. I like the Bills. Uh, I, mean, I like the Bengals. Oh, pardon me. It's funny, my guys, it's funny that they, <laughs> they really can't lose. They play man coverage the most on the Chiefs and the Bills. Meanwhile, number one and number two in terms of offensive yards per game are the Chiefs and the Bills, respectively. Why are we playing man coverage against two of the best quarterbacks in the league, arguably number one Gabe and number Davis two? Can't get separation. No, but Gabe Davis still is a deep threat, whether you like it or not. I don't disagree. Uh, Gabe Davis definitely could be better in his route running, but Josh Allen still gets him the ball. Isaiah McKenzie still gets him the ball. We don't have to talk about Stephon Diggs, who's one of the best in the game, of course. And slowly but surely, we're starting to see James Cook integrated into this offense a little bit more. Last week's not going to be the greatest indicator. Of course, they played Chicago, and Chicago's rush defense is not good. We saw both Cook and Singletary almost go for 100. I say almost because Cook just missed the market. I think he had 98 yards, something like that, but on 11 touches. Super effective with his with his touches. But 
I believe that the Bills' defense, ironically enough, is better than the the Bengals' defense. And I say ironically enough because, obviously, we just had this whole discussion about how the Bengals' defense has been pretty solid and they could match up well against these guys. But Bills' defense, it of the real contenders in the AFC, the Bills do have the best defense, at least statistically, where they are the only top 10 defense in the league when talking about the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen... Not that Joe Burrow isn't meant for primetime also because we've seen Joe Burrow show up for moments for moments, moments after moments, excuse me. But Josh Allen showed that when the lights are brightest, he comes to play for sure. And whether that means that he's going to pass the ball, he's going to take it into his own hands and make things happen, Josh Allen's probably going to get the job done. And in terms of rushing, why I, I had a moment of what do the Bengals do better than the Bills, what the Bengals have that is better than the Bills is a luxury of weapons. Absolutely. I don't disagree with your point there. Chase, Higgins, Boyd, Mixon, Samaje Ryan, who has been a lot better than I had given him respect sure. to. He's been very good. But somehow, some way, Josh Allen has forced himself or forced his way into allowing you to respect him as a weapon in and of itself, not just as a quarterback. Because in terms of rushing, yes, Joe Mixon is is very good. Samaje Ryan has been solid. But you add Josh Allen to the mix in terms of rushing, you have to you have to give credit where credit is due and acknowledge his at what he brings to the table for the Buffalo Bills. Not only is he an elite passer, but for the quarterback, he is an elite rusher as well. And it opens up the game for not just Singletary and Cook, but of course the weapons on the outside. I think it's gonna be a great game, absolutely. Ironically enough, I like your score prediction, except flipped. I think twenty seven twenty four Buffalo Bills come out on top. Joe Burrow's big time. Absolutely, big time. absolutely. absolutely. This, is, this is game of the year. I mean, out of all the primetime games, at least we, you know, end off, I guess, start 2023 with a big-time game. And you guys talked a lot about the team matchups, but in a funny way, this is almost like Josh Allen's trying to catch up to Burrow. I know we look at whoa, we look whoa, at whoa. these two quarterbacks, and everyone has Josh Allen above Joe Burrow. But right now, what Josh Allen is missing is basically what Joe Burrow has done. I mean, Joe Burrow has won multiple playoff games. He's gone to the Super Bowl. He's undefeated against Patrick Mahomes. We know how great Josh Allen is. He's one of the best quarterbacks in this league, one of the most talented quarterbacks we've ever seen. But right now, the only thing that's really stopping him from being in that Mahomes conversation has been getting over the hump in the playoffs. Now, Burrow's only done it one time. He had one great run, and maybe he goes on another run this season. But right now, in a funny way, Josh Allen is still looking up to him. And you can make the argument that, not even an argument, Josh Allen has had more time. He's probably had better teams. He's had better defenses throughout the years. Bengals defense the last couple of years have obviously been, you know, improving as well. The offensive line last year was definitely better for Buffalo than it was for the Cincinnati Bengals. The weapons, of course, you could side with Joe Burrow. They have probably the best wide receiver room in the NFL, especially taking account Tyler Board as the wide receiver three. But it's just kind of funny to look at when you look at these two quarterbacks because I still put, without a doubt, Josh Allen above Joe Burrow. I do think he is more talented. But that's really the one thing that's missing is in those playoff times, in those big moments. Josh Allen, I'm not saying he folds by any means. Obviously, we look at that game against Kansas City. That was one of the best games I've ever witnessed in my life. And that was only a second-round playoff matchup given against two of the best quarterbacks in the league. But I do think this is game of the year, not including the playoffs we get to later. But right now, Josh Allen's looking at Burrow. He's going into Cincinnati and saying, I want what you did last year, except win that Super Bowl. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I do have the Bengals winning. I think it's going to be a close game, obviously. Um, but the injuries to Collins and to Hendrickson is obviously worrisome. One of the biggest reasons or one of the common denominators between any Super Bowl team, you're healthy, especially around Facts. this time, December, January, when you're going into the playoffs, one of the most common themes, you have to be hot, you have to be healthy. Right now, the Bengals are kind of taking a backseat there with losing two of their biggest pieces in the trenches on the offense and defensive line. You're not going to get Collins back. I think there's a chance Hendrickson comes back or no? I I could have swore last I saw he's done for the season. I know Collins has a torn ACL and MCL, so he's not coming back. Um, Obviously a huge loss, but it's going to be a good game, game of the year. I think the Bengals just edge it out. Woo. That was a nice little monologue you had there, buddy. Yeah, he's he's out. Back to the wrist. <sighs> what a way to start off the New Year's, right? Um, So, Trey Hendrickson's not out. He's going to play through his injury. Ooh, he's really? going to play with a brace on his broken wrist. Oh, he's a demon. Yeah. A fractured wrist is nuts to play through. And he's hurt. playing. He's playing. Is he playing this week? Yes. Well, it's wow. That's crazy because all the reports said that it's looking like he's going to try and 
make it back for the postseason. He's playing on Monday. Oh, he said he's making it back from the postseason. I probably. <laughs> bro, bro. So I said he's playing this I week. Mean, said, listen, yeah. the, the headline for this is Bengals Trey Henderson to play with a brace on broken wrist. He's avoiding the IR. Yes. yes. So there's a chance that he comes back if they obviously make a run in the playoffs. But I, I could have swore he was out for at least well, the rest the of the regular season. He's not out for the season. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's the good thing. I, if he does, if he misses this game, it's 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 whatever. Yeah, it's okay. yeah. <clears throat> he's been limited. He, last week he was limited. Can I can I say something to Joel real quick? Oof. Catching up to Joe Burrow. I thought he needed a massage. No, no, he no. Looks like he does, I wouldn't yeah. have mind that either. Actually, I just went to Sojo. Shout out to Alexander. Oh, nice. She took me out there. Mm. It, it was cold. It was great. Say it one more time. Cold outside, dude. Though. It was bizarre. It was cold for sure, but it wasn't like freezing. It was like forty ish. Okay. But man, it was fantastic. Was that vibe of being outside in the cold, but being in, in hot water, water was surreal. Honestly, beautiful. But to catch up to Joe Burrow. I understand the sentiment. It's not ridiculous what you're saying. I have a hard time sitting with it because, yes, Josh Allen does have multiple playoff wins of his own. He hasn't had multiple in a row because, one, he had the bye, where then he beat the Ravens, then played Kansas City. Kansas City kind of just, they, they took out. No, he has multiple in a row. The AFC Championship year. No, they had the bye. The, then they beat the Ravens, and, and then they, they the lost oh, to the Chiefs. Shit, they did have a bye. But he does Painful. have he does have multiple. He, he absolutely owned the Patriots, and then against Kansas City, Josh Allen at the minimum comes to play. Even that game in the AFC Championship game, they had no run game, which was obviously that their downfall. They were super one dimensional, but Josh Allen came to play. Josh Allen last season, he was unbelievable in the postseason against the Chiefs. Again, he came to play. Left the field with 14 seconds left. Winning the ball game. It's not a Josh Allen thing, more so as it's a Buffalo Bills thing. A Buffalo Bills defense issue. That If we want to have that conversation, I'm with you, of course. But if you just look at it solely off, Joe Burrow beat the Chiefs, beat Patrick Mahomes, went to the Super Bowl. I understand where you're coming from. He also but, beat the Raiders but that's, in the science. Uh, no, absolutely. Shout out to them. But, you know, he, he beat Bill Belichick. He absolutely smoked him. Well, and the, then the against Kansas not, City, we're not as good of a team. Oh, oh no, but, but they're so st- as, as the Titans. Absolutely not. I actually agree with those, and I, I, th- I think it's because I can't sit with and, that and one. Before you go, Riv, Trey Hendrickson was active against the Patriots last week. He's so he going to play played. this game. Oh, okay, that's he's going to play this. So game. he didn't play last week. He was active. I think he got some snaps. I, I could be wrong if he played or not, but if he was active against the Patriots last week, then most certainly um, he's going to play this game. He actually had one tackle. Against the Patriots, he so missed just, against the. He just won. Yeah, he only played forty three percent of snaps. Yeah. Okay, so I mean he's, he's, he's playing around. against. All right, I, I, listen. The report I, mean, I saw is out for the that. regular season. He's a nutcase for this. Shout out to Trey. Shout out to Trey. Uh, but I, I think I agree with those because I think like this game has AFC Championship possibilities. You know, it has no doubt the next guy coming up to be behind Patrick Mahomes because Joe Burrow has been amazing. And if you look at the last six seven weeks, you know these are two of the hottest teams in the NFL. But Josh Allen hasn't been Josh Allen in some of those stretches. You know, as great as he is, I love Josh Allen to death. He's been struggling. You know, he even though he guts out wins in the fourth quarter, he's still statistically Joe Burrow has been better as of late, probably arguably this season. So in terms of what Dells is saying, like he has, he's trying to catch up to him because Joe Burrow has made a Super Bowl. This year, Joe Joe Burrow has arguably been better than Josh Allen statistically. So I think the catch up part makes sense. I think Josh Allen understands that he hasn't been playing good ever since he got the UCL injury. He hasn't been playing well. He's been he's been having to run with the ball, so it's been really tough. But um, the Bengals are hot defensively. They've been rolling. Offensively, they're they're always going to be great. The Bills are still a top ten defense in the league. Offensively, you mentioned it. It's only Diggs and Josh Allen. But when you have those two guys, it just opens up the field for so many other players. I do have the Bills winning this game. You know, I think they win this game in, in, a, in a really close game. I got, I got 30-24 uh, Buffalo Bills. I do think the defense is going to be there. But I think offensively, Josh Allen has to come to play. I think he has to come be that same guy that came to play against Miami. He has to come out and do this thing. When you, when you play, in, when you're on the other side, right, and you play a guy of your stature or a guy that's fighting for the crown just like you, I feel like it ups your game a little bit, and you have to come to play. You know, he's gutted out wins against Baltimore late in the fourth quarter. He has he has, he has has that win against Miami. Miami that was he has that win against Detroit when him and Stephon Diggs drove down the field and he was running the ball. You know, so he when it's time to play in the fourth quarter, Josh Allen has shown this year that he can do it. But Joe Burrow has been fucking amazing. So I think I got Buffalo winning, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals win. It's going to be a great game. It is going to be a great game. 
Joey Joey B's that guy, man. Joe Burrow's that guy. Joe Shiesty. Joe Shiesty. Joe Shiesty. He's that guy. They're really, Michigan is up Joe twenty-one to three on TCU right now. Wow, Other way around. Crazy. My TCU. apologies. TCU is up twenty-one to three on Michigan. Is what I meant to say. Freaking! I really lost this. China parlay, fifty-nine bro. yard field goal. Michigan always time folds out. when it matters. Time out, time out. Look at this, man. Look at this parlay I just lost, bro. Hate it had Are to be you. Are you kidding me? Too much. It's always one leg that messes me up. You can't be serious. I tell you, bro. My goodness, bro. I tell you. <sighs> Straight bets just aren't fun, bro. <laughs> They're not, but they just aren't fun, bro. You're not gonna be. Very I went on one of my parlays. craziest runs. You don't only you don't on really straights. Do. I had to. I had to quit. I did have to, to quit. quit. I had to. You quit because I because I I have an addictive personality. I know me. I'm very honest with that. When I get when I my mind starts to get into something, it goes all out. So yeah, it got to a point where I was going 150 on straights. Would win that. Would go whatever I want on that. Just do that the next straight. Got to a point where I was almost at a rack, just putting on straights, and I lost, and I was upset, and I was just like, "This is it. I'm done." I respect that. Yeah, shit. I understand, man. I really do. It was lit. I made some money. Oh, I didn't. I didn't completely. Yeah, lose I, I all don't my remember bread. seeing your units. You would send in. I'd be like, "Damn." Oh, yeah, I was lit. PG had 45, but he lost by one. Damn. How's Kawhi? Uh, 24. Respect. Made the field goal. So Miles Turner had 30. There you go. Two, two possession game. Miles Turner had 34 and 10. Halftime. It's going to be a Nets legend very soon. Who? Miles Turner. I don't know. If Indiana keeps winning like this, yeah. I doubt it. Low you got key. Claxton, bro. Had both Claxton and Miles Turner. Scary hours. Play both of them? You uh, can. Not, you probably, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you yeah, could. Turner could stretch, I guess. But then the but issue becomes... Then how do you integrate? How do you integrate Simmons as well into that? Also, yeah, now it's a mess. Don't worry about the Nets. And defensively, we kind of mess too. <laughs> <laughs> they they the they don't need. Uh, don't Miles. Worry, I'll just say, don't worry about the Nets. I'm not. I'm not worried about the Nets. Yeah, yeah. They're don't a good team. The respect them too. I do. Respect I'm excited them. for this respect next them. topic. High key. One. Now from now on, from here on out, the rest of the episode will be basketball, and Luka Doncic has been on a complete tear recently. Versus the Knicks, sixty points, twenty one rebounds. 10 assists this season. He's averaging 34 and nine and nine has the best, has the 10th best defensive rating this season, by the way, I just mm. want to say that. I thought you said it was a flawed stat. It is a, it's a team stat. It's a team <laughs> stat. <laughs> got it, got it, but got it. that means that, you Somebody's know, the you. defense has been pretty good, right? And Luca has the 10th most triple doubles all time with 54. He just crazy. keeps climbing up in the ranks. And this question is comparing him to another all time. Great player. is James Harden, you know, cause uh, I, I, I've been seeing on Twitter, Right, Luka Doncic has been getting praise a lot for his performances, and James Harden fans are coming out of the woodworks and saying, "But try and keep the same energy when Harden was doing this." And that's a lie. Well, when James Harden was doing this, you guys weren't (laughs) praising him like this. And you agree with that? And that's one hundred percent facts. No, it is not. I feel like if James Harden was appreciated, he would have won the twenty nineteen MVP. But Giannis robbed him of that award. Luka probably won't win the twenty twenty two MVP. The players voted. For James Harden to win that year. James Harden averaged 36 points per game, I believe, or was it 34? It was one of those two. That, he 29, he 36. He 36 averaged, point one. No, no, I think he averaged 36 the year with Westbrook. The year before that, he averaged 34 points per game. Chris Paul and Capella were hurt for the majority of the year, and they won 54 games. The Bucks only won six more games, 60, being all healthy. 60's nuts. Yeah, yeah, but Chris Paul and Capella, if they were healthy, they would have won 60, and Harden would have been MVP. But this is a Luka versus Harden thing. Uh, first question. Do you think that people are showing Luka more praise than they did to Harden? And the second question is, if you think Luka Doncic is better than prime James Harden. Um, but real quick, the year that they had Russell was the bubble year, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the year before, 36.1. Insane. Yeah, thirty six. It's okay, bro. You don't have to look it up. They, they no, I want to know. I just want to. No word, because sure. I I thought the same thing, but I'm I'm I was pretty sure. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah flip facts. Okay, yeah, he averaged thirty six. He was good. The fact he that great. he won MVP was ridiculous. Oh boy! But the fact that he won MVP. Giannis ain't deserved that. Did he, well? Would you say that Harden deserved MVP the year prior? Yes. But I would disagree. So it's it's semantics. Games. Oh, absolutely. It was amazing. LeBron played all eighty two. Led the Cavaliers who were. God yeah, knows what they were. A brand new team in the second half of the All Star after the All Star break, with the fourth seed and LeBron put up video game numbers. Good for him. 
I'm hey, listen, and good for James Harden for averaging thirty six. You know, thirty six is different than what LeBron did, though. He had more total points than thirty six Harden. points per game. Is no, historic. no, absolutely. But oh, he what had is it, he had number more three all time in points per game in the season. Probably. I know MJ was there. at thirty seven point one. My goodness, James Just Harden. Saying, look, listen, at the twenty eighteen season, LeBron had more points, more rebounds, listen, more assists, more LeBron. steals, more blocks. I'm just saying. That's I mean, all I'm saying. We, has, we, we I'm just talking about MVPs. He, he had more totals, but perhaps because he was Harden more available. Harden averaged more. He averaged no, more he points and assists did. that year. Yeah, he did. Listen, <laughs> the topic. You I am I am interested in your opinion on this. Me? Yeah, why, I am. Why, why me? Because I don't know if we're going to agree on this. Oh, no, it's it's really sad. It's honestly sickening how the Harden fans just like to come out the woodworks. Oh, no, now we're sick. agreeing. Yeah, yeah, no, we're they, agreeing. They like to come out the woodworks and act as if they wasn't pushing. They're throwing pity parties. Pushing Harden over Kobe agendas <laughs> during those times. And pushing Harden is the great. As an offensive greatest. engine, you can argue it. Yeah, look, look. And then pushing Harden's a better scorer than Michael Jordan. Like, enough. Is that saying that he was better than Wade? Enough. Like even that was uh, rude. Enough. He's a better player than Dwayne Wade. No, he's not. Dwayne Wade just had a better moment. And what about he's the defensive player? Aspect of things? Yes. Okay. Dwayne Wade had a better moment for sure, but James Harden. You were talking about peak for peak offensive for offensive game. Catching. James Harden's better than Dwayne Wade, I think. Okay. Defensively, Dwayne Wade for sure, but James Harden. The two different. Very few players that can mess with him offensively in, in league history. Okay. I understand. Two okay. different players. I, I don't really want to compare. I want to stick to Harden and Luka because I think they're on the same trajectory. You know, I think I do think that style of play is very compatible. They do play a similar style. Um, in terms of Harden, isn't I think he got a lot of praise. You know, I think by the media, you could say I, I can see what you're saying with the media. The media was kind of not trying to give him the MVP. I understand that point when he could have deserved. You think it. so? Yeah, I, I think you could have. I think you could have made an argument. Like they didn't. They didn't like Harden. They didn't like the foul baiting. <laughs> okay, they true. didn't like the Fair. foul like baiting. They didn't point. like his style of shooting all those janky threes. So I understand that point. Traveling. But in terms of ball knowers, in terms of people who know ball, Harden was getting a lot of praise. Man, I think it's just Harden fans. He was. Bro. You guys make so it, much praise. You guys make it so hard to praise him when you start pushing stupid ass takes. Like he's not better than Kobe. He's not a greater scorer than MJ. But when you start doing shit like yes. that, it makes people resent. The guy makes people want to root for him because you start pushing insane agendas. Now, what's the second part of the question? Is he Prime better? Harden or Luca? Ooh. Right now. Shit. That's so tough because Luca just started. Um The fact have, that we're having an the fact that we're having the conversation. No, Luca's one on one. Means that even if he's not there yet. We know the the path Absolutely. is right there. Well, listen, you guys are taking Luca your time. Would clear. I know, no, I know my answer. I know my answer. Luca listen, clear my, my him answer, him. my answer is Luca. Well, first of all, we're talking about James Harden at his prom, twenty six or thirty years old. Luca's doing what Harden is doing. Yeah, year at five. age twenty to yeah. twenty three. And listen, regular season, I do give it to James Harden. Regular season, it's James Harden. But when when we look at the postseason. I mean, Luka Doncic is averaging 33 in the postseason. James Harden at his peak averaged 30. But here was the discrepancy. James Harden shot 42% from the field in the postseason and 31% from three. Luka shoots 47% from the field in the postseason and 37% from three. We're talking about Luka. He's Luka second all-time in, in points per game in the playoffs. He's 15th all-time in assists per game in the playoffs. He's been to a conference finals already. And, and I know that... Had it not been for the Warriors, James Harden sitting on a championship right now. I'm with you. There's no doubt. Luka played the and I, I do think that James Harden choking in the playoffs is over-exaggerated because, for example, 2018 Western Conference Finals. In Game 6, James Harden had 32, 7, and 9. Game 7, he had 32, 6, and 6. What's the, the efficiency the on very, that one, The very next year, when in 2019, when they got eliminated by the Warriors in the second round, James Harden in that series averaged 35 points per game. So I do think that him choking is a bit of a false narrative, but Luka is an all-time great playoff performer thus far into his career, Oof. and he's an all-time great regular season player. We've never seen somebody Oof. have a 60-point triple-double like him. All-time I mean, great regular season performer already? Luka? No doubt about it. I mean, the only no th you're just waiting it. for more years. We see it. It's here. I feel like we just, to, if to, you just need longevity, if that's the only uh, thing stopping you. I mean, you, no, I don't know. I love what you said. You said the trajectory that Luca is on, it's inevitable that he will be. That is a fact. 100% Luca will be better. But the question is Luca right now or prime James Harden? Prime James Harden, from the way that I view it, is from 2014 
to the end of the two thousand the, the the 2019 season. Because from that stretch, Harden at the minimum averaged 27 points, and the most he averaged was 36. Yeah. That is astronomical. What he was doing in that period was insane. And on top of being one of the best scorers that the game has ever seen, he also was one of the best passers in the league, where he did lead the league one time in assists. So the way that I like to, I, I try to break it down. Luke is more efficient. Harden's the better scorer. How is he a better scorer, though? Shooting the basketball, I would take. I would take James Harden. Even uh, free throw shooting. Efficient? Yes, crazy. the way it's just because he's sh- his shot, take, his shot diet shots. is crazy. See, but his shot diet is interesting. But also the efficiency at the free throw line is something that you That's can't fair. overlook as yes. well. His ability to get to the free throw line at that time that, period that. was second to none. Finishing near the basket, absolutely. I'm going Luka Doncic. He has the size advantage over Harden. Not that that's really the end all be all, but it does benefit Luka as well. Luka's a better post up player too. Absolutely. Passing the basketball, I'm going with James Harden. Rebounding the basketball, that's Luka Doncic. Passing the basketball it's is close. James Harden. I think it's it close. is James Harden. I think it's close. I think it's close. It's not as easy as you're trying to make it out. To t- all right, your fair fair statement. Fair statement. I, I just feel like I, think, I do think it's close. I just feel like the answer is James Harden, which is why I feel so emphatic about it. We can, if you want to say that Luca is is getting closer to Harden, I'm fine with it. But prime Harden is a better passer. We're not talking about I it now. Close. I just think it's close. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just, I just, just feel like it's the a pa- the pa- uh, no, not a clearing. No, uh, we're talking about Luca Doncic. We're, we're talking about it's not close. Not I know, but I just think I the answer is Harden. The answer is Harden. At the end of the day, I think I I, I do. Can. Sorry, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm so sorry. I just want to say this one thing. I do think comparing their playoffs is unfair. Because I think you cannot compare uh, Luca playing four to five playoff series to what James Harden was doing at peak. That's I do fact. think that's unfair. It's, uh, he didn't get out of the first round twice. He was all world. He was all world. But the second one, he got gassed out in the fourth quarter. Clippers ended up taking advantage. But he was still amazing that second go around. This last season that we saw from, from Luca was unbelievable. He was a dog. But he did lose to the Warriors, the KD less Warriors. And he Andrew was Andrew Wiggins worse. This say his name. And oh, absolutely, and Andrew champs. Wiggins. Credit to him. NBA champions. That's yeah. my guy. But what Harden was doing against those Warriors, it was a tougher task. The efficiency wasn't there. Forty-one and twenty-nine. Man. But he was the Rockets. The Rockets have absolutely. But Harden was still great, and he was playing an yeah, unbelievable team. While playing next to Chris Paul is kind of nuts. And what did the Rockets uh, didn't the Mavs lose in Chris five? Chris Paul was injured for the majority of the year, but yeah, I guess I was the, the Mavs lost in five. Yes. Very comfortably yeah. five. It was no very chance. Comfortable. They have no yes. chance. Yeah, like, no chance. I, listen, it was obvious. The Warriors were a better team than the I Mavericks. Think the, the, the gap between the Warriors and the Mavericks is kind of close to the gap between the KD Warriors and the Rockets. I think you still you pick the Warriors comfortably over both teams, but Harden did make it difficult, and he made he could have won those series. He could have. Could have won those. Do you not Chris take, get hurt. He do you not take into account that Luka is doing this at such an early age? Uh, the that, fact that he's doing this at 23. And listen, obviously Harden was a sixth man to start off his career. Then he gets straight to the Rockets. You see that jump. Yeah. But the fact that I think it was year eight, I want to say, that Harden got his first 30-point season. Um, one, two, three, four. Five. Year nine, got they got his first 30-point season. I and actually, then we got Luka doing this in year five at 23. Well, the question this, was, this, this thing. It, the question was Luka now or prime Harden. I can acknowledge what Luke is doing at this age, this soon into his career, is amazing. But you're asking me to compare it to prime James Harden. That's where I have to be. I have to put that aside, where I can acknowledge that in different conversations, absolutely, it's impressive. But when we're comparing it to prime Harden, that's where I kind of have to put age to the side and just say, what you're giving me now versus what Harden was giving me then, that's where I feel like part of me wants to lean Harden for how consistent it was. Well, I disagree with um, what you said about the playoffs. I think the playoffs is where you judge these players because we know the playoffs is where defenses scheme up on you. The whistle is not getting yeah. called as often. Not to say you and Luca is it, an all time great playoff performer. I understand. I say that, I, I, I four understand. series, four series, five series. I, I understand that Luca <clears throat> lost in the first round versus the Clippers, but that those Clippers teams, can we look at a team outside of the Warriors that Harden faced that were as good as those Clippers teams? That Luca had to go up against? You mean the Denver Nuggets that beat them after the series after? I'm so confused with what you're saying. The Denver Nuggets literally beat them the series after that. The Denver Nuggets, Nikola Jokic, Jamal who Murray. faced Houston, Harden, who oh, you Harden about, you face. Talk, 
the KD Warriors. No, San outside, 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 outside of the Warriors. Of the, Warriors. San Antonio, the Warriors before KD. Nice. Because I feel like when it comes... Harden, there are some series he the does... The Chris Paul, Blake Griffin. Okay. Clippers, that was a good there team. There are times when, when, when Harden does deserve to be defended for these playoff moments. But we're not going to forget in the first round versus the Portland Trail Blazers when Dwight Howard was still... Playing at an all star level, he had an amazing series oh, yeah, that, lost, that yeah. year. Dame hit a buzzer beater. He ended their their series in those playoff runs. Mm-hmm. We're talking about the um, 2018 first round. It was against Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota was not a, a real challenge to be honest. The second round was against Utah. Mm-hmm. Utah was not a real challenge. Not as good as those Clippers teams. We look at the second season. Um, James Harden in the first round in 2019. I, I I'm forgetting who he faced exactly. He did average 31. James Harden? James Harden. That playoff series? Against who? I'm talking that entire playoffs. He averaged 31. That was 2018, 2019. No, yeah. He averaged, th- no doubt. James Harden was amazing. But that was the year that Curry dropped 30 in the second half. Okay. Then in 2019, in the first round, they faced the Utah Jazz. They beat them comfortably. They lost to Golden State in the second round. In the bubble, in the first round, they faced OKC. Harden was amazing. Harden was not amazing that series. Hard- versus in, OKC. In the bubble, he wasn't. No, in the bubble, he wasn't. Lou Dort for the majority of the series was locking him up. So wait, are you saying that you're bugging? saying you're saying just so I, I'm not like misinterpreting? You're saying those the Clippers teams that Luca faced? He averaged he averaged than thirty on almost fifty percent efficiency. Looking at the series, the, Lou Dort had his number the majority of the series. And then, uh, but then to end the series, Harden had a great stop on Lou no, Dort. Yeah, ironically, no, for sure they. Won. Yeah, I'm not moment. just highlighting one moment. moment, but for that's the moment. for I'm saying the entirety of the playoffs. Almost fifty percent efficiency so and wait, almost thirty points. So if you're, but if you're gonna knock on Lou Dort did a good job of limiting yeah, Harden if, though. But if you're gonna knock on teams like Utah and Minnesota, how do, how are you giving praise to the Pelicans without Zion Williamson, a playing team? Why, say where, that one, why are we can you just say that, that? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. I'm talking about Luca. He faced the Clippers. No, can yeah, you say, you're, what's you're the talking, statement? Well, because you're talking about just uh, mm-hmm. you're talking about Opponents. the Clippers are better than most teams that James Harden has played. Yeah, outside of the Warriors. Yeah, yeah sure. you're saying Minnesota, San Antonio, Utah, but well, San Antonio and. James Harden in Game Six without Kawhi Leonard oh, no, yeah, you, you, choked. But most of those teams are better choked. than than this is so the weird. Pelicans. Know, who it's, just so back to, it's just so most, opposite. Some right of those now. teams can compete with that Phoenix Suns team. Most of those teams are better than that Pelicans team. So you can say the same thing about Luca's WCF run too. That a lot of those teams Harden played in the first or second round could be better than that Pelicans team without Zion are arguably on par with that Phoenix Suns team. Like that Spurs team was legit. Absolutely. That Clippers team with Chris Paul, who they they beat, you know, they, the Clippers blew a three one lead, mm-hmm, was mm-hmm. legit. They can go pound for pound with that Phoenix. They might they might arguably be better than them. So there's a lot of teams with the Clippers with, with those Clippers. Chris Paul on the GJ Reddick podcast talked about how their biggest trouble, their the biggest team, the team that gave the most trouble was Golden State because of their switching defense. It took gotcha. them out of a lot of actions they ran. The Mavs have a switch in defense, bro. That that would have been a mad matchup not, for the Clippers. But I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying Dallas <laughs> couldn't beat them. I'm just saying in terms of comparing the match, comparing the teams Dallas has played, or Luca's played in terms of Harden has played. Oh, the Suns made the finals. Not the year Luca beat them. Yeah, but it's the same team. So you don't think the Clipper you don't think that Chris Paul Clippers team is on the same level as the Suns team? No, I think the, the, these Suns are better than those Clippers teams. Was it the same team? Okay. I guess personnel, yes, but it wasn't the same Chris Paul. It's the same team. It's the same personnel. Same personnel, absolutely. But it wasn't really the same team because CP3. Is it not the same team it or was, is it? It just wasn't the same. You weren't getting the same team because you weren't getting the same guy in CP3. You're obviously right in the statement. Chris Paul had stinkers to end the series, but in the first round he was pretty fine. And for the majority of that playoff run, Chris Paul in the Lakers series got hurt. In the in The, the w- Nuggets, he was the, fantastic. Yeah, in the WCF he got hurt. You talk about the Suns run when everybody got hurt. Yeah. And Chris Paul was injured for most of that series, um, for, for, for most of that playoff run. Outside of the Nuggets series, for real, he was hurt. He was playing hurt, Chris Paul. But, listen, I think the, the separator is the playoffs. But That's, why I, yeah. That's why I That's lean Luka. That's why I lean Luka. And That's I know three years. J- James Harden is an it's all-time even... great, and I think he deserves more respect because I, I, I disagree wholeheartedly about how – he was getting respect and appreciation at the time. No, he was not. Every 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 fan hated the way the Rockets played. They hated the foul baiting. All people did was discredit James Harden. No, they discredited that the low key. He didn't win. No, no, low key, they, did low discred- key. they discredited he's the right. style of he's play. He's right because he they, did not win a championship. And, and, then, and then when Luka comes in and plays the same exact way, people acted like I don't it was love it. brand new. I don't love it personally. But this is why I'm a Luka fan. I'm a... 
he's my guy. I mean, he literally regurgitated Luka. James Harden's yeah, game. Yeah, that's why I love Luke because he plays like James Harden so much. But James Harden did it. All yes. everybody did was complain. They hated it. Luka does it, and people are like, wow, we've never seen nothing like this before. Definitely think? at his age. There, there's very few players that we've seen like this ever. Yeah. And that's why that's a separator with, with Luka. And that's why I think he's, he's better than, than James Harden um, all time. But I will say this about James Harden. And here I'm about to get real serious. I'm I'm I don't know which way you're gonna go because it seems like I would expect you to defend James Harden. Just no, I defend James Harden, but I also recognize he's a, he's a Harden and a Luca guy. I, I so recognize who Luca no, is. No, lose, lose it's a him. coin flip. Yeah. I recognize who Luca is. It's a lose lose and a win win. So he's already better than James Harden. Yes, ever was. Yes, because that's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I I'm that's I, I that's feel a strong statement. I, I don't think it's that ridiculous. Second second all time in I, I playoff points. I, I just okay, it's four series. It's four against Kawhi is there, and Paul George. Is there anything that Luca? Is there anything that Luca does team. that makes you think he's no, not going to play? Lost, up, bro, he but it's lost. like he cooked them. He lost. He was going crazy. He lost against Kawhi and PG. He did that. What are we talking about? I know, but it's such a young age. Why are we bringing the eight? Like yes, we can acknowledge what he's doing at this is insane. Can, but if it, all of it is it's just five. longevity, it's that's what makes you a great though. I understand, but if it's just longevity, and we see how great Luca is right now. All that's you're doing is just being early to it. That's all you'd be doing if you're saying Luca right now. We, what makes, you know what, what makes you a it great. It's like, listen, I believe that he will. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. You don't get the title you, by can, doing wait, it. Wait, hold on, hold on. Can, can you not say that right now, Luca in the is playoffs is better than what James Harden showed in the playoffs? <laughs> I don't, ever? I don't, I don't like to compare. What do you mean? But that's facts. Just, yeah, I don't, you're I don't watching like the games. I don't like to compare. Why, watching the games, Luca right now, with, when I watch him, I wrong. trust him more. He produces well, what, more. Why would you, you say more? I would say more specifically in the playoffs. Like, what evidence do you have to say you trust Luca more than Harden? There is literally no evidence in the playoffs. Did did being signed to the Suns? To the Suns? Did you? Stop, see what Harden was stop. doing from game one yep, right. too far right. four to Katie Draymond. It, like, I hate that I have to defend this man, but do you <laughs> see facts. what he was doing to Katie? You're right. Who you said was an elite defender, Draymond Green, who was arguably one of the best defenders ever, top five in his generation, easily. Andre Iguodala, Clay Thompson. Like, did you remember what You're he was doing? You're the same guy that nitpicked his game sevens, though. But did you see what he? Did you and, but, what he was doing? Game, game seven. Talk about they, against the fucking Suns. Game seven. Bro? Game seven. What did he do? James Harden. What did you just tell us? Game seven. You just told I'm me he dropped 31, 9, and 7, yeah, right? But he Wasn't shot that two what it for was? 12 from three. But I asked what the efficiency but, was. Oh, no, yeah. It was, Which, he wait, shot you're 18% about, uh, from three. You're talking about the year they, they shot, they missed 27 straight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he didn't play well game the seven. Very, that doesn't move you that next, Luka does. Regardless if it's the Suns, Warriors, whatever, the biggest move when Luka that, that, steps that hard, up and they win by fucking 60. It doesn't move me that Harden choked against the KD Warriors and Luka killed the uh, Suns. But the, the only reason you choke like that, like, Joel, the only reason I'm not saying choked, but when you're, split, you're splitting hairs I, I just, here, that's what I'm saying. What, what I'm having, trouble, what 30, I'm having like, trouble with is that you're discrediting Luca's first I'm not round discrediting it. just because it was the first round, but it was the it's Clippers. Just a smaller it was the team size. you thought was going to the finals. I, I discredited the first round. I You're just saying it's a small sample size. Did Luca not size. have a game winner in the bubble against the Clippers? Uh, yeah, no, it was legendary. And, yeah, I didn't, did I they not legendary. go to wait, wait, seven wait, the on, second year they faced the Clippers? Because this is what you're going to do. You're going to you're going to you're going to say I'm saying something. You're going to spit it into it a video. It took a while to shoot Shaq like a fishing team to beat Luca and nobody else. No, no, no. What are we talking about? You're not going to spin this into a video and make it seem like I said something. I never discredited what Luca did. I never discredited anything Luca has been doing. I said I just don't want to compare because it's a small sample size. Well, this that's was, all. This segment that's is all comparing. But that's it, all I so, said. So there's, pick, there's so three pick of choose. you. Pick uh, one. No, who I, I, I can who, pick. Who, I don't have to, who's, I don't have better, to who's been better in the playoffs when you've watched them? James Harden or Luca? You can pick. I, I, I'm it's not. Luka, I, I mean, I, I don't think. It's, I, don't I mean, this, this show is called we're comparing. Size, we're comparing. So pick we're comparing a, a man who side. his peak was seven years. We're comparing seven years That's to three I'm years. Saying. I don't want to do that. No, no. I, 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 don't I think that. James Harden. You said 24. I think James Harden' best years was through the 16, 17 season to 19 and 20 yes. season. The first year Harden started averaging 11 assists per game when he I led the league uh, in assists. That to me was his peak. The first two years he was in Houston, he averaged 26 and 27 in the playoffs. I'm talking about. James Harden's absolute peak, which I think is from 26 that, years I mean, old to not, 30 years old. That's not old. prime. Not a, you don't think so? 26 and 27? Like, like that's pretty, that's no, no, incredible. That, that's great, but no, that was in prime Harden. But that was prime the first Harden, two years of him. Prime Harden, Harden was, the, was the years, years where he started averaging 30, yeah. 34, 36. No, no, that's your his peak. peak. No, 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 you no, no. enter, your peak but then you leave. a collection of years you're at your best. Absolutely. That's not, that's That was at his best. No, 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 no. When you first had to double just to make sure I'm not bugging, because sometimes this man went from 2014 
27 points, 2015, 29, 2016, 29, 2017, 30, okay. 2018, 36, yes. 2019, 34. Like, that's a, that's a, what's that, a six, seven that's year That's what peak? I'm saying. That's, that's a good amount of time, bro. What was LeBron's peak? What was his prime? That man has a 18 I, uh, year yeah, peak. Yeah, that is, bro. He really uh, does. I would say, I, would say, seven, I, was, I was gonna say, 07 to, 07 to 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20, 20. I did this based off. It's like a 14 year I did this based off the you did, you wrong, his wrong best <laughs> years. That was the wrong guy. Harden's wrong guy. best years was a four year stretch. 16, 17 to the 19, 20 season. I was 29 points Houston. per game. Not a best year, though. For real. That's yeah, what I'm wondering. You're just getting, you're just getting, Wait, ve- you're just you getting very about? specific now with the peak. You're just cutting your prime into your literal three or four best years. Because, yes, those years definitely count. But if you want to say the best of the best Harden years, he's, that's the one he's pointing out. I mean, I mean the I, best I mean, of the best is the, the 29, the 30, the 36, James the 34. James Harden in 2015 like had, tw- yes. James Harden 2015 averaged, tw- uh, averaged 29. But then in 2016, he averaged 29 and 11. I would still count to 29 points per game. Yes, man. but I'm looking at it from a four-year stretch. Oh, I mean, if you... Okay, from you're getting specific. Because, from a, because it's That's easier to measure him and Luca from a four-year oh, stretch. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. No, I see what you're doing. What, 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 what else can I measure yes. with Luca with? You can't. Like, you don't have a seven-year yeah, stretch. But Luka, that's why. That's why. That's been my whole argument. I get what you're saying, though. Luca from his second year to now... You can measure those years against Harden, and even if you think Luca is not better, the numbers are right. They're there. very close. It, I you agree. Look, you look at James Harden's peak in the regular season: thirty-two. I feel like we're, seven we're seeing eye nine. to eye. It's just that no I feel like we're seeing eye to but eye. James Harden, his but his, you're, his, you're just Harden, already there. James I'm not Harden, there yet. James Harden, his four, four years, his at his best: thirty-two, seven, and nine. Luca is twenty-nine, nine, and nine. Regular season, Bro. Harden has it. But then in the playoffs, it's a di- there's a difference. I mean, knocked off 30, 36, 34, no, three I mean, years in a row. He's and you insane. did not appreciate not one, one of the best scorers happening. we've ever seen in our lives. Don't don't show that fake love now. I'm not showing Don't show love. that fake love now. He's probably the second best don't scorer of our generation. I feel like I could say third. that. Second? Third? Third, 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 third. Probably KD, LeBron, him. Steph and him is a conversation, but I LeBron's probably... LeBron's better than James Harden? Yes. Be fucking serious. Oh, my goodness, bro. Yes. <laughs> Talking about the greatest of all time. We're talking about probably the leading scorer in a couple of days. Get out of here, bro. Throw some respect on his Over name. James Harden, I bro. said what I said. He never it's averaged 36 nice in a season. Because okay. if he yeah. wanted to, he could have averaged 40. Yeah, why didn't he? Because he was a team player. Oh, okay. And James Harden was a team player? He always was a league leader in assists. Is that not a team player? Uh, stat padding. Is Russell, is Russell stat Wilson? Uh, oh, Russell so Westbrook a team player? Pattern. I'm so wondering. Now, <laughs> so is wondering. Luka, is Luka a stat yes. pattern? What? Stat pad is nuts. I'm not gonna, <laughs> right, I'm not getting So he stat padded nine points. In no, 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 no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Was, Absolutely not. No, they stat pad a different level. No, you in guys certain suck. ways. That's in certain ways. You guys, you guys suck. Well, he's not an Knicks fan. It's he's not stat padding like to be fair. Even when they're on the ground, a lot of people not even claiming him. A lot of people do. You guys suck. I gotta say. What do you mean? Why do we suck? Oh, 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 oh. You guys suck. Sorry, been tough, man. Nine points. I don't know what to say. I mean, Luca being Luca. Luca being Luca. Any guy, any person that watches this video is gonna be like, "Oh, this guy's not a James Harden fan." I'm number one. Number one guy. Although I did ask, are you putting a Harden jersey up there, or are you gonna put a Luca jersey? He's like, "Come on, man, put a Luca jersey." He just has sixty points and twenty rebounds and ten assists. First time I'm doing it for the engagement. Dells, but Dells answered the question. He picked the side. He said, "Listen." Luca in the playoffs. Know, no, they picked in, in the playoffs. Luca versus Harden. Who's been pick, better? I didn't pick Harden. I didn't pick anybody. Oh well, he. I okay, you can you pick a you, side? Wait, who'd you pick? You, I said I, I'm taking Harden, you but I understand the, the, the whole time. In the playoffs. No, no that. that's not the question. No, no, in the playoffs, who's but better? But that's Luka not the question. No, I'm just okay, asking. Yes, okay, Luca. Wait, okay, I'll answer your question because that has that ever been in question. No, no, he's, he's having answered. Yeah, it yeah. I no, I'll answer, we're I'll taking in totality. No, he he brought he brought it down. He said in a four year sample size. So if it's four year, I'll take uh Luca. So Luca. Why are we That's doing that though? You're, we're he minimizing did, listen, his peak. I'm not it. doing that. He I'm did. not. I'm not he listening. Asks, if he asks, I heard it. Uh, uh, gone. Okay, if, if you, okay, it's gonna make it worse for you as a Harden fan who knows a lot of his history. Okay. If you want to really look at the totality of the peak, then you're gonna look at a lot of times where he folded in the playoffs. Too. I know. I understand that. The, the peak that I'm, I'm choosing. I'm not a the, playoff the, Harden supporter. The peak, the peak that I'm, the peak that I'm cho- that that I'm choosing from. There is very minimal. Moments where Harden folded in the moment. He's, it's been in the playoffs for three years. Yes, a bubble year. Been, he averaged thirty against the Lakers. He's not, he didn't count that year. I'm gonna bring that up. I thought that he averaged thirty four that year. I thought that was a peak Harden. So the bubble year, he averaged thirty against the Lakers. He didn't choke. And 2019, 2020, um, 
in the second round versus the Warriors, he averaged 35. He had better stats than Kawhi Leonard did versus the Warriors in the finals. And people praised Kawhi, but didn't praise Harden. <laughs> that's because Kawhi was won weird. the game. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's yes, winning bias. Right. That's winning bias. He How about you look at the game and look at what actually happened? Harden was a but demon. But you started, you started yeah, your monologue. You started, and your, but but you you started your monologue by saying that it, people look at game six and seven skewed. You, yeah, you defended he, no, it. He didn't choke in those series. He did it. But then but when, you look, man when you start looking at 2015, 2016, against, when you start against look, the Spurs, he yes, choked. When you, when you start looking at those moments. But how about when he was different. clutch against the Clippers? He wasn't clutch. They, they came back without him. Yeah, it was Josh Smith and I Dwight apologize. Hardy. You're 100% yeah. correct. They came back when he was on the bench. It was up 3-1. They came back. Josh Smith was hitting threes with Michael Pierce. Josh Smith is crazy. <laughs> Josh Smith is going crazy. Yeah, Josh Smith is that, nuts. You know, that, that's slide. what I'm saying, you know. So, if, if we're looking at Harden's peak peak, there's not many of those playoff moments you could really Hey, man, so, seven years in, he got, like, what, three WCF appearances? That's tough. It is. Got to respect that to a degree. And Who just, do? Lucas got one. Who? Uh, Hard, uh, Harden. Harden, got, Harden, only, Harden only got uh two WCFs, 2015 and 2018. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, mm-hmm. In seven years, he has two WCFs. Lucas got one in five, four this year, isn't it? Yeah, I can tell you what the Mavs are not going to the WCF this year. Well, we thought that last year. I can probably I'll probably put not. any amount of money on it. But why are you more why are you more sure this year than last year? Because because the were, West is yeah I was going to really, say really, really it's better. significantly better. Yeah, this but it's year. also really open. I, I don't think for Dallas. You shouldn't actually. You should I, listen. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a Dallas. You be, know. You yeah, know. You I'm not. Dallas. I don't guy. think it's as open as everyone's claiming. It's the Pelicans, the Grizzlies, the Nuggets, in my opinion. And a healthy Clippers and a healthy Golden State, but that's only if they get healthy. I- I'm really looking at those three teams. We didn't think Dallas. Can the do it Nuggets last year. are crazy. They've been playing great basketball. The Pelicans are playing unbelievable basketball. Luca might be gassed out by the end of the year. I mean, he did it last year. So looking at Harden's ten year, I don't think this year, this year wasn't as bad as last looking year. Looking at Harden's ten year, like his offensive help. Oh, looking at Harden's ten year in 2012, his first year in OK in, in Houston, lost to OKC in the first round. Second year, lost to Portland in the first round. His third year in Houston made the WCF, lost to Golden State. Then he lost to Golden State in the first round. Then he lost to the Spurs in the second round. Then he made a conference finals versus Golden State. Then he lost to Golden State in the second round. Then he lost to the Lakers in the second round. All, all around, he was great. You know, say, he his played really Spurs, who were one of the best teams you've ever seen. Yeah, they played Golden State Warriors, best team you've ever seen. Lakers, yeah, he played champions. Some, uh, that, that, he played some tough teams. The Spurs, he, game six, nobody played, bro. The Spurs were still a tough team for five games. They, they, was, they were they way better tough, than Phoenix. Okay. They would beat the Without shit Kawhi out of Leonard? Them. Well, I mean, I, he missed See, one Another thing game, where, bro. yes, we can praise Luka for beating that, that Suns team, but we can't forget their leading scorer in game seven was not Devin Booker, was not CP3, not DeAndre Ayton. It was Cam Johnson with 13. Really? It was a team collapse. Absolutely won the game. How many games did Kawhi play that series? Five. I'm four. looking at it right now. I'm going to guess on five. There were six games in the series. Kawhi yes. played five. Yeah, so good. Tony Parker only played two. Yeah, Tony Parker was out. The depth on that team was pretty good, though, I think. They had Boris Diaz. It was shit. LaMarcus Aldridge, Danny Green, Kawhi, Powell Gasol, Patty Mills. Was that the year that Tony Kawhi Parker. hurt his ankle on the Zaza I don't think it was close that out? No? I don't think so. No, because that the Kawhi close. I think they it played. Was. It was. That was the first okay, year I thought KD so. was on the Warriors. Ooh, yeah. See, that's, that yeah, was, that team would beat the shit out of Phoenix. That team was it was good as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Without Kawhi, no. He oh, missed yeah, one. Obviously. And Tony Parker played two games. He no, was they, I'm, I'm very confident, even though he's hurt, they will beat the shit out of Phoenix. No, those, those Spurs teams was good, but I mean, we're not going to... Look, I love James Harden, but he had 10 points in, that, in game six. He was guarded by Kawhi. Kawhi did not play that game, bro. Oh, game six. I'm just doing the series. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Game six, they got blown out by 30. Kawhi did not play. No, he did not. Do you 20, have the box score? Yeah, I do. Okay. So, LaMarcus Aldridge at 34. Jonathan Simmons at 18. 34. Shout out to LA. LA adult. Jonathan at 11 is only good playoff moment. He's, you know, we know he's not a playoff guy. <laughs> Come on, uh, Patty Mills at so 14. Pau Gasol at 10. For the Rockets. Sounds like a team effort. Oh, dude. Yeah, Trevor I mean, Reza like had 20. Capella had 15. Harden had 10 points and six turnovers and shot two for yeah, 11. That was in Houston? That was in Houston. Damn. Wicked. That's an all-time choke Wicked. right yeah, there. That's, bad. that's, that's an all-time that's choke. Bad. Booker I, moment. I, will, I, I can say with 100% confidence, Luka will never have a moment like that. Never. Like, never. Uh, you could, you could uh, never have a moment. Did you ever? I feel, I'm pretty sure people felt the exact same way about LeBron James. Never, that it would is crazy. never, never Luka, would have I mean, happened. Luke is bound to have one, bro. Like, it's ine- it's inevitable. One. It is inevitable. Luke is going to have one. We're going to see if 
you stick with him. When shit hit the fan, is you still a fan? Oh, Yo, a, tough line. Son, tough line. I respect the fuck and out I'm of that stick one right with there. Luca. Did he not give up on Harden? Like no, no, absolutely. I did, did not give up on Harden. Yeah, you so literally had a monologue up here about giving up on Harden. On that uh, season, uh, yes, but not as a whole. What are you talking about? I just said they're not. I just said Harden's not the same. You're all over the place. Was he? Was he the same last year? Well, me, I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm asking. asking. No, no, you watch, you watch not. ball. Yeah, yeah, he was. Wasn't. Was James Harden the same player last I, he year? No way, he wasn't. He That's hasn't been since he left the Rockets. No, no, this year he he's 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 playing amazing. He's, he's playing, he's playing really good. Yeah, this year peak, is what though. I expected him last last year to do for the rest of the season. Last year, You're it was saying clear. once he got to Philly, he, he lost or, his step. Or Brooklyn, or totality. Brooklyn and Philly together. Harden had 31 points in Game Seven against the Clippers. Oh no, Game Seven, yeah, but no, they can't. They came back in Game Five. Game five when they tied the series up. the closeout up. game, you had 31. No, no, I know. So what are we talking about? Six. No, game five because it was down 3-1. It was down 3-1. No, but I'm saying it wasn't the game six to Josh uh, Smith, Dwight Howard game. Harden went 15 of 18 from the free throw line. It 31 points, been. eight assists, three steals. Like, six. come know. on. It was one of those games. doing? Though. You got to minimize that moment for him? <sighs> it was game six. I know. But the comeback was without James Harden, bro. Yeah, the, the, the comeback in Game Six was about James Harden. He was on the bench, okay, but regardless, it, it Game Seven yo, look, he came in and title, had a huge bounce the crazy back. Crazy Hardenless comeback. Yeah, I mean, come how on. about Game Seven where he game bounced seven, back? Okay, but because the there's a lot of players that put, will crumble and they, be like, "Damn, I got benched. I don't care about this team no more." Put but he bounced back and had 31. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, You're losing me. He's not wrong, but he, like I'm just saying, I know he played great in Game Seven. He's not wrong. They but put him in the position to get game seven. Yeah. Just like LeBron when Ray oh, Allen shit. hit that shot. LeBron had 22 <laughs> scored or assist. But if it wasn't for that rebound from Bosch, <laughs> it don't happen. <laughs> the fact, not a correlation, I, my brain is melting. So the, the LeBron is Still don't is understand way, how pop subs Tim Duncan The, the LeBron, the LeBron one the, is way more impressive. It, under, was just it was understood. Bench. That is a very error for Greg Because Powell. it was a quick transition. He was expecting the free throw to get made. You don't, you don't take Tim out no matter what. It's, it's yeah, a finals. You're right. You don't take you're Tim right. out no you're matter right. what. It's I'm a shame, sparing. though, because if it wasn't for injuries in the Nets, James Harden would have a championship right now with Katie uh, and with Kyrie. I'm sure. And, Katie, like a, yeah, and yeah. Katie, would have proved, Katie would have proved he could win a championship without Steph. Yeah, Kyrie would have proved he could win a championship Kyrie Kyrie without Harden. LeBron. Yeah, he just needs Harden and Kyrie. <laughs> and James Harden would have another, another bunch yeah, of stars. Super team. Yeah. Come on. When they were healthy, you was not beating them. Okay, but they were never healthy. No, you wasn't together. supposed to, buddy. Literally, yeah. you weren't. You weren't. Yeah, you Katie, or Katie tends Kyrie. to build teams like that. And you, where you wasn't. It's not oh, yeah. fair. Oh, yeah, really. Yeah, it, it just gets built for Steph that way. It gets built for You mean when they all got drafted together? Yeah, it's a great front office. Great. You didn't know they were great until the guys got better. It's facts. Well, yeah. Yeah. When they didn't all to come together. Clay, well, Clay wasn't fucking playing in Memphis and came over to the Warriors. You don't, you don't, you don't know a rookie's a Dells, great player this, until this is, this is This is where the, the foolish the They didn't become championship contenders until Steph became an MVP candidate. That's facts. That was literally when yeah. they became championship contenders. Oh, wait, I, th- I thought Draymond made a huge I'm, difference I'm, in that. I 100% when, when agree. When Steve started playing Draymond, I 100% that agree. was the flip in the switch for I agree. not going to talk about Clay either. Come on now. Oh, Clay, yeah. Oh, I 100% agree. Yo, I actually saw a tweet real quick. You said that Clay isn't an all-time great playoff performer. That's not at all what you saw. I thought that that's shit what you is said. It's hilarious how you guys lie. I, I'm, at, I, is, I'm. You didn't ask. No, I, I, didn't thought, ask I saw. You. I, I saw a tweet that I thought. You didn't ask you. I'm. I'm because, asking okay, you right cut, now. You artless, whatever. No, what, what, what it, it was was I was reading up on the Ringer, and they they have some really great shit up there for sure. And the dive deep report, what it was for Clay Thompson was all time, uh, something like all time player performer or like legendary playoff performer. Correct. And I was like. What do you mean by that? Because Clay has a, really, a lot of stinkers. Like a but lot. he also has some unbelievable moments. moments. He has game six. You like. get called game six Clay yeah, for four times. Yeah. So he I, has a lot of, like, his shit, get, his shit gets sweep under the rug because Steph and Draymond are usually. I mean, he's, him up he's, he's him. not the main guy, but he's when you need two. him, he's well, yeah, insane. You don't, you don't get the. It's like Middleton. The or Middleton the, you know, has a few stinkers, but, but you, you have moments. But you see how Middleton's uh, whole career got defined by that one run when before he was dog shit? Mm hmm. But do you see how Clay Thompson? Well, you just told me four times now. Clay game six is amazing. It's not only one, you have to play five games no, to get to six. I'm not saying okay. If for you're sure. not good for Thanks five for games and then you have a game six, that like what are we doing here? You know, so. Well, he's not legendary, but he's great in the playoffs. Yeah, it's just the yeah, legendary. No, no, the sure. legendary should just call me off guard. Legendary, definitely not yeah, an all time great playoff. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Call me off guard. He's that's not. What. No. Look at his numbers in the playoffs. Please go look. He said great moments. Is not an all time great player. They called him a legendary saying. playoff performer. Yeah. Totality is tough. I was like, oh, but, shit. but moments for sure. Yes, yeah, moments. moments for sure. He's great. He, he he's he he's a part of an all time great dynasty. Yeah, games and moments carried like, by Steph. He's never averaged less than fifteen in the playoffs. 
Well, 15 is, the, is, the, is the bar for great. 15. No, no, yeah, I'm just was, saying. All right, well, he also he averaged 24 the year that they went to the NBA, the, that they were the squad, the greatest team ever. He averaged 24, yes, 20, 2015, 2016. Read them season. all. All right, 15, 16, 8, 19, 24, 15. That was the year after. That was when KD, KD came to that. town. Uh, then the year after that with KD, 19. The year after that with KD, 20. That was the year that KD got hurt. This is legendary? No, I'm okay. not saying it's legendary. That's not all-time great either, though. He's had all-time great moments. Yes, which for sure. not many but play- that, performers have. They, they, said, they called him a legendary player for yeah, No, that's like, strong. Like, strong. Like, what did he mean by that? But I'll say one thing about those Warriors teams. And Poopy it, Clay had 19 this when past season. When it came, finals. those Warriors the finals teams. Are bad. Those Warriors teams, well, when, they, when they needed a guy fair. to close the games out, when needed the go-to guy, they went to Easy Money Sniper. That's who they went okay, to. Kevin Durant. That's who took the last shots. Here, would you rather Those, take? Th- that's bro, it doesn't matter. Shots. Let him talk it's because Clay. Curry just won the championship last year. I'm good. That's all right. <laughs> You're yeah, cash. Because when, so Harden was you, on, when Harden was with KD, they also went the easy money sniper. So what you going to say when, when KD get it done this year? He'll, he'll still have less than Steph. What you going to say? He'll still have Me? less than Steph. What you going to say? He also I've has been, less than I've LeBron. Been, I've been supporting KD all season, surprisingly. Why is that? Because he's been unbelievable. He's usually unbelievable all the time, though. Nah, but this year is different. Interesting. There's a lot of things going against him. He's been great. His rings with the Warriors don't move me, man. He's got his Oh, no, absolutely not. He's got a big uh, fat. But he's got Clay Thompson, Thompson also, in my book, be he, honest. he stayed consistent. The three-point shooting, 42, no, that, that 36, 39, 42, 39, 40, 43, 44. 44. No, his efficiency is Some nuts. respect on his name, an, Is Ray Allen an all-time great player performer? Uh, off the top of my head. I mean, he's had some crazy moments. Didn't he drop 50 in a enough playoff game? Enough. I'm asking, didn't he have 50 in a playoff game or I bugged Yes, him? that was game uh, round one against the Bulls in 08, 07? Yeah. Wait, oh, wait, uh-huh. wait, wait. Great Shit, game. you could debate that. Yeah. You wouldn't win. If debate. you can debate that, he has a better case than Clay, I think, easily. Okay. So if he's not a locked in guy, then Clay's not not that. So he's not all time. Yeah. Tomato, tomato. I, I, w- I wanted to give my respect to James Harden. Y'all but you didn't. Me. You no, didn't no, give no, him I respect. want to give my respect to James Harden. Oh, because, so we're back on this. Because this is going to go viral on TikTok, too. Watch. Good for we, you. We're going to post that tomorrow. It's going to get like 500, 400K views. Listen, J- I want to give my respect to James Harden because I feel like when it comes to James Harden, we don't appreciate what he's done enough. There was a three-year stretch where Harden averaged 30. 36 and 34 in 2016 he averaged 11 assists per game for the past three seasons Harden has averaged 11 assists 10 assists and 11 assists this year he's leading the NBA in assists Harden is the only player I've seen go from being one of the most prolific scorers in the NBA to now being one of the best playmakers in the NBA I haven't seen it for many other guys and when we talk about all-time shooting guard ranks there's three shooting guards over him. Michael Jordan, Kobe, Dwayne Wade. James Harden is four. But if we want to classify James Harden as a point guard, he's the third best. It's Steph. Ever? It's Magic. The I, third best Isaiah point Thomas? guard ever. If we're, comp- if we're talking about James Harden as a point guard, I think he's the third best point guard ever if we talk about him as a point guard based on his playmaking. I think he's better than Isaiah Thomas as a player. I'm just confused how you're still taking Luke. after that you're taking Luke over him right now. Um, Luke is a point guard. <laughs> he's, he's a hybrid. No, forward. no, no. He's you, a point you guard. You had me, but then yeah, you, yeah but this is a career thing. So you mean to tell me, Harden, based off his peak, because his peak is what puts guard. usually when when you watch a player's career, their peak is what puts them where they're at. You have this man if he's a two guard, top four ever. You have him if he's a point guard, top three ever. But you're taking Luke over now. now so where's Luca? Now you're starting to lose me. This is the difference. <laughs> the and, 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 is he better than Oscar Robertson, And now I got it. Come on, man. You're talking about a guy in his 60s, bro. 70s? But okay. Yeah, I mean, you just disrespected Bill Walton. Now you're talking, me about, you're talking me about Oscar <laughs> Robertson? The first year he goes to Milwaukee, he wins Oscar's the championship. He had the triple doubles. Bro, bro. They, dribble, they dribble with their, their eyes looking they, at the ground. That's because they can't carry. Can't palm, the the yeah. rule was you can't palm the ball. You know, He's not better than James Harden as a player, you know, bro. If Kyrie was in that area, he would have okay, to dribble. This is this yeah, is the way different. This the reason why Harden is where I have him at shooting guard and point guard all the time. It's not because of longevity. Is, well, yeah, it's a resume. It's a career resume. It's because of his do, peak. Do I think when Luca when yeah, of course, but all those numbers add up. When Luca, when it's all said and done, is he gonna be up there? Easily. No doubt about it. I think he will rank higher than Harden. But based off where the career is resume wise right now, Harden is in that ranking. Wait, wait, wait. Because <laughs> Well, for starters, you're you're you said what Harden has done 
in the grand scheme of things. We, you did say P. Harden versus Luca. So what he has done, you were talking about that. But um, in terms of no, Luca, it's just who, who would I take? Yeah, as yeah, a yeah. I want to get to this part though. You not, said not career. You said if Luca's gonna, has yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Luca's going to be higher than Harden. You have Harden at three on the point guard list. You have Harden on four on the two guard list. So you think Luca can be the best point guard ever? He could or, jump Harden. I don't, I don't know about Magic or Steph. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's no, what I was he, he could jump yeah. and Harden oh, okay, was okay. the four. So you said, Harden. Okay, you said higher than Harden. Harden's at three already. So I wanted to see where you yeah, where Higher than Harden. He'll jump Harden. Right. We talk about top small fours of all time. What? <laughs> what? Luka can. Oh, man. <laughs> he could be better than Larry Bird? Bird? No, no. Forget about Larry Bird. Can, can Larry he be better Bird? than Kevin Durant? There's a chance. Can he be better? There's a chance at Larry. So Luka can be a top six player ever? Luca could Larry definitely be a, he could, oh, Nah, he, I, I people have him like seven. That's I why think I have him. could be a top ten player of all time. That's understandable. I can understand. Well, so he'd so so be better than Kevin Durant. Six, top seven. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's crazy about, about that. Nothing. You think that's crazy? No. I don't think that's crazy. I think Luca has the potential to be a top ten player. Luca does have that potential, bro. Does he not? I listen. Top ten player. She's just twenty three. My God, I'm gonna. Is we talking about Luca right now, though? For sure. Yes, we are talking about I, I just get confused. You confuse just you me. lost me. Yeah, you did lose me. You, you did lose me, me for sure. Like, really I was I, I was with you for a while. But then you put Harden in top three point guard ever, and you're saying you're taking yeah, That shit over lost me, like, too. I was oh, like, okay, God. Yeah, all right. Y'all, y'all are just misinterpreting what I'm saying. I hear no, you're, you're, I no hear we're you. asking you the questions no. and making sure you give the appropriate Luka answers. Luka versus Harden, player versus player. I like Luka better. But when we're talking about an all-time ranking, of course Harden's over he's Luka been, he's as it currently stands. No, you don't like Luka better. You think Luka's better. I think Luca is better, right, but sure. that doesn't mean I'm just gonna. No, I'm just surprised put, by your Harden ranking. That, just, that doesn't mean I'm gonna put Luca over everybody in NBA yes, history based sure. off this stretch. Who would you put? Who would you put him over? I think you put him over a comfortable amount of guys, honestly. Name me guys and see. If Oscar, Isaiah Thomas. Hmm? Isaiah Thomas. Nah, not yet. Oscar. Nah, not yet. Steve Nash. Okay. Stockton. Mm, no. Stockton. But the thing about it is that I think Luke is better than all those guys. Okay. I think Luke is better than Kid. I think he's better than Nash. I think he's better than Stockton. You think he's better than Easily. Magic Johnson? Like, be honest. Clears no, like, be honest. Do you think he's better than Magic Johnson? Luca? Yes. I think he clears Magic. Okay. I just want, that's that's where <laughs> I, I really want to go. Okay. Okay. No. You think he's better than Steph? 21-16. No. Okay. And cool. then you think he's better than D-Wade? Luca? Yes. I do think he's better than D-Wade. Kobe? No. LeBron. Uh, uh, sorry. Larry Bird? Okay, all right. I just want to make sure we get you. That, just talk about better, not the longest. Just no, no. you think just better. better. Yeah, yeah, that that was my thing. But okay. well, it is is it crazy to say Harden? If we talk about him as a point guard, is the third best point guard ever? I mean, I would have to think. Probably not. It's probably not crazy. John Stockton is better than Steve Nash. I think he's better Chris than Paul. Chris Paul is better than. He's better than Chris Paul all the time. It's not even as a today. point guard. Yes. Like, I think the only one would be it because of the rings. Yeah. Maybe it. I think so. Yeah. He's better than Kid Stockton. I think he's better in Stockton. Point guard. Yes. Okay. We talk about all the time. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think he's better in Stockton. I mean, all time player. Then it's why, hard. To, why are we doing this? It's hard to compare point guards from then and now because they're more scoring now, and those were real like point guards. Yeah. So but really I'm just tough. saying, I don't want people to, to take away from my original point and how. Yeah. So you had to get radical. Harden has shift has really shifted his game from being the most prolific scorer to one of the best playmakers in the NBA. And if you were watching hard throughout those great scoring years, he was always a great playmaker. He just had to always score to have his team win games. But that 34-point-per-game season, he had the third most consecutive 30-point games in NBA history. And right now, we, we talking about in like a quarter, he had, what, 15 assists in Philly? I mean, Harden is generational. <laughs> is he not generational? No, I'm sorry, it'd just be funny when you talk about James Harden. That's all. He's generational. Love that man. But Luke is also generational. What? That doesn't add up because they're both in the same generation. You can both be generational. You can, Zion generation? you can Zion's generational. When last time we seen a Zion? Shaquille O'Neal. When's last that time we seen a Harden? Twenty years ago. But before, sure. yeah, a minute ago. You know. Ah, what? so wait, so is Luca generational? Yes. Yeah. All right, got it, got yes. it. Yes. But when was the last time we saw Luca? We're seeing him. <sighs> last time we saw James Luca, Harden. never. Oh, Larry Bird. Boom. James Harden. Okay, that's fair. I just didn't know you, uh, you can have two generational players. I don't know. Listen, I'm not disagreeing. Because we thought MJ, we think MJ is generational. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Loki, the definition of generational. Tape LeBron sure. James, definition of generational. Andrew what Wiggins. of one? Steph Curry. Andrew Wiggins. Generational. Comes around few and few. Luka Doncic, is he generational? Yes. You could say that he is an unbelievable talent, yes, but again, we saw the blue from with James Harden. Well, that's generational. But again, unbelievable we don't think Kobe is generational, right? Kobe? Yes. Do we think Kobe's generational? 
He's a generational player. What's the definition of generational? Something I guess that comes around cha- once, like once in few. Uh, something rare. that you haven't like seen. Steph. Steph is that rare. you've never seen. You've I've never, never seen Luka. You have. I've seen it in Harden and, and, and a little and, bit. And, and LeBron's <laughs> offensive game. You see it in, in Luka's as well. Okay, but if, if we're talking about him being compared to those guys, he's generational. Because those two are generational. No, listen. Uh, Very interesting it's a question. tough word. It's a tough it word. It's, it's tough. Just, James Harden was it? not a generational prospect. But no. he, his years in Houston, the, the stretch were was generational. Okay. What Luke is doing right now, I mean, bro. It's so how many generational players are there currently in the NBA? Well, count LeBron, of course. I'll, I'm Giannis. Zion. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Giannis Zion. is not generational. Who? Yeah, Giannis? I think yeah, what he's been doing, he is Whoa. He's not a generational Has player. to be. He wasn't a generational prospect. No. Has to be. But him reaching at this level, Two MVPs, DPOY, player. finals. Yeah, you, don't become, you don't no. become generational because you're... Uh, no. Yes, uh, you do. Like that. But no. he won Dude. the finals and Isn't finals MVP. About, uh, he dropped uh, fifty in a game. Jokic is generational. Okay, I'm with you. He's one Jokic of few. No, it's like like a but different type why? of player. How is Giannis? But again, you said twenty years since we've seen someone like who Shaquille O'Neal. That's well, that Giannis right, Antetokounmpo. Right, right. So yeah, Giannis might be generational. Okay, <laughs> might be. Yeah. He's no, got to be. We Loki have like probably five generational players. I mean, I mean, Loki. We just named a bunch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can give it. Is Joel and B generational? Nah. Damn. I mean. Well, Steph Curry, we didn't even name any No, generation. Steph Curry's Curry locked. Yeah. That's a lock. He is the generation. That's, yeah. a, that's something that we won't ever see probably ever again. Curry? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah, without doubt. Uh, be, d- be dumb if you want to. No, listen. Of course, no <laughs> one will. Rude. Steph will <laughs> always be. Real. You have to equate it like this. You call Steph, him daddy. Steph is going to be the Babe Ruth of baseball for three-point shooting, of, of basketball for because of three-point shooting. But I'm sure we'll see someone that will come along and hit threes at a clip similar to Steph. Well, I mean, Shaq. Like with terms of Shaq and Giannis, like not just like trying to disrespect Giannis, but Shaq was generation because like he changed the rules and shit. Like he was that. insane. Yeah. Back to your question: generational players, Jokic, LeBron, Steph, Giannis, Giannis, KD, Zion, KD. That's six. Is MB generational? I, I would a, a big man at that size, the way he moves, averaging thirty three right now. I think he's generational. You could argue it. You think I Jason yeah. Tatum's generational? What the fuck? No, that's that's probably where you cut it off. I don't know if Tatum is generational. We've seen shades of him. We've seen but the his only kind shade a lot. Is Kobe. Of Tatum? Of what? Who? He plays exactly like Paul George. Like Okay. Exactly uh, fair enough. Like fair George. point. Fair he point. He plays like Danny Granger, too. generation or no? Generational defender? More athletic? Maybe. Granger? You could say that. I mean, Kawhi, who? people have Kawhi what? as like Tatum a top 35 player all the time. Like We've seen Tatum's. You get shades of it. Yeah, you've seen Tatum. It's like smooth. Like, I don't know. Paul George, I, com- I, I completely overlooked him, and I apologize. Okay. You're 100% right. John Morant's not generational, right? Not yet. He could be. Depends. Then if that's the case, Westbrook and D. Rose are generational. Now, this list is so long. That's why. It's just <laughs> what about Anthony Davis? He was a generation. He was. He, he was, was man. A generation he was. Prospect. He still, still can be. He still can be. I don't know. It's that word can't just it's be thrown injury. around with everybody, you, you know? Well, we already gave it to like six heads. Yeah. But all I the guys like, we listed, I think, are valid. All right, I, I feel like we're, maybe are we new. mixing up generational and great. all time great? Yeah. Like I think with this I new think era. For the gotta, most part, you have to be generational to be an all time great. Very well said. Are they synonymous with one another? Uh, no, because you could be a generational I, I don't prospect think it's just but not a, pan out. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like if Victor doesn't pan out, he was a generational prospect, but he didn't he wasn't a generational player. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I think I'm looking at this from who's a generational player. I think Jokic, we've we're never gonna see never. a passing big man like him again, bro. Okay, mm. so if we're going off that we we'll see John Morant again. A lot. We saw John Morant with Derek Rose. Say Derek Rose. We'll see, we'll yeah. see John Morant a lot. I don't think Josh generational. We, we probably won't see Zion again. No. Um, we've seen a bunch of Tatum, so wings. Yeah, that's that what I'm saying. Tatum is a typical wing. We, we, we've seen a bunch. We, we've seen Kawhi. We have seen a, a bunch. bunch. Tracy Brady. Uh, we haven't seen like the difference. Is we haven't seen some of these guys at the height, but we've seen these type of players. Like we've seen Kawhi before. We've yeah, seen I think the Jokic archetype we haven't seen. We've seen a, Embiid. AD at his best. We haven't seen Luca. Embiid. It's very we've rare. Giannis. KD. So Steph. We've seen Embiid. We've seen Embiid. Well, now Embiid. Zion, ah, it's tough because he can stretch. Zion we've six seven, being like two sixty. But he couldn't stretch like Embiid. Obviously, Hakeem I think was amazing yeah. at the mid range, but he could not hit the three like Embiid um, can. Yeah, Embiid's up there with some of the but best big we'll men see, shooting. I think we'll see Embiid time. again. Yes, because, I think we'll, I think because as the game evolves, evolution, yeah, I, evolution's I think, crazy. I think like KD, we won't like Luca, probably not. Steph, no. Like, we do, we Luca, I find a hard time evolved. saying we won't. 
I don't know if we'll see those guys again. Like, I feel like that's a rude thing. Like we say. thought we were gonna get it with Trey Young, and it's like, no, it's not, it's not it's him. Not. You know, and KD, they they call a new guy. You'll KD see every flashes, year. just like we're talking about Tatum with these other wings. Like we'll see flashes of Trey and I mean, excuse me, of Curry and these guys, but they'll never say, be they were that type of player. Chet, KD, they called Kevon Looney, KD. What? I swear to God, high, high school? school they called him. Yes, yeah. the next KD. I kid you not. They call everybody Kevin Durant. And Monty Bates. I know that. Thanks, Monty mm-hmm. Bates. There's a lot of great players in the NBA right now, man. There are. There's a son. There is. We're lucky. What about D-Book? He's definitely, we've <laughs> seen his kind well. so many times. What yeah. about Ant-Man? We've seen his kind a few times. What about DeMar DeRozan? Fuck no. <laughs> definitely not people exactly. like Jalen Brown. No, there's a thousand percent people like Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown's probably the easiest thousand, architect. Maybe like 100 Yo, copy. Levine, Comp 40. Yeah, that he was looked good. this week in the fucking NBA, bro. What's wrong with you? <laughs> we can't we can't bring it up later. But this like he already. <laughs> I'm hype. Can I be hype for the that dog? The alley-oop dunk. Now we were on this Luca and Harden topic for a while. Come on. And I feel like I got closer. The next topic we're gonna talk about is Jack Vaughn. Jack Vaughn, current coach of the Nets, took over this team. Should Jack Vaughn be the leading coach of the year candidate right now? I want you to answer this first. You want Dallas. me to answer? I want you to answer this first, Dallas. The thing about Coach of the Year, and Screaming it's fun because <laughs> <laughs> you have to be great, but you also have to be a great story, right? If, say, for example, Mike Budenholzer, you know, Bucks get the one seed and the Nets are just a game or two behind them, they'll probably give it to Jock Vaughn. He's the better story. We know the Bucks are going to be great. Um, and you know, the Nets with all the turmoil they go through. Um, so, obviously, you need to have a good story on top of being great and winning. So Jock Vaughn is without doubt in the conversation. I think, I feel like I've been getting a lot of Nets hate being pushed at me from Joel, even though I feel like I've done, I feel like I've done a pretty good <laughs> job conforming my thoughts around you the flipped. Nets. When they first came out, they were trash with Steve Nash. They were dog shit. Once Jock Vaughn got there, and we've seen over these last couple months, they've been playing phenomenal basketball. I put them in the contender tier. So first of all, for 2023, let's throw my Nets slander out the window. Hmm. I'll throw your being in and out on the nets if you throw my net slander out the what? window. You were you were in and then you were it's out fair. and then you were back it's in. Fair. We can no, we can be we can be even. Not even close. You were was, in and out and back in. The I was it's out valid. and out. What do you in. mean? Yeah, these are the Jack Vaughn. These are I'm different saying the same yeah, thing. Exactly I'm saying, saying, saying the same thing. This that's is exactly the different net. So saying. we can see the eye to eye and say, you know what? We both flip because it's a new coach and a new team. I think it's fine to do. We both flip. I you was did. out and in. You, you were in, out, in. You definitely was like, I'm done with the Steve Nash. You said Nash. it on the yeah. episode with Pino G. They fired him. And then he, and he also was saying the same thing. Yes. He was so shitting on the Nash. Well, before I get to I the coach like of the year, fair. let's just hash That's that. Valid. 2023, it's a new coach. It's a new team. We could both see that. I put them in my contender list. They're right up there with the Celtics and Bucks in the East. <laughs> can we agree to this? Or are we going to keep going back and forth all year with this whole Nets? Oh, you were out and then back in. You were in, out. Like, we were both flip sides. As you should have. You should have been out on the Listen, Nets with Dallas. Steve Nash, and you should be in on the Nets with Jock Bond. Listen, Dallas. He just, spoke. He just he spoke. spoke. Your proposal is enticing. But I remember when <laughs> the Jock Vaughn Nets first first surfaced, and I seen this team playing good basketball. I told you they were coming. And you, you know, you pushed it aside as long as you could. But now the top of the second seed, and you can't push it I've, further I've, any I've longer. I probably put the Nets in the contender like a it's, month ago, yeah, bro. and you should if you're smart. That's a smart I, so thing So I needed to do. more than a fucking eight-game sample size before I do. had to be in on now, Jock Vaughn But it Nets. wasn't just that. It was the Kevin Durant disrespect. It was the role-player disrespect that you had. You thought this, this roster couldn't stack up with the talent of the Celtics. They were roster. playing pretty mid before Jock That's, Vaughn. That 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 was my were biggest they, were they thing. not mid before Jock Vaughn? That take was gonna stink if Nash played the whole year. It was gonna stink. Yeah. Yes. Now Dells, like I said, your proposal. I, I haven't even propos- gone through my coach the years. I just wanted I, to get no, coaching. Sure. Your proposal is, is flattering. But the thing about me, I, I love the game. I love the tension. <laughs> I love the hustle. Okay, so in in the I playoffs, whatever, when April comes around, I'm want, gonna say I want to be fine. pinned against it's you. It's fine. Whoa. Celtics <laughs> Nets. I want to be on your ass, Dells. Come on, bro. About the Nets like, Celtics rivalry. Here? Like, I want to be on your ass. That's fine. This. You could be on my ass all you want. I'll take it. But I just want you to know that. You'll take it. <laughs> that come. <laughs> You'll take it. That come April. Crumb. When you. 
<laughs> Yo, Rip, that was egregious, bro. Rip, that was that was that just was insane. insane. That was just insane. Rip, come on. Once April is, has arrived and it's playoffs, I'm gonna say, oh, I remember when you were out on the Nets. That's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna be children. Because you were out on the nets, and then you were back in once Vaughn got Steve there. Steve Nash nets. Just like me, Joel. That was a crazy-ass sequence. You guys are crazy. Now listen, Dells. I just, I thought that was a pretty fair, he wants reasonable. He wants like, I'm, I'm still taking, don't get it confused. I'm still taking the Celtics listen, over Dells, the nets. Do, do the nets have a chance to beat the Celtics? They have a chance for sure. All right. They have a ch- yeah, that's I'm, fine. That's I'm what I taking say. the Celtics. La- last, last week or two weeks ago, you were like, it's a six game series. Celtics. Stay. Yeah, I, I still think we'll win the six. I don't, we're no, not. I, I don't I, think we're sweeping no, them. I, I can't. I can't fuck with. All that. right, whatever. Getting back to coach no, of the year. It's seven and nothing for me. <sighs> whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm um, getting back to coach of the year. He is without a doubt in the in the conversation. All of the nonsense that was going on around the Nets with KD, with Kyrie, KD requesting a trade, Kyrie with all of his anti semitism, all of the nonsense that was going on. The fact that he was able to step in as an interim coach, even he should be labeled full-time head coach, but the fact that he has stepped in as the interim coach and has made this Nets team what basically, I wouldn't say everyone, but what Nets fans and Nets truthers thought, a championship-level team, which they've had the talent for years, they haven't had the coaching, and situationally they were not good. We saw that in the playoffs last two years. Injuries plays a part, but then obviously last year against the Celtics, a complete embarrassment. It was close, but you got swept. You couldn't get one game. We saw Tatum without JB get a game the year before. He's in the conversation. Of course, Joe Missoula is in the conversation. Uh, not exactly the same Gotta situation, be. but Ime goes out. Sugar. I remember it, it's, it's, it's it fast. has to be. What, what are you Ime goes that out. I'm s- I remember I'm sitting at the airport about to go to the Bahamas. I thought my vacation's ruined. Ime goes out. Ring. Does Ime get one? No. I don't know. He's still in the team. Technically, not on the team. But he didn't oh. start the year with us. Like he, you know, he didn't like coach a game. Um, so when I get on my plane, I'm thinking season's over. You know, we were so close every single year with Brad Stevens and we just couldn't get over the hump. Ime comes in the first half of the year, obviously the mess second half. We know history goes. Missoula steps in and we're playing better this year than we were last year. And we went to the finals last year. We, I, I set off the stats last, uh, last episode. We still have the best record in the NBA won the I think top in net rating, offensive rating, won the top 10 defensive ratings. The Celtics have been phenomenal and also Willie Green. Willie Green has to be in the conversation as well. What he's doing with the Pels, I mean, it's phenomenal. We saw the progression of them, you know, year by year, especially last season, finally getting into the playoffs. But this year, being the number one seed, Zion taking that step. B.I. has been injured. He's been in and out of the lineup. The role players stepping up like Jose Alvarado and a bunch of other guys. Trey Murphy. uh, Herb Jones, obviously, he broke out last season. But he has to be in that conversation as well. But all three of those guys, I think it's going to come down to who has the best record because all of them have a really good, you know, horse in the fight. Is that the same? No. <coughs> September 1st, what's you said the, the race. Nets. Okay. What's, what's, what's he has fight? receipts. He has receipts. September 1st, you said the Cavs are better than the Nets. September 1st, yeah. I, even and with Steve Nash, I would have never said that. Steve bullshit. Nash was there? <laughs> I would have never said that. You're a big spider guy. I don't know. No, no, I would have never said that. I don't know. I would have never said that. I don't know. Not even a little bit. And did I not say like two weeks ago you can't sleep on the Nets? <laughs> now listen. <laughs> Way. Talking about Jock uh, Vaughn. Let me see. This Nets win streak. They're on a 10 game win streak right now. Oh, shit. Everybody's going to look at KD, Kyrie, how they've been playing. They deserve to get credit for sure. They're superstars. But I want to highlight Jock Vaughn. And right now, my coach of the year candidates is top three. It's top three right now. Please don't be disrespectful. Number one is Jock Vaughn. Is no doubt about it. And I'm going to explain why. Number two is Willie Green. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Number three is Joe Mazzula. Uh, yeah. Because unlike me, Dells, I respect the Celtics. I don't go out of my way to disrespect them. Unlike me. Dells, <laughs> at every turn, has been disrespecting the Brooklyn Nets. We, we were trying to go to a Nets game, and Dells said, I can't be seen in that arena. I said, I want to go. He said, I can't be seen in that arena. No way I'm going to the Nets. Nets are the third seed right now, top for second, 23 and, and 23 and 12. The biggest difference has been Jock Vaughn. The Nets were a disaster. They were two and five with Steve Nash. The Kyrie controversy, KD trade request, 13th in the East. The Nets are 21 and seven with Jock Vaughn. 75% win percentage, the best in the NBA. They're third in assists, first in blocks per game. 
first in field goal percentage, first in three-point percentage, fifth in offensive rating, seventh in defensive rating. And this is all while being 29th in free throw attempts per game. They're not even getting the benefit of no. the whistle. Come on, gang. They're not much easy. attackers of the task like that, though. The Nets rank last in rebounds per game with Nash. Right now, they rank seven, 16th with Jacques Vaughn. The change in that, Jacques Vaughn showed this team box house stats. That's been the biggest change. There's a certain aura with Jacques Vaughn that when I look at him, I'm like, I believe. I do. I do, man. Nets 10-game win streak, this team's believing. They're longest since 2006. Katie goes out and says, I feel like we didn't have an identity to start the season. We have that belief on whatever Jock Vaughn tells us. Schematics, the Nets were playing a drop coverage with Steve Nash. They're playing a switch a switch defense scheme. They're switching on, on ball screens with, with Jock Vaughn. It was never a personnel issue. It was a coaching issue. And I didn't have faith in Steve Nash in the offseason. I just thought... Shit, I mean, this talent is so good. How can you really fuck this up that Absolutely. bad? I, that's my, but the, ta- the talent was always there. <coughs> that's what I'm trying to say. I agree, but in the playoffs, does coaching not make a huge difference? And Jacques Vaughn is one of the better coaches right now. Yeah, for, without a doubt. He said right now. Right now. Nets, Nets, right now. Nets, Nets right defense, now. they're okay, number one sure. at, at forcing post-up, post-ups. They're number two at isolation defense, only behind the Boston Celtics. Now, listen, I'm, I'm going to say this. The Celtics will be a tall task. and Very tall. You right here, you got them as the favorites. It's because you're biased. I understand that. I think it's but, fair to have them as the favorites. They just went to the finals last year. And but I'm telling you guys. Best record in the NBA. I'm telling you guys right now. There's something special about you. these Brooklyn Nets. They're amazing. There's something special. They're, it, team, it, it, it's to the point that maybe you got a few, a few more things working the Celtics way. But that special factor, that fairy tale storybook ending factor. To lean towards the Nets. There's something special brewing in Brooklyn right now. And I'm all aboard. In fact, I'm riding the car. I'm riding it. I like the Nets. And I, I'm taking Jack Bone, coach of the year. He's going to be coach of the year. 100%. I think the th- top three is pretty firm. I think it's there's wow. no other top three to have. I respect the Celtics, man. I would like to give um, some shout-outs, though, to guys who just get some recognition. You know, oh, for sure. J.B. Rick, Bickerstaff, Rick Mike Brown, uh, Will Hardy. You know, I think those guys should definitely. Do you want to speak Carl- on the Kings? I saw your tweet. We'll get to that eventually. Just speak to the NBA. Come on, man. My fault. My fault. My fault. My fault. Got ahead of myself. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, yeah, no. The top three is valid, though. I think. Absolutely. Respect. There's I no mean, other three to have. You could maybe right sneak Malone in, the top in there. Three. But um. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. But um, yeah, I, for think, sure. I think I think bigger staff. Will Hardy. Shout out to them. They Will Hardy and um Mike Brown especially. Uh, shout out to those two guys. They've been they've been having their teams fight hard. So you got to give them credit to them. But yeah, those are the, those three are firm. It's just hard to give a middling team. I would I would probably put Joe at one. I would put Vaughn at two. I mean, Joe's just done it consistently yeah. from start to finish. Uh, you got to give credit to that. We're just look at that. Yeah, you got you got to well, give credit. I to was that. gonna say offensive rating. They're number one. They're top seven in defense. Rob as is good as they've they're, been. They're, they're still not as good defensively. With Rob, when Rob is floor, playing. They're the best defense yes. in the league. By I mean, but far. That was a, I knew was you knew happen. that yeah. exactly. You He's knew only that. playing like twenty minutes a game. But the fact that where as great as they've been, the the Nets I think have the second highest three point percentage right now in the NBA, and it's like significantly less attempts than a lot of other teams. They've been knocked they're a lot down. Of shooters, absolutely, they're and a they're great super mid range shooting team. No, I, that as well, Kevin Durant is putting up historic numbers from the mid range. With as great as they've been, and as great as Jock Vaughn has allowed these guys to come in and really commit to what he wants to do, the Celtics have just been a little bit better on both sides of the ball. And Joe Missoula, we he mentioned story, and that was a very good part to a very good aspect to to look at as well. He was not supposed to be the head coach. He had no idea that this was going to happen until suddenly, Joe, it's your time to shine. You're the guy. He had the horses, absolutely, but so did Jock. That was never in question. The talent, you really couldn't have questioned it. No, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, as long as they get it together, they're healthy on the court at the same time. You're expecting them to win ball games, absolutely. But Joe was really thrown into the fire also and was asked to to, to rally the troops after a very controversial offseason <laughs> that E may brought upon the Boston Celtics. So right now I would have Joe one, but Jock is number two, and that easily could shift. But as where we stand right now, I got to give respect and to Missoula. Also the expectations, when Missoula came in, they were still expected to go to the finals, even without E may. Now, Vaughn, obviously you had the talent on the roster, but the kind of mess Nash left and the obviously outside noise, it was more just 
let's get this team on the right track. Let's win games. Let's get into the playoffs. See what happens. It was really not the players. Let's go the championship Vaughn. for sure. Even when he was on the uh, he was on the bench, he was a assistant coach. Uh, yeah. The players respected Vaughn. Absolutely, but they respond to him. Michigan's but those two, back. those two are definitely top two. You know, I think it would just go by whoever finishes first. And, and, and I will say this: when it comes to the Nets versus Celtics, we're talking about this again. That I think should that I think probably will happen. Cracking we'll the fuck happens. up. We'll see what happens. They probably are the two best teams in the in the East, though. I will say this. The Nets are a great mid-range shooting team. Sure. One of the best in the NBA right now. And they get a lot of mid-range shots by dribble handoffs, yeah. a lot of screens. Their offense, is there's a lot of movement involved in the offense. Now, the Celtics play a drop coverage scheme, and that is very vulnerable to pull up shots. This. Something Fine. that the Nets are very good at right now. It's, it's, it's more than just Katie and Kyrie. A lot of their players are great, adjust, are, are great pull-up shooters. When I look at the Celtics and this new net switching defense, they're going to force JB and JT to play one-on-one a lot. And it's not saying that they can't. They can play one-on-one, but it takes away from some of the magic in the Celtics offense. That's what the Warriors did in the finals. They made JT and JB play one-on-one, mostly JT and JT had his worst series. I think uh, JB would be fine. I, I just, I, JB's going to be fine. Yeah, I'm fine. looking at the Nets. Love him. Something special about them, Dallas. They got a good team, bro. Second it's best team in the there East. There is something special yeah, about them. Appreci- I appreciate. I appreciate I've, I've you been saying it. that. I've been saying that for a month. They're a contender. Screw oh, you. Have not. I, for, I really. I put them in the three with the Bucks and the Celtics for sure. A month. Yes. That's cap. Might have been a, a month. month. A is month. strong. A a month. Month. I don't. Maybe last month. week. Yes. Yo, you're a not month, kidding. A month, December is, a month is December first. You might have. You might be right. Went by fast. I don't know. A month is December first. Not gonna say you're lying. I just don't know if you're telling the truth. I'm going to go back and watch the film on that. All right, go for I'm it. I'm going to watch the film, see if you was being respectful. I do. Because that's all I want. I, just, I respect. Because every, every time the Celtics come up, I, I give them their flowers. No, you, bro, we're not going to bring up the offseason? The offseason was crazy. The offseason, every team that's top five in the East is top five in the East right now. I was right. Starting fives, we don't want to talk about that. Duos, we don't want to talk about that. And talent-wise, I stand by what I said. gross. You know, I stand. the starting five is more productive, but... From a talent standpoint, I like what I did. You're gross. I like what I did. I don't. The Pelicans starting five or the Celtics starting five? Oh, we're talking about that again. Bringing this up again, bro. I lean Boston's continuity. Look, <laughs> yo, that's hard. Nah, I'd probably go Celtics. Very close, though. Extremely. It is. Coming close. from a Pelicans more guy. talented. Oh, wait, what the fuck? We, no, that's I'm, what I'm saying. Are we talking just, about this shit? I was just doing talent wise. Talent wise. <laughs> I feel like wise, this is I'm, like, I feel like deja vu. I'm going to say, you still have to respect. This. Not just. Gotta include Rob Will in this conversation. Yes. JT, JB. I like Boston. That's smart, in the duo, league. A smart Horford. Defensively, uh, offensively, I like Boston. Yeah, come on. But I like Adele's. So I appreciate the, the it. Those are great. I mean, number one seed in the West. No credit. Yeah. Don't discredit to them, but come on. Tatum clears. Appreciate you, Dells. Appreciate it for real. So, you guys, respect. are you guys. No, no, we're not. Yeah, yeah squash the beef? Yeah, I, I listen, Joel. Oh, I don't, all the, you just said seven minutes ago, no. You said you like you like animosity. You said like being you on my You wanted to be on him. You wanted to be like getting pinned by him. You said you're like getting pinned by it. Listen, Dell, I think this rivalry is pretty fun. It is. I, I like it. I but like this. The thing I is, like I, I embrace the rivalry we have with the Nets and Celtics, neither, but it's just the Jock Vaughn kind of switch. You know what I mean? That's where we're not seeing eye to eye. What are we, what are we, what are we not nuts. seeing eye to eye on? <laughs> okay. Let's try it for the fifth time. <laughs> <laughs> you were in on the Nets with Steve Nash. Then when they started to suck, you were out. And then once Vaughn came in, they started playing well, you were back in. I was out on the nets with Steve Nash. When Vaughn was first a coach, I was still out. Once I saw a big enough sample size, I said, okay, I'm in their contender. Mm. I'm saying we could stop going back and forth saying, I flip up on the nets, you flip up. We both did. We both should have. Neither. Well, I don't think you should have been on the nets in the first place with Steve Nash. But now that Vaughn's there, the team was talented. I wasn't on the nets because of the talent. Team was talented. That's, that's, this is where you're losing me, Dallas. Because in offseason... I never once came on here and said, yo, I like the Nets because of Steve Nash. No, no, no one said no, that. No, no one, one said that. But we did tell you said, Nash is horrible. But yes, but that, was the, that yes. was the reason why I couldn't put them in the contender list because of I Nash. I said maybe Goss can get better, right? But for <laughs> me, I was talking about from a talent perspective. When we had the Nets versus Celtics debate, 
I, I said, look, I think the Nets role players are right up there with the Celtics. You were like, hell no. You were being disrespectful. <laughs> and then I listed off role player for role player, and you did not want to give the Nets players credit. But is it, Th- These are the same players. Is it not because of Vaughn that the role players are playing better as opposed to Nash? I think the players are good. I, you, you did not think T.J. Warren was a good move at all. T.J. Warren is playing well right now. Because of Vaughn. No, well, he got back. He wasn't healthy with Steve Nash. But I'm saying, like, even when y'all were talking about the Nash versus Joe Mazzu, they weren't playing that but well But the thing is, is that I... I always knew this was capable from the Nets. Oh, shit. With Vaughn, with a different coach, with a different coach. If we just went to the, the season with Vaughn, I wouldn't. I don't know what I would have said because I haven't seen it. Just with the talent and personnel, but I we know in. personnel and talent no, it's, takes it's you so fine. far. Look at the entire Nets fucking history with KD. Well, they could have won the championship well, had it not been for stop the big to get injured. Stop, stop, they would have won. It's just bro. part of it. They would have won, but they stop didn't. Would have won. They got swept. Would they not have won? Then they got swept. All right. <laughs> you try to use getting swept as a reason why they're going to lose in the playoffs again. No, I'm I'm not. But you're saying they would have won. But the next year they had an opportunity to Wait, win and they who, lost in the first round. Won. He's talking about the he's talking about the Nets, man. Like there's still tra- so much shit you have to go Bro, to. The, the, big big three? Three? the big three. Oh, the big we don't three. care about that anymore. I don't. Uh, we really don't. Be, be analysis though. That's be not analysts. be. That's, you're, you're, you're guessing. You're, doing a you're guessing. All right, hypothetically, who, let's guess. Three years ago, hypothetically, sure. I don't care. I don't Maybe, know. but who ca- exactly? What do you do? Hard has an imaginary is, ring on this, his finger. I feel like <laughs> I just feel like Dells. You're trying to get a pass with the Jack Vaughn thing. I want you to really just be like, listen, these players are better than I thought. These role players. But it was never the players. Please just admit it so yes, we can it move was. on. I'm, I'm not. A, okay. I'm, I'm just All right. not. All right, cool. It was never the players. Well, this beef because will continue the, to 2023. The role, the role players can be great. If Kevin Durant goes out and puts up 22 points a game, they're not going anywhere in the playoffs. But well, that's not going to happen again. I, I don't disagree. He didn't even put up 22. I'm being hyperbolic. But I'm saying... I, the role players are solid, but the reason you should be in on the Nets is because of KD and Kyrie, because of their elite talents. At the end of the day, Dells, all year long, including the playoffs, you're going to back the Celtics. Without a doubt. And all year long, including the playoffs, I'm backing all right. the well, Nets. Well, uh, one of us will be right in about five months. Yeah, so what does that Possibly make you us? both could be wrong. That makes us... It's true. But one of... I mean, I guess if we both lose and don't play each other. Yeah. So that, Which that, seems like that a, makes us... Yeah, long shot. That makes us already... Rivals. I'm ready, bro. That's it. That's we it. Smoked, we smoked y'all last time we played. That's a disrespect I'm talking about. <laughs> you want me to shake your hand? Be not. You want me to shake your hand? <laughs> Look at the scoreboard. This week in the NBA. Now I have a couple. Very, very quick. Very, very quick. That I have a couple. Do we want to let this guy go first. One and I did then go not around. say I was apologizing on this week in the oh, NBA. Well, listen, listen. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. This week in the NBA, John Morant was asked about Scotty Barnes being horrible to start the season. And I think why it's, would they ask him? I, I don't know. And John Morant just said to be patient, but I, I do think Scotty has been disappointing, and we're going to have a segment on him possibly next week. We were going to do it this show, but we, we cut it out because Scotty does not deserve a New Year's Eve episode. He does not deserve <laughs> to be on his topic list. Jordan Poole, twenty nine points per game in the last. You said you were going to talk about Zach. Yeah, but like, why and would you, I, you know, I'm just saying Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, he's like that. You you can you can go in on. You know what you think about pool, but don't, don't act like don't. I wasn't in on pool. Oh, what are you talking about? Gosh. What is wrong with you? You're him? not a pool guy. I'm not a pool guy. You're n- you're a hero guy. That's a fact. You're a, a hero Tyler guy. Tyler hero. And you're guy? a Simon's guy. Yes. You're not a pool Whoa, guy. Whoa, he's a Simon's guy. Suddenly, well, you're definitely a hero guy. Yeah, right? you're definitely a hero no, guy. You're not hold a pool guy. You're gonna let him get away with that? No, I, you see, I didn't acknowledge it. You're a Simon's guy. I know. What I the know fuck? you're. A, you're also yes. a Simon's guy. I, but I know. But you're I, a I've been a Simon's guy before. You. But you're a hero guy. You're but then you left. I, I and then you're you back. And you but suddenly. You've been, you been a hero how guy can lately. You, leave? you beat Joel Moran. How, bro, <laughs> how, how can you leave on being a certain guy's guy? You've never been a Jordan Poole guy. That's never. Am I a fan? Am I like a big fan? Like I'm. I'm his cheerleader. You're not a fan. No. But I never disrespected Jordan Poole. But you're not a fan. When, whenever we was only, whenever we would talk about the Warriors, yeah. and Drew would say that, "Oh, Jordan Poole, he's streaky." Did I ever be like, "Yeah, facts, Jordan yeah. Poole, he's not like that." You did. I was he, not like that. The Jordan Poole guy agreed. I but I said I was yeah, like, "Nah, bro, Jordan Poole is nice, bro. Respect." But he you're is not nice, a fan, though. When he's on, you're not a fan. I respect his game. Am I a fan of Steph? I'm not a huge fan oh, of Steph. I respect his game. I understand he's a, he's that guy. I thought you were a fan of Steph. As of recently, I've, I I admire his game. Okay. <laughs> I admire his game. It's hilarious. Say that. I admire but Jordan his Poole, uh-huh. I never. I don't disrespect Jordan Poole. No, I never said you oh, did. That's what I'm saying. You're just not a, you're not a pool guy. You're a hero guy. 
It's your guy. Don't say I'm a hero guy, bro. No, you're definitely no, you're a hero, hero guy. You're a hero I'm more guy. of a Simon's guy than a hero. What? No, I said you're both. You're both. You're, what do you you're mean? A hero and a guy. What do you bro, You me? said Tyler Hero was better than Simon. No, I said they're in the same team. Oh, all three of them are in the then same I, team. Then I said they're in the same yeah, tier. Yes. And then you asked me who's a better playmaker, and I said I think Tyler Hero is and a better playmaker. And that was wrong. Is it wrong? It's literally even. Bro. Who's a better playmaker than both? If we're being honest, but go on with your this week's in December thirty first, twenty sixteen. Here we go. Harden had 53 points, 16 rebounds, and 17 that was assists. Far. Mm-hmm. He's that good. <laughs> and now, this week in the NBA, I'm going to pass it to you, Riff. You tweeted something about the Sacramento Kings. No that way it, he's that, doing you that, like that this. That took it long enough to realize. I've been waiting on this. I've been waiting I on this. I, wait, wait, hold but on. I, but I want you to allow, because I, I quote tweeted and I said, listen, the apology needs to be louder than the disrespect. Whoa. You wanted to quietly be like, yeah, the Kings are nice. Let's move past that. Whenever he gets something wrong, he likes, yeah, I was wrong. That's it. Let's move past it. No, no, no. Projecting. Projecting. Nah. Don't forget that. It's projecting. No, the well. The Kings deserve more respect than just um, a hidden apology, my friend. It wasn't hidden because like 50 people liked it. Um, what I would say is, no, yeah, I definitely can take an L. I, you know, I know when to take an L. I, I don't flip. I take you know. L's all the time. Yeah, Minnesota. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I know when to take L. And I, I was wrong on the Kings. Understandable. They've been really good. What you want me to say? I'm gonna... But it's more... Th- the Sabonis disrespect, the Kevin the Herter disrespect. That was disrespect. both of y'all. So what, what, what more Kayvon, do you want to say about he's him. He's him. Kayvon Herter? He's him. You get that from me. He's him. That Sabonis. was big time disrespect. Sabonis. The De'Aaron Fox? I'm still not moved. Uh, I say the De'Aaron Fox was pretty bad. I'm still not moved. Why? Didn't you, you had a segment you picked Fox over Ja Morant. Hey. That was two years ago. Bro. That, <laughs> the, the disrespect needs to be as loud. That was I need two. To <laughs> I need, I need that you was just, two uh, years yeah, ago yeah, when John Moran just finished averaging nineteen. I get it. Game. That take has aged season. shit. T. Okay, John Moran was in his second year, bro. Yeah. I understand. Um, We're talking about an I'm, off season. I'm still not moved about Fox, but I, I, I can say I uh, apologize to the Kings for thinking they wouldn't be that good. I yeah, can admit that. Yeah, they've been, they've been a good team. They're really good. Um, can you gave respect to Mike Brown being deserved to be coach of the year. Honorable mention. Definitely needs to be in that conversation. For sure. Here we we're go. not letting you off the hook, bro. Well, you're you were a year too early. I know, man. We gotta hold him accountable. I know that's what I was For saying. Sure. Cause you, we, we hold everyone else accountable. It's only fair, Riff. I definitely hold you accountable, so I can't talk about you know, so say, we're different. I don't say too many takes. But I don't say too much bullshit. You don't, you don't, I'm you don't like have a little fun. Like I, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, the Sabonis suspect was out of this world. But that's Drew. That's Drew's problem. That's his. You were down. literally right next you to were, and you were, and you were emphasis, you, you, I mean, that's no, wait, the hold, stupidest shit ever. I may have been meaner with the disrespect, but the disrespect was the same. I was just, yeah, I was just mean. It was the same. What I say about Sabonis, we both said he wasn't like we both called. You him laughed mid. at me. You called me stupid. I said he's an all star. You called me dumb. You guys called for me what, basically the, yo- the yoke is calm. Yeah, for for saying he was a poor man's. Yoke called him an all star. Okay, I don't I think you called him an all star. But I. In my offseason monologue about the Kings, I said they have two All-Stars. You laughed and said, two what? Sabonis still might not make it. No, he's the third best center in the NBA right now. No, Bam is better. Bam has not, been better. Bam, Bam has been better. Not better this Bam year. has been I better. I saw a ranking no, that had Bam in the Bam top has been 20 better. best what, players. What has been better at? Defensively. But that's all. That's Bam. He's not well, offensively, Bam. he's been good, though. He's not better he's been anything okay. he's offensively been solid. Sabonis. Sabonis I was going to say, he's one of the best. Pa- he's the, probably 20, the second best 20, passing 20 and 10 with five is really good for a big. It's really good. And this the past month that. He's that, doing his thing. The past month that Sabonis just had no, was Sabonis this month unbelievable. Fucking nuts. Yeah, ridiculous. He's the third best center in the league, bro. Come through. Third best, man. He's been playing better than. Damn, well, I'll are you that. counting Anthony Davis as a power forward or a center? I personally see Anthony Davis as a center. He's not playing right now, but yeah, sure. Okay. If he's playing, I yeah, think AD is a center, personally. Oh, go ahead, Riff. I mean, I guess. I mean, if Sabonis, what you got for this Sabonis is better. Sabonis is better. Whatever. Uh, this week in the NBA, it's Golden obvious. fucking State Warriors, duh. Uh, they just finished the homestead undefeated. Defense has been amazing. You know, Steph Curry hasn't played. Draymond Green saving the day. Jonathan Kaminga giving key minutes down the stretch on the Finally. defensive end. Dante DiVincenzo being huge. Mm. Last two minutes last night, Dame only scored two points. Dante DiVincenzo was his I main assignment. Get out of here. That was tough. I that got it. And then, of course, young light skin. The, the future of the franchise. Jordan Poole being as amazing as he is when he's a starter. Quentin. I tried to tell my boy Drew. Top 15 pick right there. I, try, I tried to warn you. When Jordan Poole is a starter, he is one-on-one. He's a dog, but Drew wasn't hearing it. But Jordan Poole's been amazing as a starter. He's been engine the, the offense runs completely different when Jordan Poole's on the court because he just cannot do certain things that Steph can do. But when you have the ball in his hands, he's so quick, he's so twitchy, he gets to the basket, he has to he exploits mismatches. The offense has run differently. The defense has been so much better. 
And shout out to the Warriors. Oh, and my other this week in the NBA, shout out to Zach Levine. He finally you, woke you up. Scolded me for because it was fucking. Detroit, you know. So, but PBJ he, had had a pretty good game. The other oh my night. god, he was splash. But shout out to Zach Levine. He finally woke up out of his bed. He's his last <laughs> his last seven games. He's been shooting fifty three percent at the rim. He was shooting like thirty nine prior games. So he's been getting back to form. He's been amazing over these last couple of weeks. Shout out to Zach though. I still want us to tank, but we've been what five and two in our last seven, and we're in the play in now, ten seed. So I guess that's cool. Ali. All right, so just, tank. No, uh, just be ready to cancel that bet because Wizards suck. <laughs> they suck. No, I'm not canceling. Nothing. No, just be right. You, you lost. I didn't lose yet. No, no. Remember you was running victory laps in November? You remember that? He loves his victory yeah, laps. Yeah, you were running victory laps right before Thanksgiving, I believe. If there's one thing that life has taught me is that you stand on your word, you stand on what you say, on what you say and you'll ride things to the You literally line. stole everything I do. And <laughs> that's literally what I stand on. And and what made me realize that this year was the DeJounte D'Lo bet. Although I cashed out, I'm right on that. And it's still D- very D-Lo close. Got more Didn't you just close. tell me don't take a victory lap on Washington, but you're doing it with DeJounte D'Lo? Well, that's one of your flaws. As of right now, you know. D'Lo is averaging more assists. Yeah, but DeJounte. you just told me don't run away with but that. Like, cause it's, still, it's like 0. .5 or something like that. It, they're, they're definitely in the same it's you, you tend to just do victory laps pretty prematurely. It's because I know it's, it's going to be right. It's ah. as simple as that. So, remember remember Gabe mean, Davis week one? That was fun. I mean, Gabe Davis is only 201 yards away from getting He's the He's still dive. at 200? And and honestly, the Gabe Davis thing, I did not call him an elite receiver. Eh, All I said, you just thought he was a complete scrub. He's, I mean, you literally said they don't have another respectable weapon outside Stephon Diggs. That's a great elite option. Yeah, for sure. That doesn't mean Gabe Davis is not good. He's a good receiver. He's, he's not even close to Tyler Lockett. Okay. Tyler Lockett's a great receiver. He is great. Is, Davis is so mad. Is, 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 is Gabe Boyd? Davis not a good receiver? Davis is a okay. wide receiver. Uh, you acted like he was Davis, just a whatever guy. He's a deep threat wide receiver three. He's a good receiver. He's though. a deep threat wide receiver he's, he's three. He's a good receiver. See, but the thing is, you, you didn't give me Marquise Brown was good last year. You didn't give me that. No, you said great. Like Hollywood. No, fucking, I didn't. Hollywood Don't do that. Fucking no, clears no. And it's no. Not you called close. Auden Tate good. I called Marquise <laughs> Brown good, and you're like, I don't know about that. No, you said like, he was great. Bro. I didn't. I didn't. Yes, you did. You're talking to me. My what's memory what's is fucking sound. NBA, bro? Um, I have a feeling based on your jersey. I'm absolutely. Okay. So I wanted to, you know. Oh, facts about his birthday. Originally, I was going to shed some light on Trey Young's recent resurgence because no. there's a lot of mud being thrown onto his name. But why do that when I could talk about the king? Mr. LeBron James. LeBron James turned 38 yesterday. Happy birthday to the king. Hope it was a great day. I'm sure it was because he absolutely showed out for the Bourne. 47 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists. Would have loved the triple-double. But you know what? 47 points on the Bourne. What more can you ask for? A win. And that's exactly what they did with LeBron closing, scoring double digits in the fourth quarter. LeBron had an all-time quote. He said, I've been scoring 30 recently, and that's not been working. So I had to go and score 40. Oh, man. I had goosebumps when I heard that. But the last 10 games from LeBron James, 35 points, 33 points, 30, 33, 31, 34, 38, 28, 27, and 47. This is in year 20. This is the washed king, allegedly. Tracks. You know what they say. If Matt Ryan's washed, LeBron James is washed. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> And Matt Ryan is not wild. I wasn't bringing that up. I wasn't. <laughs> NBA ranks in the 20th season. LeBron James. Points, 27.8. He's first all time. Field goal percentage. Never. Second, number, he's number two. Number two oh, there. Oh, field goal percentage. Yes, okay. field goal percentage. I'm assuming that that's Kareem because the field goal is going to be close. Uh, rebounds first. Assists first. Steals first. And blocks third. Who's, who's not, not good. I'm going to assume Kareem. Carmel. I couldn't tell you the next one. Maybe? At 38, right? But to you're be doing right, this year in year 20, at the age of 38 years old. We're like seven players have done yeah, this. <coughs> such a small list. <laughs> we need to acknowledge and respect the King because we love to put players over LeBron so quickly. We put one player over No, LeBron. no, I'm not talking all time. I'm <laughs> talking about and right, now, right now. Right <laughs> now. Because people are dropping LeBron out of their top 10 suddenly. Like, wow. how about we start putting respect on his name? His team may not be up to par with, with what people want. What I want, absolutely. 
But at the same time, we can acknowledge and respect what he's doing is unprecedented. Yeah, he's Simple. fantastic. He's he's phenomenal. I thought you were talking about it all the time. Like, yeah, I was, I was like I was, one guy. <laughs> I mean, like half people his, say yes. His legacy is already that. cemented. Yeah. He's the greatest ever. I mean, it's um, simple. And he also said how he doesn't want to spend his last years on this middling Lakers team. He didn't say exactly, but more or less. And I wanted to speak on that a little bit too. What is he? What is what is he saying with that? He really, it's, a, it's really this simple. It sounds like LeBron's gone. He wants to win. It sounds like LeBron's gone. Winning a chip. He don't get roster. no pushback with that. With that comment, no. I didn't love it. No, Le- I didn't LeBron, love it, but I understand because when like be KD talked about the star and five of Royce, he won a championship. Shit like that. He won a championship with this team. Yeah, y'all was all no, on that. LeBron. Like, oh my god, LeBron. It's LeBron James. Yes, he won a championship. We were not all on the top two greatest player ever, bro. Who's on the ass team? We were on KD, bro. Who different standards? Yeah. yeah, but KD's comments, which I did, which I which I feel to interpret from that, was that he was just saying, "Look, Joe Harris t- coming back right from an injury." I said I was fine with that. Actually, I said yeah, I'm fine so with Neil, keeping it a stack. Team. Yeah, I said I was fine with him keeping it a stack. LeBron, consistent. LeBron, gets I to am do being things consistent. Other players don't get to do. Oh, it, maybe it's not fair, but he's earned that right. I think I would say. Um, my this week in the NBA. Do, sorry, do you have anything else? No, man. How about CJ McCollum? Last 11 night, 11 threes. 11 threes, bro, went off 42 points, I want to say. Big win over your Philadelphia 76ers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pelicans, the one seed. We talked about Willie Green, possibly coach of the year. I mean, they're playing phenomenal basketball and doing this without B.I. It's going to get when the fuck does he come back? scary once he's back. I, I, I don't know, man. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. I mean, soon. ball is new about the Pelicans. They're nice, for sure. They knew about the Pelicans. They did, in fact, have, know about I the have Pelicans. Top five seeds, so. I don't think he's talking about you. Oh, I don't think so. Talking about, I don't know who he's talking about. I think he's just talking in general. Oh, I feel be. like I had yeah. him as like a... Because this thing, Ball Newers... Ball Newers didn't put Minnesota one. It, uh, Ball Newers also didn't have the Kings in the 11th seed or 12th seed either. What you had them at? Did eight? I have them? Maybe. No, I had them in, in make the plus for sure. Oh, you, yes, you, I had them you had them as six seed? You did an off season. Seed. So you did play him. But I definitely thought it was feasible. Okay, but that doesn't matter if you don't have it there, bro. <laughs> it was feasible. It was so, feasible. You, that's, that's like Simple when you. That's that. like when we're doing the pick for NFL. And it's like the Bengals win, but don't be surprised if the Bills win. The and Bills also win. Minnesota. Come back, I, said, I told you, it doesn't Cats like been that. injured. Go Bears injured. I mean, this team, you although gave up on them when in they the were healthy, they weren't good either. Yeah, but you they gave up on them in the week. They weren't good when they were healthy, but they also they haven't had time to mesh at all. So, okay, go back in on the Wolves then. So I'm saying, uh, well, they the were Wolves were see. <laughs> we're giving you. You have an opportunity to say once they're healthy, but no, you said once they're out. Once they're healthy, we they want can, you to take, go back on. The once Minnesota. they're healthy, there's a chance. A chance of things, what? Things can get figured out. Chance of, but they don't have any time on the court right now. They they're they yeah. they're not able to play together Catcher, and grow yeah. that chemistry. That's a big thing. I'm not saying, of course, the first seed is out of the question, but yeah, at mean, least they got to hope for that fucking eight seed. Oh, the Jazz will drop out. At least get a home playing game. <laughs> Looking back right now, which off season Tim moves? Tim was a three and two without Cat. He's been on five games. Looking back, which off season moves were the best? So I have. You two. said Cat what? I said they're three, three and two, two without Cat. How are they? Like are you talking about Gobert? Do you mean Gobert? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't open up. It's six and nine without Cat. I was. Yeah, that. that yeah. Yeah, yeah. So mine, ironically, on the conversation, uh, mine both are related to the Utah Jazz. Now, one, the best move that I see is Donovan Mitchell going to the Cleveland Cavaliers, immediately making them one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, where I've been very. People seem seem to sound like I'm being a Cavaliers hater. I'm not. I'm just being. I don't want to say realistic, but I understand what they are. I just think that it's a little too early right now to put them in those conversations with the Celtics, the Nets, and or Milwaukee. They're just in that tier below. Their time in the sun will come, potentially next season. But for this year, I don't see it. Uh, But acquiring Donovan Mitchell has been electric. Donovan Mitchell has been one of the best players in the NBA. And he's been that, but now he's highlighting at a different level now that he's on a new team and he's consistently doing it night in, night out. Number two, the Utah Jazz moving off Rudy Gobert in that ridiculous contract. And acquiring five first round picks and acquiring acquiring pieces for the future as well. Now that the Timberwolves have to deal with over two hundred million, and now the Utah Jazz have a plethora of picks, both from the Cavaliers and Minnesota, to revamp this team while con- con- continuing to play mid tier basketball better than a lot of people expected. The Utah Jazz come out as strong winners in both these trades, more so the Gobert than any trade for sure. But the fact that they're playing a lot better than what people had anticipated. The Utah Jazz have to be winners. So my number one is Jalen Brunson. 
you know, I think you, you got to put him up there. You know, absolutely. What he's done for the Knicks offensively as a playmaker, as a finisher, kind of fan it, of mine. Didn't even mention it as an in between scorer. <laughs> All new is new. That's a good take. Um, he was due for one. You had to know they needed a point guard, Jalen Brunson. Bang. As an in between scorer, you know, the Knicks being top six, seven in the uh, East is something. We didn't see. We thought they'd be a playing Playin'. team. Yep. But them climbing up that high and being that good, I think that's something you got to give out. And I also had Donovan Mitchell Absolutely. up there. I, I want to give a little love to Malcolm Brogdon for Boston. I think what he's done for Boston, even open, I, I feel like to a degree that's opened up Marcus Smart as a playmaker, you know, to just rely focusing on playmaking because Malcolm Brogdon can give you that scoring output that Marcus Smart may not have been able to give stroking, you. Man. Brogdon can do that. And also his defense being 6'5", that long, that strong, that was crazy. Um, six five that's that clean. long, that strong, being able to stretch the floor, play, make, create for us. I think that just opened up Boston's game and creates more depth for them. So, uh, Brogdon, Mitchell, and Jalen Brunson. You mentioned Jalen Brunson. Now it's gonna be one of my guys. What you mentioned, and you <coughs> talked about him. We know what he is. He's a dog. My moves, are really, the Kings and the Nuggets right here. Kevon? The Kings getting is Malik it Monk. Or Kevin? No, it's Kevin, but his nickname is Kevon. The Kings get a Malik Monk and Kevin Herter. I mean, Malik Monk's a six man of the year candidate. Facts. He is legit. I miss a him. Flamethrower. I miss him. He's nice. Yeah, if you're on the shooter. And Kevin Herter's averaging 16, shooting 42% from three. He he's really been the third most important player on the, on this offense. It's been number one Sabonis, then two Fox, then three is Kevin Herter, no doubt. And they've changed the landscape of the Kings. The Kings, they're legit. The Nuggets I have with the Bruce Browns uh, signing. Which was amazing. He's averaging eleven four and four. He's playing. He's the point guard basically, and I feel like that always was his role. He was in college, Steve he was point guard. Steve Nash played him as, as a center, and he threw shots at Steve Nash not too long ago about how you know I've, I've always been a guard. <laughs> but uh, Bruce Brown was a great signing, and KCP he's shooting forty seven percent from three. I mean these these <sighs> were the perfect compliments <laughs> for Nikola Jokic. There was a yeah. perfect compliments for Nikola Jokic. Um, you guys touched on like big ones like the Mitchell trade. Uh, I feel like a couple under the radar ones. Magic resigning Bull Bull. He was a guy that's kind of been passed around the league. Wind Celtics Dallas. had him last year. Um, this year he's been starting and playing really well for them. Um, and the Bucks resigned Javon Carter. He's been a pivotal piece to that team. You know he's been he's been really great love in Javon, both sides man. of the ball. Um, and then a little love to the Nets for not making a move, not trading KD. Can I tell you, I was Kyrie. thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, making wow, that move of crazy. you have all the pressure, the media, the fans, you know, the, the city Old says Wells. you want to go. Wells. <laughs> you, go and, you know, KD requested out and you have all this pressure to make a move. They stood firm. And honestly, the reason it's, it's something we haven't really seen, like there's the Nets didn't trade KD because there's no fair trade package for KD. There's nothing you could trade for that you feel like is equal return. So the Nets just waiting out, waiting out to see if someone will just have a crazy overpay and offer 10 first round picks and Jalen Brown or something ridiculous like that is the reason he ended up staying. And it's a big move because now they're a championship contender. That was a great, great pick. It was a great perspective, brother. You know me. You know what? I'm fair. What are you thinking? Your offer. <laughs> oh, we're good. That respect. Okay. That respect on the Nets, the organization, the front office, Sean Marks, Kevin Durant, his great talents, not trading him for, for bullshit. Mm -hmm. I respect you Wait, guys. Wait, so can I ask you a question? As a man. When I give your Knicks, well, your old Knicks, respect, when I give them flowers, why do you continue to shit on the Bulls? You don't give the Knicks flowers, though. You just wow. did. Jalen Brunson. Gave, I don't know. I called y'all one of the best six, young seven. cores in the league. Bro, he's clean. Uh, as the Knicks fan of the show, you're good with me. I've been, I, I you're good it. with me. But I'm saying I've, I've been nothing but respectful to the Knicks. <laughs> I feel like when we come on here, I give them. When did you say they were? At what point did you say they won? Because I feel like if we asked now, you said no. What? Pretty recently, we asked. I think Joel said, "Do we still want the best young cores?" And I feel like I said that in, uh, probably said before that the season year. started. Yeah, before the season started. No, that was I, I put I put respect on the Bulls last year. No, you did not. You did not. Yes, I did. You throw, the apology, you, but then you said it was the biggest mistake. You throw you very that was after. You throw, you, throw after. Very, <laughs> you throw very random strays. I don't even be saying nothing about the Knicks. Chilling. You say a lot of things about the Knicks. It's all right, bro. He throws hella strays at the Lakers, hella strays at the Broncos. It's well, Joel it, I feel Joel. like when it comes to the Knicks, Dells was having a conversation with you, and he was talking about how you root for every team, and I just said, I mean, to be fair, you know, he saw a championship, and you haven't. And then you went off on the Knicks. You forgot about that? Because why are you saying that if you haven't? 
You should have stayed out the conversation. I'm, I'm adding. I'm adding. There should be no adding. Context to the conversation. Don't add context can, to a conversation. Wait, can you I, can't can jump I not? In. Can I not ask him the conversation? Why are you gonna add context you can't even well, relate I'm, to? I'm just saying to be fair, Dale. How you gonna say? How you from outside? Yeah. Love. How you gonna say to be fair if you can't even be fair? You know, it don't even matter because you're not the next guy no more. Wait, wait, hold up. Is that not a fact though? If they argue, can I not be like? I mean, bro, like he saw championship though. He's he. We we you know. Piggyback each other, and then, and then you you, you don't you don't have a ride. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't have a ride, Drew. Drew rides Drew when you guys are debating. What the? F- ah. But in that, what? like you guys don't ride. You know what I'm saying? Like piggyback on each other. It was a Celtics. Got it. Each other. It. it was a Celtics bulls thing. It turned into a Knicks slander. That's because you it was. the Knicks. Because the no, Knicks did what they did. The TikTok they comments the were, were funny as hell too. Yeah, but you talked you about Melo, failed Knicks tenure. You talked about insanity. Because you jumped in. You really brought in the Knicks for no reason. It was a Celtics bull. I don't know. It was Celtics something, and you and you brought in the Knicks. So, no so when he says he doesn't disrespect the Knicks, you I'm stray really, every I'm episode. wondering, if, what do you mean I stray? I stray because in the, you know the what? off season when I said the Knicks would be better than the Bulls, you laughed. I can't laugh. Because you laughed because you thought it was a bad opinion. So? You can be right. Okay, but that <laughs> was right. And then when, I, when I, I've been talking about the Bulls' limited ceiling... Have I not just been honest about the Bulls? Wait, but, but, yeah, but, wait, but, but, but I don't know. You've oh, been rude on Levine's oh, name. Oh, but Drew, Drew, Drew. Very. Because watch this. When when he said Minnesota was the first seed and we called them third, you laughed at us. He's we don't give wrong. you as much He's shit about wrong. it. He's we just not. let you pass with that. Well, the Minnesota, and you were wrong. The you, no, you were wrong. The Minnesota thing terribly. is Minnesota thing, bro. No, like, but you were terribly it is wrong. It is. We're not it, even going to talk about it. He went on to a, a Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Or <laughs> yeah, talking you, you would have been like, you would have been <laughs> chatting that now. Minnesota's in his bio, bro. He was going to eat Edwards crazy. And we was like, you know what? We're going to let it ride. Then they started being like, shit, we didn't say much. We was just letting you. He was letting it burn. Wasn't Ant Ran your dark horse MVP? Nah, he wasn't. Yeah, that's crazy. Zion right. was my dark horse MVP. <laughs> Try to catch him. Yeah, no, no. It's all right. New Knicks guy. They said I'm good in the club. You're good. I don't that's, need crazy, that's, that's crazy, bro. That's <laughs> crazy. All, all I've been is honest about the Bulls. Saying they have a limited ceiling. Their first round exit. But you've been disrespecting I'm just, Levine. I'm you just, randomly throw strays at Levine. I'm he did nothing to you. At the, what about Levine? What was the Levine stray, bro? I mean, and I don't want him on the Knicks. No, no, you no, throw, you, you throw random shit like Zach's cooked, his knees cooked. You say that randomly. You said he had the worst contract, one of the worst contracts in the N- NBA. He does. Oh my Yo, god! Does he not? I caught Tatum Dark Horse MVP. Well, well that was easy. It should have been a I'd, agreed. MVP, period. Agreed. Hey, hold up. Well, you know is, the, the, is the Zach Levine's contract not it's been bad? from you though. It is bad. You want to ask me no. to, 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 to help your straight point? Because no, it's not going to help I'm your straight point. I'm talking to Drew. No. If we're having a topic about it, it's not. Of course. I mean, if we're having a topic about it, I get. Say it, but if you just randomly say it, yeah. we're gonna move on. Sorry, you're so not pick a fun, fun, a fun part of the show, of, of the show. It's gonna be a blast. I'm pick a so side. Of like a, do we have trophies now? We, Chelsea's no, I wish happy. we had trophies. Why? Because you, I said, oh, hopefully I'll be there by eight, and I said, I'm, I'm hoping I'll be there by nine. She said, I'm, I'm annoyed. <laughs> Wait, what are you guys doing? Uh, we're going to Mills. I'm what? annoyed. Uh oh, in Hoboken? What's that? A bar? Oh, the thing. Yeah. Oh. She's about to take her donation back, report it as fraud. Have fun. Tell her <laughs> meet you there. I don't know how she'll go over with that. It's okay. My now, girl's mad too. She says she's cooking shrimp though. So we'll see how good it is. Pick a side Shit's awards. Gonna be mid. Now, we want to do something different. We don't want to do just MVP, rookie of the year, all this other stuff. Pick a side awards, things that are, you know, represent the podcast. This first award doesn't do that, but the next one will. So comeback player. Who are we giving this award to? I have to give it to Zion. That's fair. That's Absolutely. my that's my comeback. I mean, that's guy. easy. You know, I gave I it to somebody different because I knew you yeah, would give it to Zion. Okay. Like Zion is somebody that back I'll be honest, I didn't even see comeback on this list. Oh, sorry. He doesn't do his job. Well, last year, last so year when up. Zion last year when Zion he was in the rumors about getting traded and not playing and being unhealthy, being a bad teammate. When CJ first got traded to New Orleans, I defended Zion at every single angle. I felt like the fat shaming was unnecessary, the constant controversy within the media was not necessary. And Zion doing what he's doing now, averaging 26, 7, and 5, is something that I knew he was capable of. My dark horse MVP. It's him. And he's a comeback player for me easily in the NBA. The only person to really throw into no, this let conversation. Me do it. Just let me go. Because right. you, you're going to pick Zion, right? Well, it's it's Zion. And, well, go it, ahead. Say your name. My comeback player is Anthony Davis. Um, Shit. The slander he had last year for me from the world. <laughs> I mean, we were cooking. Last two years, we were cooking in and out of the lineups. Day to day Davis, Disney clothes, like we were cooking this man. Disney clothes, yeah. and then the fact that he came in this year with a mission to show people That's he it. still has that talent. 
I think that in itself shows a comeback. I know it's not the whole he missed a year, but this comeback of being a top ten player in the league when he does play, I think I got to give. I knew y'all was gonna pick Zion, so I got to give AD some love here. And another guy I picked was Dame. I feel like Dame okay. also he missed a part of the season last year. People were questioning if he was gonna come back and have that same drive. You have point guards coming up. Dame this year is still a top five point guard in the league. So shout out to those two guys. So people that also need respect, and I know this is basketball right now, but let's go into football. Saquon Barkley, oh. Geno Smith, two guys. Well, Geno specifically with arguably quote. Of the, of the decade. Yeah. They try to write me off. I ain't right back. And Gino has come in and has played exceptional, exceeded every single expectation of what you thought Gino Smith was going to do this season. And Saquon Barkley, people leaving him out of the top 10 running backs, leaving Saquon Barkley out of the top 20 running backs, Nuts. the disrespect on Saquon's name was insane to me. But all you had to do was recognize the talent. The talent was always there. It was what was around him. And this year he's come in and slayed every single narrative and has excelled in every aspect at the running back position. I think for comeback player of the year, it's not someone who got injured, but someone who's been disrespected and made fun of, and me included, Jared Goff. He was someone who, once he got traded away like from, from the Rams, he went to Detroit. You had to trade two first-round picks just to get off of his contract. Everyone saw it as, you know, Goff, he's first round, first overall pick bust. He's not someone who could, you know, lead you to the Super Bowl, even though he did. Can't win your Super Bowl, I guess. You get Stafford. It works out for the Rams, absolutely. But you see Jared Goff, when he has protection, when he has weapons, he could be a really good quarterback. He could be in that Kirk Cousins conversation, which I think everyone wrote off for him after his time, uh, you know, his last couple of years in L.A. There's actually a graphic that goes around every week. I, for, I forget the name of the guy. Um, but it basically shows the pass protection for Stafford and Goff and their EPA per play. And it's basically identical. When Goff and Stafford get good protection, they have a high EPA. When they have bad protection, it's fucking nothing. So <laughs> it, it really just goes to show you situation matters so much because, listen, Matt Stafford wins you the bowl, but the way Jared Goff's playing right now, it's hard not to say if Jared Goff was in that situation, they could do the same thing. Agenda of the year. <sighs> for me, it's Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is definitely my agenda of the year. Um, I was really the only guy on him last season after that playoff game. I came in. I said, listen, there's stuff you have to work on, but there's there's traits here of franchise quarterback. There's traits here. His mobility, I said his arm is underrated. He has the leadership skills. Coming into this year, I was definitely higher. I was pushing the Trey Lance agenda more before he got injured, but once he went down, I definitely picked up on the Jalen Hurts. Got the the green fellas shirt shirt for the Eagles. You know, those those are the guys I'm riding with this that season. That was a fire NFC. shirt, and I need you to tell me where you got it from. Yeah, Instagram, bro. I'm such a big platform. My take of the year, I mean, the Rams won the Super Bowl mad early ago. Struggling to figure it out. No. I mean, it was the Rams. And then up until recently, it was too, of course. Uh, But I probably would have to lean the Rams for the fact that it was a consistent week in, week out, sitting here through good games, sitting here through bad games. Picking them to win the Super Bowl from week one was pretty great. But to a, regardless of of the recent outcomes, he exceeded a lot of people's expectations. A lot of people wrote him off, said that he wasn't a starting quarterback in this league, and he has just slayed a ton of narratives that were just wrongfully placed on his name and has been amazing this season. Um, I think for me it's kind of like last summer translated into like the end of last year. It's Golden State easily. I think uh, going into the summer, I'd say they was going to win. Two months later, said they was going to win. Steph having the shit off, uh, shit – Stretch, I still said they were going to win. Draymond going down, trusted the process, going all the way into the playoffs, and then going to the finals, trusting in Wiggins, saying he's going to lock Tatum. Definitely. Going through that whole process with Golden State and the whole run and the whole up-and-down loopy of the season. Yeah, that's easily my best take. I think from start to finish, I was pretty consistent, and I got the W. I thought we were doing, like, current NBA NFL season. So that's definitely <laughs> Bro threw a little stray at you guys. So so well, that's no, it was this year. No, no, no yeah, yeah. It yeah, was twenty twenty two. I mean the season ain't over, so I can't really I know. <laughs> so definitely that's my W two. I was on I was on the same path with you that entire year. I mean, I never swayed from the Warriors. I had them winning the championship that year pretty easily. Why are you laughing, Ray? It's the way they're looking at you. That's just disgusting. No, I'm only I'm holding in a laugh because River is making me laugh. It's done. You talk about some gross. <laughs> was that not my agenda? It no. was, bro. It was. It was. <laughs> don't worry yeah, about it. Bro. It just cracks right. me up every single time. Like, I don't get why people yes. like to say that is Riv's yeah. take. When <laughs> I said it to him, I don't know. 
Yeah, bro. People but it's true. It. They, they do forget. forget. It. They do. I it wasn't as loud as. It's just not. Nah, it's just because Riv's a Warriors Warriors fan. fan. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I think I was just as loud as you. No. It's just not possible. <laughs> it's just. Not. I was adamant on the Especially Warriors, Especially with bro. Steph there, it's just not possible. So it would have been tough. Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. You know, we had a Joe Burrow debate versus Lamar. You guys thought I was crazy for taking Burrow. I, I took d- Burrow over him. I didn't. I talked to this guy. Let him have his moment. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought it was crazy for taking Joe Burrow. I took Joe Burrow. Then the playoffs happened. You know, after we had the Stafford versus Joe Burrow debate, that's not a debate no more. Yeah, I had Stafford ranked over Joe Burrow. You thought the Bengals were a fluke season. <laughs> I had them winning division. <laughs> the Bengals shit. going crazy. Yeah, Lamar gets hurt. So most. yeah, they could they could pop, maybe they could lose a playoff game, right? You know, who who knows who knows that's what's gonna happen. Fluke. But I, I think the Bengals for sure. Joe Burrow has proven me right as being a top five quarterback because when I put him at the fifth spot, I got a lot of backlash for having him that high. Sure. And Joe Burrow has been nothing short of one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. The Minnesota Vikings is easy for me, man. The Minnesota Vikings, 12 wins. I've been on them last year. I was on them again this year. Do I get year. that same credit with you? You guys both do. I, I had them winning the division. Yeah, Minnesota Vikings, and I, I think this team is special too. They got some special characteristics to them. And you're looking at me sideways. I don't know why. Good. They're a great regular season team. They're, I don't think they make noise in the playoffs. I, I'm taking a W on the Jets easily. You know, even though Zach Wilson flopped, I said we'd be in the playoffs. We'd you're, be in the hunt. You told me specifically I'm not a Jets fan. I'm a Zach Wilson fan. I never said that, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you kinda. what. Uh, another sleeper for take of the year. It's not done yet, of course, so it can't be completed until next year. But asking the question whether or not the Jets will go 0-5 to end the season. Well, that's now, good. Now with Mike White, that's only that's there good. for the fact that I got called a lot of mean Yo, names. One more, Yo, one more, two. two. But uh, yeah, even two. even if Seattle, the Jets, Seattle and Dolphins, uh, aren't you going four right now? No, they're on three. Oh, yeah. on three. Two. Even if the Jets missed the playoffs, I had them in the hunt. I thought we'd for make sure. a significant improvement. Obviously, with Zach, I'm there Wilson. with you. I had them. I had us on the hunt. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're with me, bro. <laughs> um, I should I should be asking you. The, the Kings, around. the Kings, they're looking like it's a W right now. I fuck with the Sacramento Kings. They're lighting the beam on a consistent basis. I love that for them. It's, Tony, t- it's take of the year, not not like a laundry list. What's going on here? I got a lot of great takes. What can oh I my say? God. Tony Pollard. You would you just name it? Tony shit Pollard. Pro Bowler. Tony Pol- Tony you know, I've Pollard's always really said good. he was better than Zeke. Do you think his flops of the year are going to be this long? Probably not. He'll definitely <laughs> keep that Zion <laughs> Dark Horse. Okay. You know, MVP. I thought he'd come back to this level. Oh, so I should have put my Tatum Dark Horse shit. Yeah. No, I sure. I mean I I got I've had a lot of great takes. I, I, I design, thought I, I thought take AD. of the year is just one take. Like that, you know how actually finished. Coach of the year is one yeah. coach. And well, if I'm doing take of the year, the, the, one war, the Warriors thing is yeah. is my you know. I, I you were saying shit you, you finished. You know, I, mean, I, I just got a lot of great takes. What can I say? I got a lot of them. So I can't me, wait to the flop. Uh, the flop list for me. Uh, it's a it's a lot of great takes. You know, flop is flop next. Yo, biggest flop of the year okay. is next. So, biggest flop of the year. I saw what you did. Uh, mine's Joe Burrow. I didn't think Joe Burrow could ever crack the top five. I did not think he was going to be in the same breath as guys like Justin Herbert and Josh Allen, and he's proved me wrong. Now, I still don't know if the Bengals are going to be perennial Super Bowl caliber teams. That's why part of my monologue last, last season, why they got lucky, is because the path wasn't as hard. This year, they might have to play Justin Herbert in the first round, Lamar Jackson in the first round. So, you're not going to probably get as many couple easy wins against Derek Carr and the Raiders and Ryan Tannehill and the Titans with a very fraudulent number one seed. But Joe Burrow is without a doubt top five quarterback. I pushed back on Joel's take a lot. I thought Lamar was clear of him. Herbert was clear of him. He's without a doubt in that conversation. This year has been better than both of those guys. Mine by far has to be Broncos 13-4, <laughs> fortunately. Um, I did believe that Russell Wilson was going to be that missing piece for us. I believed in our defense. But I believe more importantly that Russell's going to come in and make our offense significantly better. Obviously, completely wrong. Arguably the worst take of the year, given the fact that we have the worst offense, scoring offense in the league. And we potentially could have the complete opposite record of what I predicted we would go. So, without a doubt, that's the biggest flop for me. Toronto is not a flop. We'll see. Uh, for me, uh, always I, and at best, I had them a fifth what? seed. I'll say what's they right. had them the Cavs. Uh, they're, ele- they're eleventh. I did. That was eleventh. They're, they're, they're six they're bad. spots. They're bad. <laughs> that's a flop. They're bro. bad. Yeah. No, nah, I'm. I ain't gonna do that to you. No, it's all right. They're <laughs> yeah, bad. So you did it to you. Um, oh my God, I had a W. I was the only guy over here that said Denver wouldn't make the playoffs. Sorry, I had to just. Uh, oh, good for you, man. You yeah. could have put in your Giants take in there. That would have been a W for. I you. know, but people know that Daniel Jones. They know that. 
Sure. Oh. This is a reminder. They know That's my good taste. But to. it was take of the year. So I had to stay. I had to keep it short. Uh, flops, Raiders, Kings, um, definitely De'Aaron Fox, um, Isaac Okoro, um, Anthony Davis. What did I say about Anthony Davis? I'm asking. I, I Jalen Brown will NBA. I, we haven't seen that yet. He's still the most limited wing in the Jaylen league, Brown, and I will though. stand on that. You love limited Dorn wing. Yeah. No, star he's wing. so limited, averaging 27. Most, most limited star wing. Yeah, yeah. I'm still. <laughs> what kind of statement? Dude, that's such that. a dumb sentence. You can call. It, I'm a ball knower. I know what I'm talking about. You're Most losing that card. Star what, can, David. what can he do outside of score? Does it matter? He defender? hasn't been a good defender Not this the, year. But we know he can be. He can't he pass. Been. His dribbling is suspect. He's, he's an okay rebounder. Great no, finisher. scoring, yeah. What else can he do? He's a solid. Re- he's not great. He's a solid rebounder. Dude, so all right, it's listen, limited. No, what stop, else he can stop, do? Stop, stop. He's, 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 he's disrespecting his defense. You're just disrespecting his good. defense. It's, he kno- okay. he knows no, this. Been okay. I know, but we know he's a really good defender. He hasn't been this year. Limited. Um, yeah. calling a, he's calling him. You're calling all NBA players limited. Like, I'm sure, go for it. I'm really moved mm, by that. I feel like I'm missing more flops, but those are my flops at the moment. Disrespecting Zion. Arizona. Oh yeah. I thought. I just had a K one agenda. It flopped. Fuck K one. Yeah. Rams. What do you got? <laughs> what do you got over there, Mr. Flop? So I'm looking at my flops. You probably this, put nothing down. It's a short list. <laughs> um, I think Minnesota was a flop. You know, they're definitely a flop. It's a shame what happened to Minnesota. I'll never forgive Tim Connolly for what he's done to that city and to that organization. Probably smack him if I saw him. It's that bad. I, I really think the trade has the potential to be so bad that it's going to be tough to recover from this if they're if you're Minnesota. And they were on such a good trajectory, too. Sucks. I, I think NBA, I only look at Minnesota, and then that's the only team I look at, and I'm like, yeah, I was... Where'd you have the Celtics? Totally wrong on them. What would you have? as a four um, seed? I had the seed? Celtics in a tier with the Nets, the Sixers, the Bucks, the Cavs. No, you, well, you had this. You had yeah. First of all, you just put like fucking five teams in it. No, that's the top, top five seed. Um, top five seed. You got. You had this as the five seed. Is that correct? Yeah, there was question marks with Missoula. Okay. Not sure. He how tried to say, um, yeah, the, the 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 emo Doka shit was gonna fuck with their brains. I, I mean, it could have. You know, you never know. But I, you know. Like, <laughs> I Honestly, guess. one of your worst takes is the whole like a Jalen Hurts adrenaline thing. That was really bad too. That was not a bad. Take, such bro. a bad take. How was that? How was that a bad take? The comments were cooking you. <laughs> the <laughs> comments were flaming. It you. was like two comments. People do not understand that if I get injured in one game, the adrenaline stays for that game. But if I'm hurt for the next one, that adrenaline. But we is not weren't talking be about the, the next game. We're talking about a playoff game. No, we're talking about yes. But if you're hurt. You're gonna feel you, that. Yeah, that adrenaline. That, that adrenaline shit was horrible. But you have adrenaline for a playoff game, bro. You get up for that. It's not a fucking one o'clock or, game if, against Houston. It's a already, prime gonna, time game against Joel, fucking Joel, Dallas Joel, Joel, or something. We're, 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 with respect, as your boy, just take this. It one. was a bad take, but that's we're, it. it's, 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 it's not important. It. It's not an important take. It's just. It's just. It's So if I tear my ACL, I'm gonna be up for a playoff game because of adrenaline. What are you doing? It's too different. Yeah, bro. It's a show. Yes, but I'm just saying he's gonna still feel that while he's throwing. Bro. Okay, what? Let's let's is go. Is he on. not gonna feel I, that? I feel like you probably have a couple of NFL flops. When the Eagles lose in the playoffs, we're gonna oh, look wow. back. We're gonna look back at Jalen Hurts and say, "Wow, the shoulder affected him." I'm gonna ask you what adrenaline was at then. All right, the Colts, obviously, um, just a shame. This really dysfunction. Throw Matt Ryan in there. This Matt Ryan, listen, I think you play. He's, I, he's, I really think it's just the situation. Matt Ryan, well, you're a legend, but you're a bozo. He, he's right now. too he's too old now, of course. <laughs> he probably won't be back next year, but listen, I think the Colts all around is just dysfunctional. They failed Matt Ryan. For sure. There's no doubt. I don't I don't think most, anything. Most turnovers you, you can't even be team. straightforward in your flops. Yeah, bro. Like just admit the big fucking L. It's a huge <laughs> Take L. Take the L, bro. It's okay. What, what's the L? Matt Ryan and Matt the Colts. Ryan and the Colts. Matt, the Colts are bad. Th- th- that's it. Matt Ryan was leading the leagues in turnovers and he got benched twice. Yeah, he got twice. benched because they didn't know what they Wentz were doing, is, bro. is the guy that gets benched twice. He sucks. <laughs> that shit that goes on. Is that your Matt only? Ryan's just not... He's not uh, there's another man. NFL L that I'm thinking in my head. Zach Wilson? Well, that's the only L. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Zach Wilson. The only L. L. We just said, literally know, just bro. said the other L. It's all right. I'm, just, I'm hearing you, man. I think <laughs> Zach, Zach Wilson, the Colts, Timberwolves. I guess you want to throw the Celtics in there. That's an L. Jalen Hurts. What's the L with Jalen Hurts? You didn't believe in him. We haven't finished it. You didn't believe in him. What I didn't, what I, what didn't I believe in? After the Bucks game, you were ready to call him off. You wrote him off, but he didn't write back. Ooh, vibes. You don't want for to take one. It out. I was the only person that believed in the Eagles to make the playoffs that year. That doesn't move me. 
and that most of that was because of Hurts. Jalen Hurts. <laughs> what? Jaylen most Hurts. of that was because of the Hurts or because of the roster? Well, the roster, plus I thought Hurts would take a sizable leap. I thought he would take this a This is leap. news but to the size me. Will I have not, no, no, no. I no. have not heard you say that once. I, li- I, literally, I, I, I literally made an entire video saying this, this, this. I said the offensive line, defensive line, and Jalen Hurts will be a top 18 quarterback next That's year. That's exactly what That's he said. That's exactly what, That's I exactly what he said. When we come into this year, Jalen Hurts still has not won a playoff game. Well, let's relax. It's because it's the regular season. Okay, but let's relax. It's hard to on, win a playoff let's game relax on saying I'm November and December. I'm wrong on Jalen Hurts. This He's not a... Locked in franchise guy. I want to let you know you have not even put your stamp on Hurts as a franchise guy, and you're a Hurts guy. Say, I'm the only one that has. It's crazy. MVP for Yard. He's not an MVP. And he, he was, hurt, never he was the MVP. quite literally the betting never? favorite for. No, he, he was the betting favorite for MVP. Ball newers knew it was always Mahomes, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, oh Ve- Vegas him. doesn't know ball. They don't. Okay, that's a closeted great take that's for such me. Also, insane. A take Mahomes, we don't talk Mahomes, about. Mahomes is better than Mahomes is having a better season than Hurts. I don't care about. The winning records and nothing like that. We mm. know that Mahomes is better, bro. Okay, but that just stats doesn't go into MVP. We know that. It's stats. It's stories. Yeah, most we're, here talk, we're here talking about L's. What, what are we defending them for? Most valuable player, though. That's uh, Is that Mahomes. the... Oh, I thought that was the next award, ironically. Go ahead. So, yeah, those are my L's. Got I would it. say. Tim Bowles. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, you know. I'll allow, I'll allow you to cut it there. A couple ones. What's next? Biggest flip aside moment. Now, for me, this was blank. I didn't really have one. <laughs> Biggest flip aside moment. Mm. I definitely flipped on Tua. I was out on. I'm not as in as Drew, obviously. I but I definitely flipped from he's a bottom ten quarterback to he's in the Kirk Cousins, you know, type of conversation with the right, you know, pieces around him for That's sure. Disrespectful. Um, what else I flip on? That's the only one that comes to my mind. You could you could let me know if I'm super ironically. Mine was Jalen Hurts. I could I did not believe in him as a thrower. And suddenly now I think that he's a better passer than Lamar Jackson. And I'm all in on him being a franchise quarterback. That's my – that's really the only flip that I've really had this year. I guess I would say AD. I used to think yeah. he was dog shit. Yeah. Now I think he's thinking he was dog shit is crazy. If you thought he was just injury prone, that's no, he fair. Was, no, he was playing like shit, though. Well, to his standards. Idiot. To his standards, he was playing like shit. Call him dog shit. 23 and 11 ain't moving me for AVU AD. It's just not. Nah, it's not moving me. But um yeah, I would probably say AD. What about you? Twenty three and eleven isn't moving me. Like, come on. What about you, Flippy? This is a laundry list. I'm looking at the NFL teams right now to What's try that? to gauge. In the NFL, I really don't think I flip, bro. Um, oh my God. I guess the Giants. The Giants are a team that you know. I think Daniel Jones is okay. I think he's good. That's fair. I was Daniel Jones, is another one that I had yeah, no hope. But two, uh, I not. Nah, I had less hope for Daniel Jones than two, though, yeah. for sure. Two, uh, no, he, I think he'd be sorry. That's still there. I guess Jalen Hurts to an extent. You know, Jalen Hurts, right? He's, he's having a great season, but although I, I do want to see Lamar, how this, uh, how it pans out. You flipped on Lamar a bunch. You flipped on Justin Herbert. What did I flip on Justin Herbert about? What do you mean? I really don't know. You were all I mean. in on Herbert, and suddenly here comes this guy wearing those Cartier glasses, starts winning some playoff games. Give me Joe Burr. I always liked Justin Herbert. I do. I, I'm a. I'm more of a fan of Joe Burrow than Herbert. Game. Might be ball game. In terms of, so I else. think, NFL, flipping. <clears throat> Lamar, you could put in there. Definitely can. You flip. You flip Lamar like three times, four, maybe four since I've been on the show. Because I'm just the only one honest about Lamar. What he, you know. I I've been very vocal about Come Lamar on, as well. Lamar. He's a prolific player. He's a unanimous. Well, let me ask you. Listen, and I hate to do this to you, Saquon Barkley. Oh, yeah, Saquon definitely had a great season. Yeah, for sure. Definitely wrong on that. <laughs> CMC. Um, what, what's the... What's you didn't the flip. Football? I was looking you just being wrong. Undersold yeah. or just, you know, kind of looked over Undervalued the Undervalued him. Facts. If the 49ers don't win Super Bowl, that take is what it is. Okay. I just said CMC is not but look what he, the difference he's maker. A, it's so great now. It, all right, so I started that statement off horrible. I need to correct what I'm going to say. Now that Jimmy G has been hurt, you are now seeing the impact of CMC even more. He's asked to do more. But Brock Purdy, the way, the way that he relies on him in the past game, is exactly how I saw it with Jimmy G. But now Brock Purdy's living that instead of Jimmy G. But the question is with uh, the Niners. No, you're right, and had, flipping is different. Yeah, the completely. question the questions with the Niners that I had was I don't trust them when Jimmy Garoppolo's a drop back passer. Mm-hmm. I don't think CMC fixes that but aspect let me ask of you, the team. Do you feel like the Niners are your team now? No, I I really think the NFC is wide open. I okay, 
and honestly, the Three teams. So your team's the Bengals. Two and a half. Right Boys. now, and honestly, yeah. a lot of the teams I like and I'm rooting for are in the AFC. Yeah, I'm, you have they, a Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow only, agenda. The only Sick, team I'm, I'm rooting for in the NFC, like for real, for real, is Minnesota. That's the only team I'm rooting for. for, real, for real. I'm in on the Eagles, man. That's, That's Eagles another one. That I, I will team say I the Eagles about. are a team that I'm hoping they get eliminated early because – they are annoying with the Jalen Hurts talk Bro and stuff is like that. rooting for the AFC What, what do you mean I, they're annoying? <laughs> Literally so you can so say that they're words. annoying. If you're saying they're annoying only for the fact that people want you to, he's, he's to admit like that you're Jags wrong, too. that's you know different. That. It's four teams. Oh, facts. Yeah. It's like I can so understand that because I feel similarly four. last. Yeah, I felt Jags, similarly last season when Bills, he came to Miami Chiefs, and the Heat Bengals. when people wanted me to say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I feel like I do feel like Jalen Hurts, I think he's playing amazing. But I do think that Whenever people don't have him in a certain franchise quarterback conversation, people go crazy. I mean, deservedly so. I don't think that he's earned that right. He's yet. been he's crazy. Not, he's not in the top like five, six, seven. Guys. Let me ask you: When Lamar Jackson won MVP in 2019, you deemed him a franchise quarterback. It's different though. But 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 how? He he was the offense. Jalen Hurts has been the offense. Not not, oh. to that degree. <laughs> not to that degree. That's funny. Uh, with the with the NBA, the Grizzlies, I flipped on. Mm-hmm. You know, I still think they have a. I don't believe in the team. But really, I thought they were a team that was like, you know. I I ain't see them making another leap, and it, they're making a lot of leaps, and a lot of team, a lot of players on our teams are making leaps. The Suns, I mean, I flipped on them that they were gonna. I I had the original take was they're gonna be a playing team. They were the first seed. Now they're the seventh seed again. But I definitely thought that, you know, they'll probably be a locked in top six seed. And the I'm trying to look at the Eastern Conference. I guess I guess the Celtics. Oh no, I didn't flip on them. So um any chance we do the MVP ladder next episode? Oh, flip <laughs> flip aside the Sixers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. I, I think the Sixers got a chance now. I do. Trey Young. RJ Barrett? RJ no, RJ. That's not. I wouldn't say that's this year. That's not this year. R.J. is a flip, but I don't even care. If that's that's a, that was last year, flip. absolutely. No, Trey Young. Trey. Trey Young on Trey. Yeah, because he's not the best point guard in the league statistically this year. You, you, this you went from best point guard in the league to you think he's mid. <laughs> I don't think he's mid. No, nah, no, he never said mid. Obviously, I know you're joking. No, you went to you went from best point guard in the league to taking Garland over him. No, but then you joke. You said you corrected yourself. You said you'll take Trey. I watched the video back. I think Trey. There's a limited ceiling with his game, though. I wouldn't know that. But I think last year there was a he he was statistically the best point guard in the league last year. He was amazing. Yeah, he was. I love Trey. But as you would say, ball knowers knew who the I best mean, point guard was. Well, Steph Curry, God. Steph Curry. Well, only ball knowers knew who the best point guard in the league was. And yeah, Dells, we can do the MVP ladder next oh, episode. I'm so grateful. So we'll so we'll finish off with these two awards. Bring it back full circle. Best PAS moment of the year and glue guy award. Uh best P- P- PAC oh excuse me, PAS, it's DeJounte. The DeJounte is the <laughs> best moment. I was thinking about this when I was about to go get my haircut today. It's not just one of the best moments of the show. It's really one of the best moments of my life. That was one of the hardest I have ever laughed, bro, because that shit was so fucking funny. And, and you, like, I could see in your face, like, you kind of meant it, but you also didn't mean it at all. It kind of just fell out of your mouth, boss. Um, <laughs> and we were also, you know, a little feeling ourselves that episode, too. We just done it before. So I, for, actually, uh, I actually had a, I have a video. And then phone. he responded to us. Yeah. yeah. And then he oh, responded so, to us. Yeah. In the and same same day? Nah. Day after maybe. I actually had I have a video from that episode of, you know, you're passing the device around. And I was like <laughs> I was like, Yeah. And Drew was like, Are you really gonna do you that fast. on a podcast? And I was like, eh, just a little bit. <laughs> We got on the episode over. tweaking, bro. We were what oh a goody two shoes. That was the first episode we did the four man podcast. Like without through the wire. Oh, oh was it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it was. That was that was honestly the that was the day I was like yeah we got to do this shit more bro. Yeah. Now the Dejounte clip is fucking. Hilarious, I respect bro. you for picking that one because then it allows us. to... I mean, for me, Kevin Durant responding to us is just insane to me and super ironic. And I say that with the fact of Kevin Durant's probably my least favorite athlete by far. He he, he ruined what could have been a, a perfect chance for LeBron to be the undisputed goat, and. For him to be the the first huge name to at least comment and react to the podcast, that was super surreal, and I felt like it was very full circle and allowed me to to bury the hatchet with with Kevin Durant. You guys are good now. I'm good with him. Okay, I'm good with I him that. for sure. Dejounte Murray. 
Yeah. DeJounte yeah. Murray is DeJounte Murray's the best one, that was, And for him to respond to us was amazing. Another yeah. sleeper, big play Slay. Because he's actually the first. Big play Slay was actually the first elite superstar oh, to fact, come fact, and fact. acknowledge and re- recognize yeah. us, respect us. Come on the show. To sit down with, with Slay was, that was lit. surreal. Was yes. Sur- like, yes. thinking about it now, I have goosebumps. <laughs> It was one of the coolest things, arguably the coolest thing I've ever done in and my life. he was life. just such a genuine guy, too, bro. Like, he came on and just felt like, you know, we've been friends forever. And I'm, a, uh, under, I'm a, underrated uh, po- uh, pick a side moment, but outside the podcast, Mama Sushi's. Was it Mama Sushi's? Kiku. 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 Yeah, yeah, man. That was that was, was awesome. Yeah, was that was, uh, uh, yeah, that was funny. I think that fun. made me an alcoholic. Oh, Jesus. That moment I'm right going yeah. to allow Joel to share that, the, the actual best pick a side moment, though. Yeah. For, for me, it's... Uh, I have everything you guys said. I, I for have sure those has moments. to be has to be there. But I, I think the best pick aside moment for me is definitely the through the wire. For sure, out. man. I really think so. Like I, I was working security. I used to have them on the monitor watching their podcast, and I used to have thoughts of like, "Yo, man, one day I hope like I can have a podcast like that." You know, that has like an audience. Damn, and they've been doing it for that long. Yeah. For a while, man. Almost what six, seven years. Yeah, and I was like, man, I, hopefully, you know, one day if I could ever meet them or some shit like that would be crazy. And to have them on episode 200, like everybody on a podcast and just that relationship and how's it, how it's grown, I definitely think that's the best pick aside moment of the year for yeah, me. Shout out to Wire, man. Shout it out changed to the Wire. landscape of the podcast. Yeah. Honestly, that one episode right there changed the entire landscape of pick aside. Shout out for to sure. The Wire, man. Shout out to and the Wire. I have an answer for this next Glue Guy Award. Go ahead. Glue Guy Award. What are you guys giving it to? So outside, it of, should be named PJ Tucker Award. Oh, we're, we're we're talking real life glue I would, guys. I, for, I, 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 thought thought we're, I thought we were talking glue guys. Yeah, but so why, are you gonna uh, so there's go I, I have this? two for sure. Uh, one glue guy, absolutely, Joel Moran. Without you, there is no pick aside. Uh, and then another one, Pierre Peewee the plug, absolutely. Oh, okay, for when so he com- for for when he comes onto the show and he seamlessly, effortlessly transitions into our podcast, just fits our vibe, fits our energy. Pierre is a pick aside legend. We have a few pick aside legends. Obviously, him. OG's another one. If you have off the top of my head, those are the two that just ring perfectly. Well, another glue guy, John Tortorelli. That was that was absolutely mine. John Tortorelli. John, 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 without John, glue a lot guy. of this stuff doesn't. And then uh, as well. Kaval Looney, the NBA glue guy. <laughs> mine was going to be Grant Williams for the NBA. I hate you so Fuck much. You. Yeah, no. <laughs> I said we definitely got to mention love Will. Will, Looney, Will absolutely but needs yeah, love. But yeah, I, I do feel like with, when it comes to Pierre and OG. They are able to integrate integrate themselves onto the show like very few guests that we have on Absolutely, our Absolutely, man. You know, like it's Pierre, genuine. it's like they understand when we're gonna talk and we're not. They understand when to go and not to go. It, it's really seamless and and we definitely gotta have them on the show again. Right, it's been Especially a minute. Pierre, it's been a minute. Pee Wee's not been on the podcast. Yeah. Sorry, we're not trying to milk him dry for all this time. <laughs> Dude, that's a fine statement. That, that was a, it, it, it went past my radar. So it was for me, a blue wild. guy, yeah. if we're talking about NBA. It's PJ Tucker. I got Jared Vanderbilt. Really? I saw Jared your Vanderbilt. I like that. I got Jared Vanderbilt. Keep going. Eight point three points per game, eight rebounds, two point nine assists Is per PJ game. PJ Tucker averaging more than four points. You a wrote game? down eight point three points per game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think, you think PJ Jared Tucker's Vanderbilt. Five point one. He is. It's no. You know, it's no. Fact. It's not a. It's not a question as to why the Jazz are winning. Three point five. And why they've been better than people expected. It's, this Six. This guy Bro, just might hit a three. To whatever organization he's on, and I wish one day he signs to the Knicks. And oh, is that okay. guy? You're not a Knicks guy, though. I hope he signs with the Nets. Then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you Fuck go. you. I'm a Nets guy. He's, not, he's a Nets guy. That's Michigan. I know. I know. I know. But it should be the PJ nuts. Tucker Award, the glue guy. Glue guy award. Shouldn't it be uh, Draymond Green to a degree? He's like an, a Hall of Fame glue guy. Stop being disrespectful, bro. Just let PJ Tucker have his moment. I call him a Hall of Fame glue guy. He's a sneaker king. He is a sneaker king. He's a sneaker, undoubtedly. He doesn't get fly to SGA. Nah, SGA is he's the GQ guy. One. He does math fly. One on one. My glue guy have two. Uh Alex Crusoe, absolutely. I just love him. And number two, Javon Carter. Javon That's, Carter, man. There's a lot of things I can't say a, a lot going on right now, but in my brain. Uh you you're not a Javon Carter guy? No, he's cool. So who was your I liked him in college at West Virginia. Alex Crusoe. Oh. I miss him. West Virginia, I, I watched him a lot. It's play. it's really crazy, and to be very transparent about Javon, obviously I've become a huge Javon Carter fan because of Pierre. Absolutely, to be very 100. Um, but seeing him actually ascend in his game and really hone in on the defensive side of things, show, show some flashes offensively, it's been great to see him really have a, a prominent role in the NBA. He was always a great defender. It was just about the, uh, the 
uh, what's the word? What's the word? The uh, opportunity. There we go. Opportunity. For sure. For sure. But to see him get the slander that he did in Brooklyn, to go to Milwaukee and now be a difference maker for them is a credit to him and testament to his grind. Is with him in it. Dog. This is the last episode of the of the year, 2022. It is. I got to get a fucking move on last before one. I get backhanded. I was going right. to say, <laughs> the, the shot collar is going off for my guy yeah. over here. Oh, sorry. So man. that's, that's, that's a little too much. for episode 242. You can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Any last words you guys want to say? Happy fucking New Year, Happy man. Happy New Year 2023. Right. Happy New Year's right. going to be a great year. Only up from here, man. I will say this. This is the last thing we're going to say, then you're going to get out of here, Joel. Um, this year has been an amazing year. We started the year at 80K followers on TikTok. We're at 240K. We started at around 13, 14K subs on YouTube. We're almost at 40K subs on YouTube. The downloads are on our podcast are going up each episode. And I just feel really grateful for the community that we've built this year. Sure. This year has been the biggest year of the podcast. And anybody that's listening out there that's watching this, it couldn't have been done without you, and we really thank you guys for tuning into us because we're we're just regular guys, man. We're we're not professional some, athletes. We're not retired dudes. guys. Not we're not person. we're not D one athletes. You know, we're just four guys that are talking about sports that are giving our opinion. I'm on a D one handsome man. I had an offer. I just tore my uh, blew my knee up mm. for swimming. Swimming, yeah. Really? No. I was gonna say <laughs> interesting. I could swim, but not no fucking D one. So yeah, bro. I just think it's been an amazing year. For sure. Absolutely. Shout out, gonna be better. Shout out, pick a side. Shout out the crew, Joel, Riv, Andrew. Whole whole bunch of goats at this table, man. <laughs> you going to say something else? <laughs> what was I going to say? Like handsome men or something. Oh, like man, that. you guys already get that too So much. we got to do this. So comment down in the comment section down below. What's your favorite pick a side moment for of sure. 2022? Please. Let's get it popping. Thank you guys for watching and or listening, and we'll see you next time.